back to Tournament Central. Round one of the very first tournament of the 2024 Disc Golf Pro Tour season is complete for the FPO division. And it is Natalie Ryan that sits on top at a six under par mark. Before we talk about our leader, we want to just talk about a player that we've been missing for a long time in disc golf. Paige Pierce is back, and she's in her home state of Florida right now. Uh, Brian Earhart now joined here by Dion Arlen. Uh, yes, he's the product manager for the Professional Disc Golf Association, but you're also a previous distance champion and a former touring professional yourself. Uh, Dion, we walked with the lead feature card today with Paige Pierce on it. What were your thoughts on her play today and also the course and how it played in competition? Thank you, Brian. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Paige is a veteran. She was comfortable out there. You could tell she was shaking off the rust on a few shots. About half the tee shots, she was absolutely nailing her angle control, which is critical out here. A few other times was off the line and got off the fairway, which spells disaster out here. Well, yeah, let's talk about this course in general. It seemed really tricky. A lot of players kind of looking around the corners, trying to see where the landing zones are. It seems like wide open fairways, but it really isn't, is it? No, absolutely not. You have to have excellent height control. There's a lot of branches and limbs that are gonna take you out and get you off the fairway. And because of the way the, the undulations of the course play, sometimes you can't always see the landing zone. So you have to get out here for practice rounds and know where you wanna be. Well, Paige, you know, not, not a great day to her standards, plus three, but still in 11th place out of over 40 competitors, so lots of room to grow. Let's jump ahead to our leader in Natalie Ryan. Yes, she won at an iconic course on the tour in the past at the Toboggan, but Dion, you mentioned to me she won the Throw Down the Mountain tournament at the Grand Canyon previously. Uh, talk talk about that and talk about how that can uh, translate for the rest of the week. Sure, so she won this event last year in a playoff and I think th she can take that confidence into this event knowing that she can perform well under pressure. Well, I think playing on both courses, the toboggan and also here, clearly height control, one of those things you can't really teach. It's something you just have to feel out for yourself. Is something that Natalie is very skilled at right now. And two more rounds at this course, four to four and a half hour rounds sometimes with backups. We'll see how the endurance does for the rest of the week. With that said, so many other players right behind her, Holland Handley, five under par round. Holland played fantastic. We talked to her after her day. Let's hear what she had to say. All right, we're here at the Chess.com Invitational with Holland Hanley, who just finished round one with a score of five under par. Holland, how was it playing this course in much nicer weather than last weekend? Uh, I mean, not having the rain was great, so I wasn't having to worry about the grip, um, wasn't having to worry about the, the feet or anything like that, but the wind was a whole new challenge for sure. Yeah, that was exactly what I was going to ask you. How big of a factor was that wind today? Um, not a crazy factor because I already have a pretty conservative game plan. Just a couple spots where, um, you know, stabling up for the headwind um, and really just trying to like stick to single angle shots, not trying to like late flip anything, not trying to get cute with anything. So you shot five down, you kind of went up and down on those last four holes. Can you kind of walk us through that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I have a very conservative game plan on 16 like uh just going with the two forehands just trying to avoid the worst of the rough and so it's kind of a bonus putt to make that um headwind circle two putt and then honestly 17 that last approach was just kind of a, a little bit of a brain fart i wish i had taken my normal stance to do that instead of the staggered stance that i took um and then i wish on 18 there i had taken just another second on that putt because I, I felt the wind change as i'm coming down and tried to like switch it to a nose up spinner from my normal putt um, kind of last second and of, of course that didn't really work out. So we've got two rounds left this weekend and a long season ahead. What would it mean for you to start out the season with a win here this weekend? Oh, I mean, it'd be crazy because like I haven't actually won an elite series yet. You know, I had the throw pink win, but that's not technically a tour win. Um, so yeah, I mean, it'd, it'd be awesome, especially with how much work I put in the off season. All right. Well, thank you so much, Holland. We're looking forward to seeing you out there tomorrow during round two. Great. Thank you. Well, Holland mentioned that she's trying not to play this course cute, so to speak, only sticking to the one angle shots if she can. And it's interesting, we watched her play phenomenally well at the All-Star Weekend, and on 18 in particular, she was throwing an understable nine-speed turnover with a driver, and today she went with the forehand hyzer, uh, obviously sticking to that game plan, but Dion, you saw just as well as I did, the wind out here was terrible. Yeah, absolutely, and because of the way that these tee pads are blocked, you're not always gonna feel that wind off of the tee. So I think there's an advantage of going late in the order and being able to see how the wind is playing off the disc and making the adjustments. I, I, I fully agree with you, and I, I think a player that also shot well is Evelina Solonen, who is incredible at throwing those single angle shots like Holland was saying, something stubborn, stable, ripping it flat, and letting 
it cut through the wind. She also shot a five under par effort. And Dion, it sounds like she's primed and ready for some big performances this yeah, year. Yeah, absolutely. In the last four uh, elite major events, she has eight lead card appearances, and she's finished top four in all four of those events. So she definitely has momentum coming into this season and the power to fight the one angle uh, you know, off the tee here. I think she's one of the best nose-down throwers that we have, too, with the driver. And on this course, there's so many shots where if you throw it too high, the wind does pick it up. You have to beat the wind a little bit, and it's obvious that she's shooting pretty well out here. Let's take a listen to what she had to say after her 500 par effort. All right, we're here at the chess.com Invitational with Evelina Salonen, who just finished round one with a score of five under par. Evelina, there's a lot of long distance throwers at the top of the leaderboard today. Do you think this course benefits your style of play? Yes, I have to say that because, yeah, most of the holes you have to throw really far if you want to get a birdie. So we couldn't help but notice you and Hannah seem to have great rounds at the same time, even when you're not on the same card. Are you ever looking at her scorecard while you're out there playing? <laughs> yes, and I felt like I start pretty slow, and then I watch scores that Hannah is doing well, so I have to start to play well, and yeah. So as we look at the leaderboard today, you're just one stroke off. Many holes that I can do better. Any holes in specific out there? Uh, not really, because I didn't make big mistakes, but there was like scrambling those bar bars. All right, well, thank you so much, Evelina. We're looking forward to seeing you out there tomorrow during round two. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. Well, it's funny, Evelina mentioned, you can't really make too many adjustments when you're playing a course where the wind is swirling and blowing at 20 miles an hour. It's more just in the moment, decision making, tiny bit adjustments here and there. With that said, like she said, Hannah Blomroos also shot a very solid round, uh, three under par. Hannah's shooting great out there, and y you also have a couple little stats on Hen uh, Hannah. Sure, well, Hannah is still hunting for her first elite and major win, but she has 10 podiums on tour and has a uh, one less lead card appearance than Kristen Tatar in 2023. So she kind of snuck under the radar there without getting a big win, but has been at the top consistently in the last season. And we also noticed at the All-Star event, she had made a pretty significant change to her putt. So clearly this offseason, she's been grinding on one thing and one thing in particular. And if she can get those putts even a little bit higher, she could rise up the leaderboard and take down multiple events this year. Absolutely. She's one of the cleanest throwers off the tee, has impeccable form, impeccable spin on the disc. Mm -hmm. Really would like to see her be successful on the green and on tour this year. With that said, we also talked to Henna after her round. Let's take a listen to what she had to say. All right, we're here at the Chess.com Invitational with Hannah Blumroos, who just finished round one with a score of three under par. Hannah, we're back again after All-Star Weekend. How was it playing this course with much nicer weather this time around? I would say it's, it's way easier and more funny, more fun. And, and yeah, I like this course, so I enjoy every minute on there. Yeah, it looked like you played well today. We saw you ring up a near ace yet again on hole seven. Were you expecting to hit that same line from last weekend? I always hit the, um, at least I'm going to try to hit the same line, but let's see if it's going in, but yeah, I'm happy with the birdie in there if I can get that. So you shot a three under par today. Is there anything specific that you want to try to improve on during tomorrow's round? Oh yeah, I had a couple of bad holes, like I made a stupid mistakes on there and just a couple putts in and yeah. Yeah, we saw you go five under par through the first 13 holes, but then two over through the last five. Do you think there's anything specific you can change during those last five holes? I don't think so. I just need to focus more and, and yeah, hit the lines. All right. Well, thank you so much, Hannah. We're looking forward to seeing you out there tomorrow during round two. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. And... We're wrapping things up with the FPO division, but coming up this afternoon, the MPOs take on the Olympus course, and we'll have a little chat about some young and up-and-coming players on the other side of this break.
Brought back by popular demand. Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Disc that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. This plastic is perfect for players with lower arm speeds as well as beginners. They can also be a great complement to the regular weight version of a disc that's already in your bag. z -Lite. More distance with less effort. Want to play chess but don't know how to get started? Try chess.com. Play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots. Sign up and play for free at chess.com today. Popular demand. Z Light Plastic from Discraft. Disc that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. This plastic is perfect for players with lower arm speeds as well as beginners. They can also be a great complement to the regular weight version of a disc that's already in your bag. Z Light. More distance with less effort. What a a page is turning and a new chapter of disc golf is being written. Players who have pushed the boundaries of our imaginations in regards to what can be done with a flying disc are using their successes to throw their hats in the ring and help to shape the future of our sport and how it's played at the top level. When I walk the fairways of Olympus, yes, I see a 10,000 foot championship course. But what I also see baked into this course are all these intangibles that make this place really compelling. Things like depth perception, nose angle control, ground play, risk reward decision making, creativity. These are the things that perfect technique and raw athleticism can't ever conquer. And with that, a course like Olympus, from my point of view, is only the tip of the iceberg of what's to come. That's really Florida disc golf in my opinion, is these low, long power shots. Um, and that this course has a lot of those, whether it's forehand, backhand, moving to the left, moving to the right. What's really unique is that it used to be a quarry. You know, you have these huge drops. It is a, a, a mountain here in Florida. One of the things that, that is like big with this property is there is a lot of blind shots, which you have to come out and practice, but they're blind because you're thrown to a landing zone. It's not many par threes where you're throwing blind par threes. You're throwing to landing zones, you gotta have your, your speed control, your height in order, or you're gonna end up in sawgrass, OB, or water. Some holes are brand new, some are tweaked and things like that. So it's just kind of things that I've noticed through the years of I wanna get rid of that hole really bad and this one I wanna keep and stuff like that. So um, yeah, through the years I've, I've, I've really enjoyed this place and, and people have always talked about me buying it and then to actually own it, you know, they kind of talked it into existence. I just love having disc golf to where you're using all your discs, you're using all your shots. And if one course can implement all those in 18 holes, I think that's you know the perfect course. So we've seen what's fun, what's challenging, what not to do. Um, I think we're able to implement that, especially when it's our own. And when it is your own, you take a lot more pride on it. You know, like when someone says, I don't like this, it does hurt a little bit more, but that's how you learn and grow. I'm getting goosebumps right here, Dion. I, I know that you've played disc golf with Paul Macbeth numerous times. You toured for many years, and you've watched him evolve into this business tycoon who's now giving back to disc golf and trying to leave it a little bit better than he found it. What are your thoughts overall on what he's doing and what, what he's done to this course? Oh, I absolutely love to see it, right? It's great to see the, the folks at the top of the sport trying to give back, both Paul and Ricky in their own ways, mm -hmm. and, and others as well. Uh, and this property is truly special. And getting to see the holes and the, and the way they're shaped and the amount of uh, absolute precision that's required to score well out here is, is awesome. 
so many players throughout the week were telling me that they're throwing everything from a soft putter off the tee to a hard distance driver shot and sometimes you're throwing that on your second and third shots I mean they're throwing every speed of disc which I know Paul takes a lot of pride in because he knows that his bread and butter are those mid-range and fairway driver shots heard from Jeff Corns that he likes to design courses based on things that challenge him in his game so yes He's playing the course that he designed, but at the same time, he's probably challenging himself in, in, in the, uh, the same way. With that, let's zoom in on a specific hole that I think is a perfect one to depict what he's trying to do out here. Hole number eight, long par three. Again, you're standing on top of the hill. You shoot out here, and this is not an easy shot to, uh, this is not an easy shot whatsoever. Uh, you see, you're going downhill here, giant turnover up the hill. It's about 460, 470. Forehand can get you short right, and yes, you can get yourself some sort of a putt, but the basket is tucked ever so slightly to where Paul's trying to tell you, throw that late flipping driver shot, push the distance with your best control driver or step it up to a uh, distance driver. Thoughts on this 487 foot par three? Absolutely, yeah. This course is trying to tempt you into being aggressive, but if you don't have absolute control over the angle of your shot, you are going to be penalized. So there is a safe play to be had there with the single angle forehand and then laying up to the pin or taking a long run at it with that backstop. But in order to access the green, you have to be able to throw the two angle shot with precision. And, and I think even just as a spectator of disc golf, watching those late flip driver shots might be one of the most satisfying things that you could possibly watch. Absolutely, and in this morning round in FPO, we saw Paige tee last and get a great uh, wind read, make the adjustment, throw a little bit of hyzer off the tee, and then about 300 feet out, boom, clicked over and accessed the green with well, that read. That's what's tricky about it. There's a pretty stiff crosswind right to left, and too much Anheuser, you're going to get slammed down. Too much Heiser, you're going to get pushed away. So now the bass is getting pushed even farther back on hole number eight. It's just going to be a sight to see to watch some of these power players. I want to ask you uh, a question about Macbeth as the player. I mean, you've played with him uh, when he was just starting to grind for his world ch championships. And now as a veteran, he's changing his play style a little bit to be more finesse oriented. What have you witnessed over time? Uh, exactly that. You know, he was physically talented, able to be fearless off the tee, throw aggressive shots run aggressive putts and it's true that he's matured he's been able to pick his spots he has more finesse more control and I think that that evolution speaks to being able to preserve the body in a long season not put as much wear and tear on himself and obviously dealing with the injuries he's had to make those adjustments yeah you know, and you know just like Paige Pierce being back Paul is also back in competition after an injury and it feels like when both of them are back competing disc golf is is a better place to be and and I, I want to say though Paul and Page for years inspired younger generations of players to come up and own their skills to try to catch them out on tour. And a player that you know very well, Cole Radolin, is right near the top of the leaderboard right now. Watched him grow up into the player he is today. Yeah, Cole is something special. He's one of the only players I've ever endorsed that you know hard to to, to the sponsors. Something that really stuck out to me uh, for the off season is a few years back I gave Cole some some tips about his reach back. And implement that over the off season this year so he's still making those fine-tuned adjustments still improving and at that age and with his ceiling already field needs to watch out uh, and I will say anyone watching this who wants to see the progression go to his social media platforms or even just go on coverage of previous seasons watch the way his upper body moves and then watch the way he's throwing now going into this season it is phenomenal stuff cannot wait to see him Gannon all the young players come up and try to challenge the best that have set the bar for so long We're with that said, we are wrapping things up. We're going to get out there on the grounds for round number one for the MPO division. Dion, my man, yes. thanks for joining thanks us for today. Thanks for having me, Brian. And we will see you out there, folks. We're wrapping it up. Twenty twenty three was a year for the record books. 
Wysocki from long range. And he loves it, Wysocki with the raptor legs. Legends are created not by chance, but by the relentless pursuit of greatness. We had more unique winners in the tour in FPO than we've ever had, and Kristen Tatar still won every single major. Hands down the best season that we've ever seen. It was a year of the young superstars, young Sir Cole Radolin getting his first win. A two-time major champion in Isaac Robinson. A big, big win for Kyle Klein. Corey Ellis winning over there in Europe. It's about the Cinderella story potentially of the season. Her crew well take down a victory out there in Emporia, Kansas. Under ranked player wins? It's the first stop on this journey and the game's best players are in Brooksville, Florida. A field filled with champions will take the course to prove to themselves that they are once again ready. Every drive, every chip, every putt matters. A sprint of 54 holes to the finish. Players are ready to prove it here in Brooksville. Are you ready? Beautiful Bruxville, Florida for the first round of the Chess.com Invitational presented by our friends at Discraft. Who jumps out to the first lead of the season? You'll find out live on the Disc Golf Network. Philo, Kenny, let's watch the Disc Golf. Conditions or can our current conditions in Brooksville, Florida. The weather is nice. Other than the wind, Jess, it's up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to 2024 disc golf season, everybody. Yeah, the weather's a little blustery out there. The wind's pushing, but it's nice and warm. It is. Yeah, it's really not raining. Likely, you gotta you gotta enjoy that. And Paul McBeth is back in the house. Real quick welcome, I mean, Ian Anderson. That's major champion Philo Brathwaite right there. 12 world titles, five U.S. championships over there. That's Ken Climb of the GOAT. We're back. Paul, back in action. The first time since having the kid to USDGC or even before. Worlds, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and some injuries as well. So, yeah, big, big start to the year for Mr. Paul McBeth. We'll see how he comes out shooting him hot, shooting him mild, shooting him cold. We have no idea. We haven't seen him for a while. So, we'll see how he... You know, how the first fire test goes for Macbeth this weekend. Yeah, Kenny, you spent some time with Paul a little bit ago. Yeah, I walk, walked the prop property with him and Dylan Cease and Charlie Goodpasture a couple months ago and saw some of the plans they had out here. And so looking like it's going to play tough, and today's weather is going to make it even tougher because the winds have been just getting stronger and stronger and stronger as the day goes along. We'll see what happens. It is going to be interesting. It's a, it's a Winnie, Pooh, Winnie the Pooh type of day out there, guys. It's a bit <laughs> blustery. <laughs> Let's check out Paul Macbeth. He's arriving on scene. It's, he's got that dead energy now. Worked for Nate Sexton a while ago. There's the kiddo. Pop, Maybe Pablo. Pop Pop yeah. Congrats to Paul and Anna. Yeah, congrats to the family. Nothing like having a kid, man, so. Once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> it changes your life yeah, for sure. It really does. Paul plays this track very well. I think he's never lost on this property. Wow. And uh, looks like he'll be having to chase down Radolin and Anderson off to nice starts. And Anderson off the course with that wind, you know, you got to like that, right? Yeah, he was at 7-under just holes before his round finished and took a bogey at the 17th, I believe. But he was at 7-under leading the turn. Majority of the check in loss before we got on. Sam Dolan's got the opportunity All right lead coming into the clubhouse. He's got to get through the very daunting 17 is a, a tough par four, and not many birdies are going to be carted there. More birdies, I think, on that hole are going to happen today. Beautiful look down at holes 1T. You get a little idea how windy it is out there today. Lanyards blowing off, moss moving, branch sway. A battle up there today. It's a really interesting course for Florida, Kenny, isn't it? 
Yeah, you don't see them like that here. There's a, it's an old limestone quarry. It's 80 oh. years on mine, so there's a lot of old you know, regrowth of trees uh -huh. and stuff. So it's not like a regular quarry where it's just rocks and, you know, yeah. and that, this, there's a lot of growth of trees, old trees on there. And it's really unique. It's got little p c coves and pockets and drop-offs and rises and just really, really undulating property. Yeah, really cool. You, I think you notice a lot of, like, downhill tee shots and uphill second. That seems to be the theme, theme out here, here and it, it seems to work really well out here. Nose angle is going to be big. There is your reigning world champion, Robinson, on the tee. Big flare, Skip. Yeah, the wind got under the nose. You see that pushing off a little bit further. Circle two look there for Robinson to start the day. Yeah, it's a bit of a drop off behind that basket. So going after a circle two putt there is going to be tough. If you give it your full go, it might just go down the hill if you miss. This seems to be the preferred action here at hole one, the sidearm play, Anthony Barella. Yeah, the pin's definitely tucked off to the right at the end up there. And uh, sidearm or left, he shot is, is a better choice, but he didn't get it quite far enough. And there's that overhanging limb. If you throw a righty backhand, you kind of have to come under that limb to get close to the basket. But if you throw in a sidearm or a lefty, you want to go around that limb. Gannon Burr next to T. Potentially a favorable kick there for Brella with the speed off that skip. Yeah, there's run down the hill pretty fast. There is a nice slope on the right side of this fairway and some OB beyond that slope, I believe. And left and back side of the hole also has some slope going away. We've got a new sponsor, new discs for Gannon Burr, and that one found an unfortunate little grass clump there. Yeah, a rough way to start the season there for Gannon Burr. Kind of slipped over his own two feet there on the tee pad, a little disconnected. Went on ahead and fired the disc, and you saw the result. This hole's a bit more uphill than the camera's giving it justice for. It, uh, it plays a good 15, 20 feet uphill. Yeah, that always gets lost in the in Yeah, the there's, a low, there's a low limb. See that limb coming down right uh -huh. there? That's pretty low for, for everything. So you've got to keep it super low. And that branch right there, you want to get under for backhand. That's about Look as good as you can that. do with a backhand. That's Chris yep. Dickerson nearly bouncing it off the koozie. I like Chris on this course. You know? Me too. He loves playing in these tight situations. He's great scramble. He's great, great scramble. Wow, sides. you yeah. said it, man. He's one of the best scramblers I've ever seen. Yeah. You do have to get flirty with that branch on the right if you're going to park it being a backhander. And you can see he touches mm. the branch there. I don't think that made a difference either way. That had the appropriate shape out the hand for Dickerson. No, but if it's a foot higher, <laughs> it gets slapped <laughs> straight down and you got a 75-foot yeah. look. But that's, that's definitely the way you want to start this course. Get as many birdies as you can. Don't make bogeys. I, I don't think it's going to take 12 unders and things like that this this week. I think it's especially with this wind, it's going you know it's going to be more of a seven eight under yeah, kind of like six it, huh? seven eight under kind of kind of deal. I don't know if you're going to be able to do that three rounds in a row out here. There's a lot of a lot of trouble waiting on this course. You love a drop in birdie to start your season though. Oh yeah, absolutely. There are the scores they will be trying to chase down. Six, the hot round currently. Burr throwing his second. Everybody always asks me what my favorite putter was, and I tell them my driver. <laughs> That means I'm dropping it in from three feet. Absolutely. <laughs> nice touch displayed there from Gannon Burr with the sidearm play right off the bullseye. New sponsor, same upshot. <laughs> yeah, the skills don't change. Could no, you change don't. plastic? No. There's a extremely talented young disc golfer Isn't right he there. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm trying to have the Florida vibe going with that shirt, I think, is apparel today. Uh, okay. He's trying to get that Florida vibe going. I like it. We're looking at the parking lot on the right-hand side that was just flattened off. And I believe it's got limestone base on it right now, and they're going to pave it in the future, I hear. But it was a very humpy, bumpy dirt area that was kind of hard to pull a car into here and there because it was just real hilly and lots of little rises and falls, and they made it really flat over there, so it's more like a parking lot now. Morella! Whoa! -ho -ho. That's one way to start the season. Circle two banger for AB. It's a different feeling, but also a great feeling. It's a fantastic yeah, feeling. Job, yeah. A little step through, right oh in the heart God. of the chains, nice and low. That's always his Achilles heel, if you can keep the putting going. He is scary. Didn't really seem to be too was his issue. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's oh. what you don't oh. want to do there. There's a big fall off on the backside of this basket. And 
I'm guarantee you that's way down there unless it got lucky and caught something. But he's still got to come back up 7 Ooh. to 10 foot, maybe 15 if he's all the way at the bottom in elevation yeah. with some trees. That could be true. Yeah, the unfortunate start for your reigning world champion. Yeah, that accelerated off the top of the basket. It did. That's what made AB's putt even that much more special because he was basically looking at the same drop-off behind that. That's a great point. Yeah. Similar look, right? A little different yeah. angle? A little different angle, but the same drop-off. Like it's, it's steep off the left backside, yeah. the right backside, the straight backside. It's a great it's, view from the drone right there. Yep. Yeah. You were talking about this earlier before the show started, Ken, that uh, this is one of the highest elevation points in Florida here in the center of the state, right? Yeah, that would be uh, on hole 17. There's a little ridge up there that you can look out and see a good 20, 25 miles off into the distance. And you don't usually get that in Florida, a view like that. You can see the cameraman just off the backside of that hill, and it goes steeply down behind him. And Bird gets home the par. We must have missed Isaac's shot coming back up. See a pink disc in there. Yeah, it looks like his. it. It's going to be a bogey start for the reigning world champion. Drop in birdie for Dickerson there. As they make their way over to the next hole, we're going to sneak in a quick break on the Disc Golf Network. Back to the action in just a few. Want to play chess but don't know how to get started? Try chess.com. Play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots. Trying to improve your chess? Learn the Queen's Gambit and other openings with guided interactive lessons. Like chess but don't want the pressure of playing games? Chess.com has hundreds of thousands of fun puzzles to help you relax and sharpen your mind. Play your friends, make new ones around the world, follow the latest games and more. Sign up and play for free at chess.com today. I think this golfing can improve our community in many ways. It brings people together. That maybe some of these kids who feel a little bit lost could find something like disc golf, find friends, find people to come together and play the sport. Encouraging people to work together, kids to know one another, love one another. A way for these kids to have a really fun thing to do together. I think that's what we need in the world, love one another and do life together. There well, is the man, Paul McBeth, 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 in the building. What do you think, Philo? Looking good? Uh, he's always looked good when he's throwing plastic, <laughs> man. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. How, how he, that's the question. Mm -hmm. We will find that out shortly. You give him Florida shirt on that one too, Ken? Sure. Yeah. AB on two. Really tight off the tee here. The biggest mistake is to grip lock it, make it go right. There's a fence on the right, which you could go immediately out of bounds with. Best place to be is left set, left side of the fairway as far down as you can get. Opens up your angle to the green a little bit. Dickerson also coming off a birdie on one. Looked like Anthony Barella held back a little bit there on hole two. Just yeah. Keeping it smooth, playing for position. There's a bit of a lock, like I was talking. Oh, Ooh, oh no. second kick good? Oh. No. OB. Yeah? 
I yeah, believe so. That's there's over the fence. OB all along the right side here at the second. That fence line is the OB line. For third. This is very reminiscent of the early design course out here. This tee pad is similar to where it used to be. The pin is in a different location than it used to be. It's probably near the same distance, but it's tucked up in to the right up on a little knob. It's really hard to access. The original pin was kind of more down to the left and out in the open, easier to access. Definitely challenging these players with this pin. Right up the middle goes Burr. That is ideal. Yeah, he tested the right edge of that fairway, held it nicely. Robinson, we'll see how he bounces back off the bogey. Swing there from Isaac Robinson, something overstable, keeping it central. Nice little bleed out there with the finish. Ideal position here at the second. Yeah, the players aren't going to want to end up to the right out in the fairway. It's just impossible to enter the green from there. So if you're going to have any chance at birdie, you most likely have to be on the left side or the center to the left of this fairway. And deep. You have to, you have to get it pretty far out there to have a good angle. Because it, it's a button hook up in there. It's almost like a really sharp turn out at the end. 90 degree, almost a 90 degree turn. <laughs> and the pin sits in a weird little area on this moundy with sawgrass clumps all over the place. And some pine trees. And then there's an OB fence up beyond the basket. So you can't get too aggressive with it. Because there's a little fence line up there which you can go OB on. Yeah, D Dickerson too far back for the pin, or where are you, what are you thinking? Uh, yeah, there's, there's impossible, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. unless he throws it in from a distance. I don't think he's going to have a putt at par here. Ian Anderson already in my brain. <laughs> Couldn't even get the words out. I was thinking the same thing. What's Chris Dickerson going to do from where he's yeah. at? He looks pretty pinched off from the drone flight here. See how this hole finishes up, tucked up into this little cove. Wow. Not looking pretty if you're in Chris Dickerson's shoes. Easy come, easy go out here at Mount Olympus. Yeah, he's got to go back a ways from where his disc is because he crossed the line and then flew a little ways before he dropped just shy of the fence line there. So he's going to have to retreat quite a bit to, to play that lie. Unless there's a drop zone that I don't know about. I, don't think I so. did not see one here on the course map. It's like standard OB here at the second. He's going to have to come back to where that disc crossed the fence line. And Probably right where it nipped that tree. Yeah, That's from, where it changed direction. From there, he's going to have to throw a really good shot just to become get a bogey. He's There's Eric Alibus, the CEO of Chess.com. Yeah. Ceremonial throw. Oh, he can throw. Look at this. He's got, he's got a little form in him. Let's see what happens. You know. I mean, oh, yeah. that's not there his first go. time. There you know? we no, go. Not his first yeah, time. Yeah. yeah, this man can spin him. There we go. I that think that's the good. best ceremonial throw I've ever seen. <laughs> He's in the short grass. <laughs> yeah. Up the fairway. Can you guys think of a better one? <laughs> he had me a little concerned at first, and then he put the move on it. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah. That was a nice spin. Mm -hmm. All right, back to our regularly scheduled disc golf. And Dickerston with his third. He is looking roller, gents. No? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best way to get a an outside look at this is to throw a roller, but if you if you hug it in a little early with that roller, you're going to be you're going to be hemmed up, and it's going to be tough to get a five. Look which way the wind is blowing. This yeah. is adding some more difficulties for the shot. Yeah. Lucky to get just past wow. that little area. Now it's got to get around that tree and hook what? to the right. The best scramble artist and in the game. Right behind a sawgrass clump. He's going to have no look at that basket. Oh. Stretch out sidearm at best from 50 or 60. Can we talk about that shot in the wind, throwing a roller with a crosswind? That is so technical. That is yeah. really technical. And I think that was his best bet to even have somewhat half a look at a par. Mm -hmm. If you throw an air shot there, chances are you're going to either burn it over into the right and into that bush he just went by, or you're going to leave it out to the left and go sailing past. Like the I best said, he could do is yeah. get right at right, the base right of the hill. That sign, right where that little yeah. sign is there. Yeah, 45 footer looking yep. up the hill. So not a bad play there. From, not a bad play at all. Fantastic play. That was Mason Ford making a nice putt, tapping in on 15. As you can see, there's a lot of little, little sawgrass clumps all over this property. And they're going to come into play a lot. Mason Ford currently in your top 10, as you can see right there. Pfeiffer, very well. I like the names we're seeing on here. 
It's a clumped up day one, isn't it? Cole Radalin, unfortunately, took a bogey. Oh. He was tied for the lead just moments ago. Now, back to minus five. It's one opportunity left. You just talked about that. 17 is going to be a difficult one to get past clean. Yeah, I think that one's going to average over par for the for the MPO field. Barella showing off both sides on hole two. Goes to the forehand. Towering sidearm. That was up there. Does it fight? That looked low on the hill. Man, it's just that, that green is just not very accessible besides the perfect shot. It's got to be absolutely perfect to get in there. If you're not perfect, you're going to be in a sawgrass clump or a pine, pine area or a little oak scrub area. And it's just really hard to get a clean look at that basket. Over to Robinson for his second. He's looking off to the right. There is a little gap off to the right. It's super skinny, and the OB line is right down that right side too. It is, it is doable, but man, you have to have the perfect lineup for it, which oh, he did. Oh, look at and that. Look at, there's the OB line. In See the, the OB circle line one right for Isaac Robinson. That's on the a, sneaky gap along the right side. Special. You, know, you can only be in one spot for that, though. If you're not in that oh, spot, really? uh -huh. if you're short or long, you, you, don't, you don't have it. It doesn't line you up. Have to, yeah, you have to be right in that huh. spot. To, to it have seems it line like up. it takes a little extra courage to throw it in there with that OB line. You oh. see any little tree kick could yeah. potentially send you out of bounds. It is super tight, too, because you will, you will get a tree kick here and there if you throw that all three rounds. You're, you're probably not going to end up in that spot all three rounds anyway. But that was gutsy. It was risky, but it paid off. Burr in his second. Going to the high forehand along with AB. This is the ideal spot. Up along this sawgrass line with just enough clearance to be clean. Got to get around that big tree. I mean, just around that big tree, like five feet, six feet around that big tree, hooking is, is ideal. Looked like it hooked a little too much. May have been inside circle one off to the left. Hard to say. Didn't yeah. catch a good glimpse of it on the way down. Wow. Co-leader along with Joseph Anderson, Thomas Gilbert, coming off an eagle on hole 15. 15-foot 15 putt, too. And throw far. Yes, he gets 934 feet. Wow. That's a really pretty hole. Love that hole. Exceptional under the circumstances with how windy it's been around today as well. True. There it is. Scorecard of one Thomas Gilbert, Canada's finest. I do believe that hole is playing tailwind today, just the oh, direction okay. I've been seeing out here today. It's, it's blowing kind of from south to north or west south to northeast, and that hole runs fairly due north that he's playing right there. Getting the job inside circle one as well, 100%. Oh, wow. Here is the eagle putt. That is... Exception of that. <laughs> Love the car the made out in there. Oh, yeah, he did the work on the first huge. two shots there for I sure. Yeah. I would have liked to have seen where his drive was to be able to throw a second shot to there. Oh, okay. yeah, like, yeah, that's right. crazy. Yeah. So, like, that's just like the engagement from like a tip video like that. Right. Like, Hall, have you seen Hall What's the name of that thing again, Philo? I forget. <laughs> Do you remember? You got me, man. Saw him all over China. I know, right? Don't Eagle was know. playing with that thing for a while last year. There's actually an Eagle McMahon signature one. Like, sure. Interesting. Yeah. I'm sure Reddit will tell us. Back to AB, putting for birdie just outside the circle. Came in a little better than we thought there. See, look, if he's 10 foot to his left, if he's just do it a bit farther, too far, you're into this thick woodsy area. And there's only about a 20 foot area to his right that's open. And then on the other side of that is more woodsy area. Two for two from circle two for Anthony Barella. What a way to start the season. I was telling myself that I think the person that's going to win this tournament is going to have to make some circle two putts and putt really well from near the circle's yeah. edge because it's really hard to park a lot of these holes to get right on, right on the point. And if you're going to play well here, you're going to have to make some putts around the circle's edge or just outside of it. Bird just inside the circle's edge for his birdie. Makes good. Right, that Philo. just looks so casual, yeah. man. Yeah. You were right there, Philo. He got just inside the circle, yeah. came in. So casual. I wonder what his gorilla index is on those limbs, man. They're long. <laughs> you know? He got yeah. them long levers, Philo. Certainly does. One of the smoothest putts I've ever seen, man, yeah. as far as fluidity. And just... Seems like he's picked up the pace a little bit, too. Oh, you're right. Standing there, taking you forever, figuring right. it out. And seeing some changes here in 2024 already. A lot of guys changing sponsors, you know, maybe making some adjustments to their game. We shall see. It's going to be an exciting year. There's an old saying in poker, think long, think wrong. And oh. I think it kind of applies to disc golf, too. Absolutely. Yeah.
And there's sometimes you're going to have to, you know, think about it a little bit and adjust for the wind and whatnot. But I think the longer you think about things, the, the more in your brain it gets, the more in your head it gets. Just get up there and react on instinct there most you of go. the time. Robinson it's what you do in your practicing, isn't it? You know, just yep. try to yeah. take that same rhythm into the game, into the actual tournament play. Dickerson has? This is to say five. Okay. Because he was about 50 or 60 feet out on his third shot. We'll be jumping back there in just a moment. The overhead views don't give the, the elevation much much credence because that lake is about a 30, 35 feet below that blue basket that's circled in OB up there on your right-hand side of your screen, which is 18's basket. There's a 30 to 35-foot drop in elevation right First there. First on the team, Ricky Wysocki. The drone, just, you just don't see it on the drone view. go gents going with the prefer another slip must be something a little wet up there yeah. that wow that's whoa, deep in the pin whoa wow too much sauce there for rick see what he's got left i think they think it looked good from the tee but as we saw off the back edge player of the year calvin heimberg First tee shot of 2024. He's going to have to play that Dickerson line if he's going to get close. It's got to go and flirt with that branch. That looks a little high. And that's off to the left going over the hill as well. Oh, yeah. that's a good tree right there. That was yeah. an incredible tree for Calvin. Got a little stable there on the back end of that flight. That was going to go all the way to the bottom off the back edge. And yeah. Who knows what can happen from back there. It's not a routine up and down. It's not just a pitch up. You, there's some... Some serious foliage back there. Let's see if he can dial in the right speed in line here. That's a little low. Get need, a oh, lift. it's got a lift. Wow. Oh, it's got a ground skip. Here we it's go. Got it all. How about them oh, apples? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> 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 Didn't look pretty out the hand, but all's well for Paul McBeth on hole number one. Very fortunate. Little tiny lift before it could hit the ground to get the skip. If that doesn't lift, it doesn't skip. He had that crossing wind helping him. Yep. That's a severe upslope. It's really hard to get a good skip off that upslope. A little wide for Clemens. Will it swing? Ryan. Oh, yeah. Inside the inside. circle. Yep, right. There you go. Bit of a death putt looking straight at the hill, but Chris Clemens, strong circle one putter. Sure, he won't get too razzled about that. Yeah. Let's roll back a Zucker replay of this Paul McBeth forehand. Playing the skip perfectly. I bet he thought it was too low. And it took a tiny lift right before it hit the ground and then a huge lift after it hit the ground because that wind was underneath it. And as you can see, there's all sorts of little undulations in this, in this ground out here. It's never over until it's over. Until that disc has come to rest, it, you never know. It can hit a rock and stand up and roll away. All sorts of stuff can happen out here. You know, Paul McBeth showing a little love to the fans. Love to see that. Dickerson to clean up on two. That is a bogey. Not a bad score after the drive. Uh, that's a rough way to start, though. Absolutely park hole one and then just get the little ninja branch on hole, hole two. Joe B in one of the worst positions ever. We're looking at hole 16 here. Thomas Gilbert. OB fence down the right-hand side. Hole goes 375, 400, and you want to go to the left, kind of where he's disc went. That looked pretty spot on to me. And yeah. back to AB on three. This hole drops off seriously about 100 foot off the tee. Big chasm down there. And there's a little access road that you kind of want to be in the middle of. And I think he's in it. That is exactly where you want to be. Essential for yeah. AB. On hole one, we find Ricky Wysocki very long of the pin. And is this an easy up and down, Ken? Uh, depends on where you are back off this hill, but it doesn't seem like anywhere back there is real easy up and down. But there's some areas that are almost impossible to get up and down just because it's so thick. Like if he was 25 feet to his right, you can see there's just nothing but thickness there. With you. I think he, he ended up in a spot where he can, he can get it up and down, but I don't think he can be too aggressive here. I'm sure he'll be happy with anything 15, 20 feet away. Yep. There you go, even better. Right under the basket. 15 centimeters away. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
He'll take that after he knew after he saw where he was off that tee shot. Curious how this Heimberg look will be. Uh, he didn't go as far down the hill as Rick, but I think he's a bit encumbered over there. And okay. once again, if he goes running at the basket, there's a drop off on the other side. And he's got a tailwind, so it potentially could accelerate. Maybe be best just to lay this up and move on. If he's looking at a sidearm, he's looking at a layup. He's definitely not trying to make this. There you go. That'll work. You can see the straight behind the basket the other direction. It's falling off as well. Great pin position. Risk reward right there. Oh. Yeah. The original pin position was near there in Hospital's design, mm -hmm. but the T pad was in a different location. It was a little easier to access. The T was shorter and to the left. We didn't have to throw so much of a, a lefty or a sidearm or flirt with that one branch. You could just throw a backhand, turn over, and get up there 20 feet away. See if Clemens can start his season with a two. That's no, negative. Chris Clemens. Front cage from 25 feet away to short arm that a little bit. First putt of the season, you know, my, you know, first yeah, putt Yeah, you got that cliff right uh, there Ken's talking about. You got yeah. the tailwind. And it's going to drop the, Yeah, it's yeah. going to drop the disc immediately out the hand. Harder to lift it up into the air when you know you got that wind going to push it down. But that's what you got to do. You got to trust it. A little shy there for Clemens. Calvin scrapes up his par. Macbeth now lining up for his first birdie. And grabs a stroke on the card with that. Very nice start for the property owner and new father. Yeah. He's won this tournament five times before. He knows how to get it done. He's never been beat here, Philo. How about that? They are making their way over to hole two's tee. And while they do that, we're going to sneak in another break. Back in just a few. A round of disc golf can be long, and if you're playing in a tournament, it can feel like a marathon. This can leave you physically and mentally fatigued by the end when your shots matter most. With space for your discs, water, and even a place to sit, a cart enables you to bring what you need, helping you feel more prepared and energized without carrying the extra weight. This can help you maintain your edge and save you strokes through every round. Brought back by popular demand. z -Lite Plastic from Discraft. Discs that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. z -Lite. More distance with less effort. Want to play chess but don't know how to get started? Try chess.com. Play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots. Sign up and play for free at chess.com today. the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. And after a fantastic drive, Barella throwing two. This is position A, the mayor's office. That's exactly where you want to be off the team. Now don't get on the right side of that hill because it can kick away. Oh, ran it a little long. That wind didn't let that settle down, caught an edge. He'll look for Barella, but he's been solid from circle two to start. And back to hole two for Paul McBeth. More importantly, inbounds for yes, Barella. Yeah. <laughs> Flirting with the line for sure. Ooh, that's moving Perfect. left a little early. Up, catches a limb, knocks him the fairway. Too far back to score, but 
Should be able to make a par from there. Wausaki next. Ideally, you want your disc flying at that person that's standing in the middle of the fairway out there and then breaking left from that point, just as this one's doing. Just like the climb ordered. That is beautiful. That is way down there. Heimberg. Calvin looking to replicate that shot, if not get past it a little bit with his superhuman speed. Looks like he's going high speed over stable, going for all of it. Yeah, the right side is not really where you want to be on this hole, so I'd say missing a little bit left is better than hmm. missing it all right. So that's why they're choosing the, the more stable, fading back to the left discs. Calvin, one of the best straight line throwers I've ever seen, laces this little bit left. The table didn't quite catch up, but in the fairway. Mm -hmm. I think two of the best in the world are on this card here. Macbeth. <laughs> yeah. Bus is waiting for our gents to tee there. Courtesy bus. <laughs> Clemens next. I think that's uh, shuttling the spectators in from the remote parking lot ah, they have. What a shape there from Chris Clemens. Too far back, though, guys? What do you think? That's going to be toughy. I mean, he is left-handed, which is going to give him a bit of an advantage on that second shot, but mm -hmm. he's a long ways back there. I think Calvin's a bit far back as well, and he's to the right of where he wants to be, but mm. it's doable. It's just the percentages aren't great from there. Third shot from Mason Ford on hole 16. Ooh, Ooh. got away a little bit. That was leaky. And A.B., can he drain another one? Of course he can. That was closer than it looked from the other uh, it, it angle was. of their camera. A.B. looked like he was right on the edge of circle one, and that's a hat trick start for Anthony Barella. Maybe the first person to do that all day. Huh? I don't remember seeing another uh, uh, yeah. turkey out there on the card. No. Mason, Especially Ford. not one, two, and three. Mason Ford with a nice uh, I just saw one. Did you? Yeah, right there. Not on one, two, oh, no. three. No, oh, one, not on one, two, on three, one, two yeah. and three. On yeah. those one, two, and three, though. Burr. Sure. Yeah. Smashes that one home nicely. Solid start as well. Macbeth in his second after the subpar drive. Yeah, that's all you can really do is hang it out to the left from there and open up your angle to the pin. Conceding for par, Macbeth here at the second. Didn't even want to challenge that target position. No. No, you can get hemmed up in there about 70, 80 feet away with nothing, like absolutely nothing to the pin. You can easily take three shots from there. Let's see if Clement is going away to the pin. Throw in two. Okay, he's going to air this out, see if he can get that late fade, get it into the mouth. I need to be higher and wrapping more. Mm, a little early, but a nice little oh. roll out there from Clemens. Should yeah. give him a little bit of a look. Maybe he can jump that up the hill. Yeah. It's not going to hurt that little kick out. If that went the other way, it would have been a lot more difficult. Yeah, for sure. Gilbert for the solo lead and a birdie on 16. Spoiler alert, he makes it. <laughs> Must have caught those trees right there. Because that thing looked like it had some speed when it went by the basket. And there's those three little trees oh. it was right next to. I bet you he caught those things right there. Good break. Robinson for birdie on three. That was two pure shots. Nice, nice bounce back for Isaac Robinson. Opening up with the bogey. Bouncing right back. Birdie, birdie. Love to see it. And back to two for Heimberg second. You can see where he is. He's like the, the route that Isaac took up that right side is not mm. accessible from there. So you have to go up and around. That was early, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was. He got that little early, clipped that pine tree, and it knocked him down and backwards. Calvin Heimberg, a little work left here at the second. I saw Brian out there. Maybe he can let us, let us know how Heimberg is looking after that second shot. No, Brian's not quite yet. We'll check in with our man Earhart in just a bit. Well, from past experiences, I'll tell you, he's in a tough spot to to get he up and down. He's yeah. definitely not going to have a run out. He's going to have to lay it up at best. What is Rick, Rick going over the top here? Lining he up is. a spiking hyzer. We saw Isaac Robinson throw it right through the gauntlet. Got through, got into the circle. Rick looking very vertical here at the moment. All right. With the wind blowing the way it is, this could be a, this could be a rough, rough decision if it gets a, bit, a little lift and goes way left. Oh, he, there it is, it right work. behind the basket for Waisaki. We'll check the lie in a moment. Heck of a rip. I kind of like that shot. 
You know, you got the backstop on the way back. Avoiding the out of bounds. Yeah. Gives huh. himself a chance, you know. Rick is good at those kind of creative lines. Yeah, you know? A lot of these guys are extremely yeah. creative and talented. Rick kind of stands out to me. There's a better a view bit. of it. Yeah, that this has got to be out near the OB line. <laughs> a live look down at whoa. A replay from our Flight Factory drone there. It's pretty thick back there behind that basket as well, so we'll, I'm not sure if he's going to have a wide open putt. Mm. He might have he might have a bit. Of One more replay of this Waisaki throw. Well, we watched this, Brian. How's uh, Calvin looking after his second? Yeah, he kind of got caught up in that reference point tree. It's uh, it's decent for a scramble, but yeah, there's no, no look at the basket. He's going to have to probably go up this right side, which is pretty tight. That it is. Thank you, Brian. There is Macbeth. Dumping it inside circle one. Little uphill putt left for Macbeth. Imagine about 20 feet. That'll be for par. Looks like the wind has switched directions. Earlier it was blowing the other way. <laughs> I was Seemed curious what like would cause some swirly oh. winds with all the hills and ups and downs and the canopy of the trees and all. You just never know. Sometimes it just kind of shifts it around. For sure, Philo. Heinberg? I, that's as good as he was going to do from there. Yeah, so Very nice. scramble. Little, little patch of woods right there that are really tough if you're dead center in the middle of those at the back end. Your leader, Thomas Gilbert, T of 17. This is a tough one. Daunting tee shot up over a little ridge and then back immediately back down. And there's a lake There's a lake down there on the right-hand side of the, that gap, and then there's an OB cliff on the left-hand side of that gap once you've crested the hill and went back down. There's all sorts of trouble waiting for you out there, and there's not a whole lot of good landing area on this tee shot. Staying for Mason Ford. Almost like a putter or a mid-range would do best. That looked like a slow disc, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. because of the OB line long, I think you, you would want to take a putter or a mid-range. Unless you're a lefty or a side armor, you could get away with a, a bit more speedy disc there. Oh, oh Chris tickle, Clemens. Tickle. Yeah, he just... Ugh. Wow. Half an inch, maybe, from falling into the cylinder there at the bottom for Clemens. Even on the good side, too, wasn't it? Man, he? he's so good at this that stuff, was man. was on the strong side. Look at this. Half an inch, guys. Oh. Half an inch. Dang. What an effort from Clemens. And Waisaki coming back for birdie. He did get a little long, didn't he? Oh, wow. Rick going to try to jab it in there. Misses on the left side. Chain high. Now they've actually cut down some of those bushes I was talking about that were super bad uh -oh. back behind it. And that's where I thought he went was back in there. But he must have got a little more left than we, we saw on camera. Macbeth. But you can see those bushes were cut flat. When those things were tall, you get back in there, you had nothing. His putt's looking really nice. Authoritative putt from Paul. Nice and solid. Like, it's the way you want it to be. Mm -hmm. I don't want any soft, you know, yeah. wavy, floppy putts going in the basket. Especially not on a windy day like today. Oh, oh my no, goodness. too close to miss from Calvin Heimberg. Hand never got into the chains. You saw it right there. That's better. Does the job on that one, but it's one stroke too late. Lack of focus or something right there. Uh -huh. Doesn't seem like he's got that eye of the tiger going on right now, Calvin. You can, you can see it in people's eyes when they're ready to go. and Maybe Calvin a little too relaxed today. <laughs> There's Waisaki cleaning up par. Clemens the same. And at one point in the round, Cole Rodolin was your solo leader. Since then, though, has run into trouble. Ooh, my. Ouch. Clean all the way to the end. Oh, man. Gosh. A couple like different shades on of on two landmines right there. <laughs> boom, boom. Ouch. Those are the worst, too. It's like, you know, it's freshest in your memory for the rest of the day, you know? Yeah, it sticks uh, with you. Uh-huh. Yeah. You ever got two uh. flat tires at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I have, man. I, really? I swear, I've got it. it's, it's not fun, and that's what it feels like oh, when you blow up like that goodness. at the end of your round. Fly us through this one, Ken. Yeah, this is a little bit of a raised area. It goes out about 150, maybe 120, 150 feet, and then it drops straight off, 30-something feet straight down to this ground below. Flying through a fairly open area, little trees on the left, but you don't want to get over there on the right-hand side against the wall in those trees. It's tough. You don't want to get in this left-hand side where these little oaks are. You want to be right in this little access road right there where Anthony Barella was. And if you put it there, you've got a fairly easy upshot. There's one tree, which is this straight one that's coming up to the top of the hill right here. If you can beat that tree, you're pretty much going to get a putt at it. But if you hit that tree possibly and kick right, you're going to be OB. FPO pin on the left, MPO pin up on the right. 
Not too much difference in positions there, but makes it a little bit tougher going uphill on that second shot to get back to that back end. You can see it's nested right there at the crown, right on the edge, so potential for rollaways. Oh, yeah, and an air ball putt could definitely <laughs> leave you 25 or more. We are back with your feature card in Paul Macbeth. This is one of the, just the cool things about this property is there's just little areas that you can't see, you don't know they're there, and you walk over there and like, whoa, check this can't out. Can't take anything for granted right, either when you're throwing right. the disc. Oh, totally blind. Totally blind where your disc lands from the tee. You cannot see it. You just send it out there. Ooh, that looks a bit right. Ooh, that might have been favorable. A little tree nip there. And uh, I think he got too far left. Ooh. Ooh. That got a nice little rollback out right there. That little five or six foot of rollout is a big. Like if he gets five, six foot the other way, he has no shot. But that little rollback is going to give him maybe a, a bending sidearm or a possible hyzer skip. Waisaki. Looks like he's slowing down. Looks like a mid or a putter. Yeah, you don't need real speed off this one. You need more of an accurate shot. You need to go fairly straight Whoa. and break left at the end. Look at what the wind's doing out there. Straight wind shear right there. Whoosh. Wow. Smackdown. And that's why, though, you were calling it earlier. You get into these little cutouts and these weird spots with cliffs and stuff, and the wind can do different things than what you think it's going to do because it's running off this wall. The wind's hitting a wall, and it's coming back at you the other Correct. way. Correct. Correct. And uh, that's, this property is full of that type of thing. You can see the direction of the dominant wind, but then you get below and it could get swirly and just kind of have to take your best educated guess. Oh, there it is. My. That's going to get into that early left spot. Yeah, that's, that's no good over there. You have no shot from there. That's basically a pitch out. Yes. It's being unfortunate to get to this section of the course when yeah. the wind is doing this. You know, there's other places where the trees kind of define the fairway a bit more and you can punch through a little better. Right now, everybody's getting affected here. That keep looks it. to be the line you want to throw right there. Yeah, keeping it flat, keeping it low, right? Oh, he's oh, got a bad roll away no. off of the rocks. That if it was sits, rude. Oh, it's going to go up into the trees. That was so oh, rude. That was bad. Bad break. Mm. He's going to be in a better position than Chris Clemens is, though. I'll tell you that much. Mm. Wow. At least he has a possible stretch out, and he's got the line to, the, to get to the yeah, pin. Yeah. Chris Clemens will not have any line to get to the pin. But still a bad break. Great shot for Calvin. Bad break. That was Mason Ford pitching out on 17. Deep in the stuff. Saw him catch that big skip. Got the ground play skipped up, trying to get back to the fairway. Oh, that, that didn't that's look so OB. good. That looked real wet. Yeah. Oh, no. I don't even oh, think, it's in. I don't even think it has to be in wow, the water. Did you on this see hole. that? I think, there, I think there's that a white line around <laughs> the yeah, lake. He was yeah. just on the other side of it. Did you saw the white line? Yeah, he's yeah. About, yeah. and a stake, okay. and he was about six okay. inches away from it, so he's safe, but doesn't look like a favorable lie <laughs> no, there for Mr. Not. Ford. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> he's going to have trouble getting up and down from there if he is in balance. Oof. That sounds like experience talking over there. Yeah, Ken called it earlier. This hole could, oh, excuse me, hole 17, rather, mm -hmm. could easily get you a double bogey if you get a little loose. I was playing Havoc on the FPO field as well this morning. And they play a shorter pin there. Yeah. The MPO pin's back tucked in by some OB beyond it and left of it as well. The MPO pin, is a little, there's some OB behind it. You get trouble back there where you think you're past all the trouble. No, there's trouble back behind it still. And there's a big cliff on the left side of that approach to the hole 17 as well. well that's why it's OB. Uh -huh. It's because it's a sheer cliff, and they don't want people going over there. It's OB for safety more so than anything. And Klein Heimberg, excuse me. The <laughs> I, I went there, dude. I went there. <laughs> and he just pitches out. Nothing doing yeah, there. Yeah, nothing. Oh, that, re that reminds, reminds me of the, uh, the, the toy thing. It's called the Ken Dama. <laughs> Someone should, it said it should be called the Ken Climo Dama. <laughs> I like it. Tom is fairly close to an OB stake. Yeah. Here you get the Ooh. final. You finally get to see the guess? second shot, what the second shot looks like on 17. That was He's still a bit short there. That's, That's gonna, fine. Yeah. He's going to be yeah. happy with his par under the circumstances oh, yes. and where he's at in the field. It's gaining strokes on folks, as Ian likes to say. Yeah, buddy. Waisaki in position to attack. A little this, farther back than ideal. This is kind of where you want to be. Yeah, another 30 feet forward for that purple disc where Calvin's disc is is, is ideal. But he can, make it, he can make it happen from here. You can go around that tree to the right, that, that straight one on top of the hill. Uh-huh. You can you can you can miss it on the right side and get still get to the pin pretty good. Just cut it off a little short. He's going to be right where that FPO pin is. That's kind of right where that is, and that's 35 ish. Okay. But a little bit of a button. Back drop on there. Yeah, got that drop off to worry about. Barella has started three for three. 
can he keep it going? He's going he over the like top that. on hole four, and there is all sorts of stuff that can happen on this hole. Well, no idea. We'll it didn't you sound know. like he was very excited about it out the hand. No, we'll show you that disc once we find it. There is the forward approach on 17. Job done. And back to your feature card. Are they trying to help Clemens yeah. figure it out? I think so, because Paul's was fairly close to the fairway, easy to find. Clemens was buried deep in there. I think he's farther up the hill than they thought. Figuring out who is next to play, and it's Calvin Heimberg lining up his third. Very important up and down here for Calvin, already one over par. Fairly routine shot, as oh. long as you don't hit the ground early. And yeah, did. he's or that 80 tree. feet from the target now. Yeah, that. At least. And with that ceiling, he's probably not even going to give that a run. Back-to-back -back bogeys for Calvin Heimberg here early on. Yeah. Most Macbeth. likely. Very uncharacteristic to her to throw it into the ground. That short in front, short in front of him. And yeah. knowing it's fairly steeply uphill right there, and you want to get some air under that disc to make sure you crest that hill. The gang's still knocking off the rest of the offseason, perhaps. Potentially so. Takes a minute. Or it can. Not, if, not if you're AB, yeah. I guess. <laughs> It seems like he stayed active, you know, his game's looking pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. He was playing in Arizona a lot. Yeah, a yeah. lot of posts from AB in the offseason. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you. And it did rain all last weekend, so there could be some areas of ground that are they look dry, but there might be a little moist underneath. And uh, you put your foot on that. Ooh. Caught a little something oh, early. Kicked out. Still Back got 70 lower feet. Level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, definitely out of trouble. Back onto the fairway. He was just not in a great spot. He didn't have a great angle to get around the corner there. And this one's even worse. And back to 17 for Gilbert and a look at par. It's just a bogey concession. So he was OB off that tee shot because he was right next to the white stake. Yeah. And I thought he might have been OB there. Mm -hmm. 17, claiming victims. He will drop left and right. back into a tie with Joseph Anderson. Uh, Clemens and his seconds. Is there a lane back over here? Not really. I mean, there's a lane out, but I don't think there's a lane all the way to the pin. You go out 50, 60, 70 feet, and then you have to break hard to the left and then go another 100 and some feet. So I really don't think he's going to be able to get all the way there. Yeah, that's as, that's as good as he was going to do. And an accurate prediction from the champ. I had a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Looking on the bright side, yeah. always, is Mr. Clemenade. Doing our job for he us. He was a great as you, man, on the course. He's a good hang. Keeps it positive. And a huge thanks to our friends at Flight Factory for sponsoring the drone coverage all year long. You can use code OLYMPUS to get a discount this week. 15% off this weekend only at flightfactorydisc.com. There, you can bust out your phone, look at that QR code. Support our friends and that Calvin Heimberg gear over there. If you're a Calvin fan. Clemens. We'll drop in par. After that tee shot in there, I think he'll take that. Yeah, for sure. Another layup. This is, this is the basket. You're not going to run it from 70 feet. It's just not worth it. Not going to do it. Yeah. yeah it's just especially early on in the tournament, you know, just trying to get the rhythm going. Yeah, there's the scores, and there's also the feelings to take into <laughs> consideration, right? Absolutely. Momentum and whatnot. You just don't want to hand over strokes either by being extremely aggressive super early. You know, it's really not necessary. You want to see what the pace is, make sure you keep yourself in contention. And I think that's why you put the MPO pin up on that little knob. And just to just that little bit of a mind mind bender, mind bender thing you wanna you know, and this is exactly what Rick's facing is do I go at it hundred percent? Yes I yes, do. Yes he do. <laughs> Nothing but the bottom of the cylinder for Waisaki. Bit of a death putt, stares it down and knocks it in. Nice stroke on the card for Waisaki. Game face on for Rick. <laughs> Always. Rick's got the tiger, you know? He's it got, it he's, never turns off. It never seems. turns I mean, off. He's got to be winning the tournament by seven or eight strokes with three holes to play. And <laughs> a sneak break on the network back in just a few. Some of my favorite discs in my bag are the A-Series discs. They're the ones I lean on to get close to the basket, and each of them have a consistent grip. So as you cycle through the series, you won't have to change the way that you hold the disc. These are 
torque-resistant discs that are more stable than the PA series provide a consistent fade at the end of the flight. The best way to find your flight is to get out and use these discs yourself. What is the simplest way to improve your disc golf game? The answer, learn from the very best. Paul Uliberry, Simon Lazak, Ezra Aderhold, and Holland Hanley. They're not just players, they are your elite coaches guiding you every step of the way. The Power Disc Golf Academy is the premier online disc golf academy with over 150 on-demand lessons that are specifically designed to improve your skills right now. So what are you waiting for? Join today at PowerDGA.com. I'm beyond excited to introduce my first disc with MVP, the Prism Proton MV, also known as Rebirth. The stamp is really special. It's an eagle rising from the flames. It's a disc that I feel like is so versatile, whether it be an approach putter or a throwing putter that can be almost classified as a mid-range. I absolutely love the fact that my name's on it and I'm gonna be able to throw it. It's an incredible disc. Hello, we're Kenna. We're a Dutch growing company. We love plants and we want to tell you some cool things about them. Just like humans, plants can communicate. They can sense when another plant is close. Plants look out for each other too. They warn neighbors about nearby threats by secreting substances. And studies have shown that plants love a good tune. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Looking at Thomas Gilbert, T of 18. Coming off his third bogey, actually. Also, he started his day with a double, even. What a way to battle back yeah. for Thomas Gilbert, man. He's one of those guys that just hasn't really found that key to consistency yet. An extremely talented player. He has some awesome finishes, has some great moments. But, man, we're just waiting to see this guy put the pieces together and stay in contention yeah. week after week after week. Setting himself up for a great weekend here in Florida. If he can get that up and down, he'll have the he'll have the lead, the early clubhouse lead. He's got nine holes today with birdie or or eagle. He's scoring. Ford over. Throwing it straight into the ground. Green flag. A little bird action here. That's not like a that's dove, a pigeon or a dove, right? Type of bird. Yeah. What do you say, Ken? Yeah. Are you, are you a member of Some the Audubon kind of Society? <laughs> I would go with Pigeon. Okay. There's a nice approach from Robinson, I believe. Speaking of birds, should drop that one in nicely. That is a well-earned birdie on hole four. That mm -hmm. pin is way back there. It's tucked up on a little hillside, and it's fairly close to an OB fence. I think you can see the tee pad of hole four right there. Oh, yeah. So, so we saw the Barella tee shot go over the trees. He ended up very deep in the woods. Uh, he pitched out, and when we catch up with him again, it will be his third shot. Speaking of. Sounds like some, some locals firing off some guns. It's legal to shoot guns out in this part of the, <laughs> is it? the area, yeah. This is a very rural area yeah. that we're in here. But he's going he's gonna to have to take the, the high line here, which has to fly up over this ridge and then cut back down to the right off the ridge where the basket is. The overstable approach got yeah. close. Found Ish. a sawgrass yeah. clump, which is looks like it's near one of the circles. Yeah, okay, one of the near the bullseye. But he's, right. if he's behind that, he has nothing. That thing is huge. As you can see, some of the sawgrass clumps have been chopped off about two and a half feet high, dead flat at the top, like to make them more playable. Mm -hmm. But that one got left to make it a blocker if you came in from that direction. Oh, and this year on DGM, we are introducing tiers, bringing in about one of those tiers with commercial free coverage. A little breakdown will pop up here in just a moment. There you go. There you go. A few different ways for you to get your yeah. DGN on this season. Yeah. The basic, the standard, or the pro. So we're on 
on that pro. It is that commercial free feed. As you can see, being a PDJ member has its perks and privileges. Yeah, it does. Mason Ford, 18, excuse me. Yep, sharply uphill. What a shot. Fantastic shape there from Mayor. He really anticipated what the wind was going to do to that disc and bled that out beautifully. Jumping back to hole four for Waisaki's tee shot. This is a new area of the, the property that hasn't been used in many years. There used to be a basket up near where this tee is, but now it's a tee pad and it's throwing downhill through a tight gap. See the tee gap there? And that's about as well as you can do it. Fantastic tee shot there from Waisaki. Staying on the right side there will give him an option to go up the middle or down the right-hand side by the by the road and the barbed wire fence. So he's got options there. He, I think he'll choose the down low right-hand side by the fence from there. I think it's a little easier to access the basket. The Macbeth tee shot? Similar. A little bit to the right. Mm. Caught something early, which is going to make it a lot harder to get to this pin. He's well back. You could really see Macbeth trying to keep that disc low, but yeah. just wasn't low enough to make it through. He had the line on, just a little bit too high. Clemens. Yeah, that extra 100, 150 feet that he's behind Wysocki is a big difference on this hole. Technical shot here for the lefty Chris Clemens. Does he have enough to keep it central? Squeaking Just through. Just a little off to the right there for Chris Clemens. Those are some trees that you don't want to be behind, I believe. Especially being lefty. I think he's going to have a, have a tough time from there. Heimberg takes the tee. Brian, how are the gents looking so far down on the fairway? We saw Clemens leak off just a little bit there. Yeah, uh, this hole's really tough because it looks like there's an expansive fairway here, but if you're too far left, there's no chance to get a birdie, so you have to push this barbed wire fence line down the right, and even then they still have a tough shot to the basket, so Ricky's currently in the best position. Awesome. Thank you, Brian. Our man Brian Earhart, fourth member of the broadcast crew on the ground this weekend. Huge yes, thanks to sir. him. Great to have him on. Oh, always, man. It's a valuable asset to us here on the DGN. Love what he's doing with his little series. He's playing catch and all I that. Love everything Brian's That's doing, so man. cool, man. Yeah. What an Got awesome you. idea that was. Love Great to see guy. him out there working and collecting that info and yeah. all that awesome footage. This getting to know you. these players more in person and getting off the golf course and talking about personal stuff yeah. a little bit more. It's really cool. And a bunch of great stuff over on Joma's Pro. To you watch saw that the look here. Series. Yeah, you saw the look to the tee shot here at number four. Here you see that fairway splits off into two sections, that red basket up high and the blue basket comes down below. So important for that tee shot to be in a good position here. You see how difficult the second half of this disc golf hole is. Very challenging to access the basket when you're way off the grid. Oh, Barella, fortunate to straddle this one out for a look. Got just to the edge of that clump, but boy, if this hits the rim, it can go a long ways. This is start steeply downhill steeply. and steeply downhill beyond the basket. Anthony Barella sees his way to another one. Fantastic putting for Anthony Barella. A lot of work just to save par. That's mm -hmm. a tough hole. Here we go. AB looking mid-season form already. That Arizona offseason helps out. Here's that elevation. He's due, man. On 18. He is. He there is do. due. Gilbert going up the hill on 18. Whoa. Oh, no. Oh, that was all the wind. <laughs> yep. Thomas doing the commentary for us. Looked like he put a good move on that, and the wind just said, not today. Get that little ante angle on that right to left, and it just smacked it out of the mm. air. There. Ooh. A bogey for Burr, and good that was. change there. Yeah, that was a good catch. <laughs> yeah. There's Dickerson cleaning up. A par putt for Chris. And we saw the approach for Robinson. Gets the birdie. Fantastic birdie at the fourth for Isaac Robinson. Oh, oh they're calling they're that calling a par. A par. Yep. Oh. Excuse us there. Maybe his drive was somewhere we didn't see. Uh, he, he pitched to where we saw him throw from. Must be the case. It was a great shot from mm -hmm. kind of near where Ricky's going to be on his drive. I think that's where he threw it from. So it looked like it was a birdie, but he must have had to pitch out to there. Macbeth looking at his second. I was looking at the course map and the whole distances on this hole had the 
FPO pin only 18 feet shorter than the MPO pin, but it seems to be about a 180 to 200 foot difference. Certainly <laughs> does. From that <laughs> drone flight, it looks a, quite a bit further. Yeah, it is. I know where that basket is, and I know where that other basket is, and it's a good, it's Farther, a good 180, rather. 200 foot between the two of them. What's Paul got left here, Ken? He's got a really long shot that he's got to keep over the, near the fence line and then get hard left, and he's still probably going to have a long putt up the hill. It's really hard to get close to this basket if you're not in the ideal spot off the tee, and he wasn't in the ideal spot, so I think he'll be happy with the par. He did what he could there. Shot. Nice, yeah. clean yeah. shot, stayed clean, didn't hit any trees, got nice little ground play, so... Seems like he's playing chess, not checkers out here, right? Just trying to play the course <laughs> well and make sure he keeps things in the middle. Kind of apropos with the tournament sponsor. I've been waiting all <laughs> week for that. <laughs> <laughs> what plane flight did you think that went up on, Philo? On Where the one from Cancun to uh, here okay. yesterday. <laughs> 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 oh, Mason Ford not chuckling about that putt, though, as it doesn't find the band. And bottom. thanks for reminding me about how many flights I've been I on. Know, man. Oh You've been goodness, man. It feels like about 20 of them already. What countries have you been in like the last three or four weeks, buddy? China, Taiwan, Thailand, Mexico, heading to Spain on Tuesday. Wow. Living life, Philo. Going, man. Uh-oh. Here we go. Straight oh, out of bounds. Did that squeak through the fence? It, oh, yeah. it's not a squeak. It's a barbed wire that's probably about 14 oh. inches off the ground. It's, it's, it just rolls right under it. It just rolls right under it. <laughs> that was brutal. There's no squeaking involved there. Oofda. Heimberg. What does he have for his seconds? This is that spot where you're kind of in between. You don't have a good line up the left oh. fairway. You don't have a good line down the right fairway. That's why being left off the tee is not that good here. The, you can take a little in-between shot. You see that kind of whitish gray tree that's on the back side of the drop-off there? You can shoot right through there if you want to be super aggressive to try and get a birdie, but that's about the only way I see getting up there from where he's at. Calvin trying to flex something. Oh, Ooh. That's, that's kicking towards the OB. Ouch. That could have gone out of bounds for Calvin. Didn't look good from the angle of that kick. Yeah, the only thing that could have helped him is the wind, maybe blowing it back towards the inbounds, but that looked like it was definitely going to fly out over the out-of-bounds for a little while. Brian, did you happen to catch that Heimberg second where it ended up? Yeah, got an absolutely nasty kick, and uh, he's going to be out of bounds, unfortunately. Oh, brutal. Potentially even across the road from the angle and <laughs> speed on that kick. That did not look pretty at all. He's going to have to rest. scramble to save bogey. Yeah, bad start here for Calvin Heimberg. I should say just a rough start for Calvin Heimberg. Just mm -hmm. hasn't really got a rhythm going yet. Meanwhile, Ricky Wysocki and Paul McBeth. This is one under par. Yeah, this is the ideal landing spot off your drive. It gives you the option. You can go uphill to the left and bank it back down to the right to the pin, or you can go down here on the right-hand side by the fence and skip it back up to the left. So he's got, he's got options from here, but definitely going right side skip that there's a giant tree to his left hand side that would make it a little tougher to go up up that up that left hand gap that looks pretty good oh mm. caught a low all, right, got all right all right that's about as good as you're going to do there because it's super steep right there up to the basket and you're not going to skip up onto that plateau you're most good. likely not ricky wysocki got about a 33 footer straight up the hill yeah Let's see if he can convert AJ Risley on the camera there. Yep. Retired touring pro, he and Rick friends from back in the day. Gilbert from the drop zone on 18. Mm. Unfortunate way to end the day there for Thomas Gilbert. They are giving him a double. Interesting. AB. Yeah, he had to pitch back up because he never made it in bounds on the far side, right? So you had to <coughs> throw that, that sh four, I guess, fourth shot again. Yeah. Correct. Or fifth would it be. Clemens rolled OB. Get off of that, and it does. Well, that was almost Ooh. clobbering that tree. That would have been game over on this hole for Clemens, but nice recovery shot. A little tap in there. Beautiful sidearm from Clemens. Excellent. Just whips it out there. As you can see, there's some large trees fronting this basket, 35, 40 feet short of it. So you really, it's taking it straight at the basket is tough because you, you run the risk of hitting those trees and kicking down the hill. So it's almost better off to, to play it around those trees like he did. 
You may have Man. noticed Calvin Heimberg taking a couple extra steps there. That is barbed wire, so you get two meters of relief. For any of you uh, disc golfers that may be new watching the DGN and may not know all the rules on the PDGA, barbed wire gets two meters of relief. That's for player safety. Settled down there for Calvin. Looks like he's just inside circle one. Little work left up the hill. A lot of work left since it's for bogey. True story. Par putt for Ford on 18 to grab two strokes. His upshot looked really good to have this left for par. Yeah. Maybe he ran it a little long. I guess. Solid round. Four under out in this wind is a good round. And he's tied with Thomas Gilbert after that hole concludes. How about that? Yeah. Thomas Gilbert, man. Bogey, double bogey finish. Unfortunate. It's the Redolin finish, right? It wasn't mm -mm -mm. exactly what Cole just did? Yeah. Maybe Hard to get it home holes, out here, apparently. Yeah. It's yeah. tough to get the, the that final stretch. Noted for Sunday, huh? It's going to be exciting on the way in. Hey, how about that? Joey Bucket's back on top, huh? Yeah. Through all that. Making Two stick lead. From the clubhouse. <laughs> how about yeah, that? From the clubhouse. <laughs> Shooting up line. the board. Nicolas Antela, the Finnish superstar out there two-thirds of the way through the track, see if he can make a final push and catch up to Mr. Joey Anderson. Macbeth in his third. Nice touch there from Macbeth. Solid par from a drive that hit the branches and dropped early in the fairway. Barella, the jump putt approach. We'll work for a drop in. Wow, that is so much greener than last time we walked through there a couple months ago. <laughs> it was all freshly pushed aside dirt and clumps and stuff. Oh, yeah, they must have planted some seed in there. Just, that looks really pretty. Nice. My sock look. Ooh, he's yeah. got that look. Couldn't quite wrap your leg up that no. hill. <laughs> a little too steep. <laughs> a little too steep right there. <laughs> what a putt from my socky. Right on the edge of circle for Wysocki up the hill. A little bit of wind blowing. It doesn't matter. Right in the heart of the chains. That's a big putt. Pretty sure that's a tailwind right there. And it's really hard to get your disc high enough going uphill with a tailwind. A little bit of momentum starting to brew for Rick. Let's see if Calvin can get it up into the chains from down low. This one's got a bit of a crosswind, so he's going to have to worry about it swinging left. That's a nice looking Ow. stroke there. Good spin from Calvin Heimberg. Sends that one directly to the center. Trying to mitigate the damage here, stop the hemorrhaging. Maybe that'll give him a little confidence heading forward in the rest of the round. You would think so. Those putts are definitely those motivators, keep you in it, keep you mentally engaged. Now it's Macbeth coming back, cleans up nicely. And Clemens will drop in. Jumping ahead to hole five, and Chris Dickerson with a birdie look. That's a nice traditional Dickerson jumper right there. The baby flexor into the heart of the chains. That hole right there is really tough to get close to. I think a lot of the birdies you're going to see on that hole are going to be 30, 35, 40 foot plus. You mentioned this earlier. We have already seen a lot of circle two looks and really not many in the circle for, you know. Or bullseyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's kind of a, yeah, you're right. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Just the way it sets up out there, it's really hard to put them super close on the scoring shot, yeah. whether it be the tee shot or the second shot on par four. Good job by McBeth for, for tweaking, the, tweaking the layout a little bit and mm -hmm. changing a few holes up to, to make it play tough. And this wind is definitely another factor that it's wow. keeping, them, keeping them away from the bullseye a little more than usual. <laughs> you fellas make it this top 10. Looks like a day one of this 10. Man. Maybe that's... Maybe, maybe, these guys it's a sign of maybe it's a sign of things to come. Maybe you just is. never know. You never know. This is uh, looking at this hole here. Talk about it, Ken. This is hole five. Yes, it uh, looks kind of wet down in there from the recent rains, I believe. That's where some water pools up. Play this hole the other direction. It kind of went across a small depression, maybe a 15, 20 foot hmm. deep chasm there. And it's, it's not a very far carry to the other side. And once you go to the other side, I think it's another 150, 200 feet to the basket for the for the FPO or the MPO pen, the blue basket back there. And the problem isn't carrying the chasm; it's getting your disc online with speed and skipping left. Here you go. Here's a better look at it. 
It right. drops off probably 15, 20 foot right in front of them, straight down. And then it comes back 15, 20 foot on the other side. But oh, okay. Circle two for Rick? Yeah. Once again, it, this is one of those holes that's really hard to get in close to the basket because it's such a steep upslope at the end of the, end of the hole. Mm -hmm. To be that high, you'd have to be flirting with the branches going across there. And you want to be, you know, be under those branches, making sure you get across that, that depression right there. Macbeth. Super low, going forward, hit the skip. Yep, that's about as good as you can throw it on this hole. And just once again, oh, it's going to Try be to take the open look from circle two. That's yeah. the best you can do. Yeah. Challenging hole. It really is. It plays a little bit uphill. You know, it's, it's pretty flat over to the other side, maybe a little uphill, but then it goes uphill from there to the basket. So I'd say it's a good 10, 10 to 12 foot rise from the tee to the basket. Clemens That's slides out the high. forehand. Ooh, he's taking the, the risk reward line, and unfortunately, it looks like he caught something. Sends him off to the left a little bit, a little congested coming in towards the target. Heimberg. If ever was a hole to get back on track, this is one for him. He's got the power, and this hole takes a little extra power to get close to the basket. Inside, Inside line. Past it. Smoking. Wind, not Needs to get left. Turn. Let's go. Needs to get left. Oh. Yeah. There's a little thing that sticks out off that side over there, and if you're not left of it, you're going to be in it. That was close to perfect. That was very close to perfect. Yeah. I'd say a foot or two mm -hmm. with a little bit of left bleed. Uh -huh. Seems like the wind is just not allowing the disc to make these turns. Just mm -hmm. wind has other ideas today. Barella. Hole six. This hole's very strange. It 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 seems like you have to act like you're aiming into the left woods off this tee pad to get it in the right spot. And we're going to sneak in a quick break. We'll show you AB's second shot on, on the other side. We'll catch you there. This is the game changer. Step onto the course with the pure premium disc golf bag, adding a touch of glamorous flair to your play. Don't miss the exclusive pre-sale at PureDisc.net for the best price. Upgrade your game. Upgrade your look. Power Grip is the premier disc golf shop in central Illinois. With five stores in Finland, we're the number one disc golf shop in all of Europe. And this is our first shop in the United States. With thousands of discs from over 20 brands, we certainly have something for you. If you're just getting started or you're an experienced disc golfer, we're here to help. Visit us today in Bloomington or shop online with free local pickup at PowerGripUSA.com. chess but don't know how to get started try chess.com play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots sign up and play for free at chess.com today some of my favorite discs in my bag are the a series discs they're the ones i lean on to get close to the basket these are torque resistant discs provide a consistent fade at the end of the flight the best way to find your flight is to get out and use these discs yourself Antela. An absolute tactician. You like his chances on a wood course like this. Spin in the catch cam, gents. That bodes well. Yes, it do. And back to Clemens. Just looking for the up and down par from here. And looks like he's most likely done that. Over to Heimberg, a long look at two. See if he can kickstart his round here with a circle two make. Yeah, Off that's the definitely mark. one you could be aggressive with because it's uphill behind the basket there. A bit of a backstop. You can be super aggressive from that direction. Same for Ricky here. Yep. 
Up and in for Wysocki, another banger. The These guys are back. making it rain from circle two. It's a circle two type of tourney, I guess. It certainly is. That's in my notes for the week. Nice. You have to make a bunch of C2s. You want to win this tournament. High Capitalize. in the chains from circle two. You love Man. the aggression from Wysocki. Macbeth. Paul almost snuck it into circle one. Looks like he's just a foot outside of it. Not much to push off of with that back foot. Yeah, that was, that was always going to be tough with that huh. slope behind him. The straddle might have been better off there. Seemed like it got to the basket and just died on him. Kind of dropped off to the right just a smidgen. Yeah. A little wind coming through off the... Potentially a little sheer, yeah, yeah. a little push. Yeah, because they're up on a bit of a ridge there. Once there. that disc got to the top of the ridge, the wind coming over top of the ridge. Like, <laughs> yep, bye-bye. There is the par for Macbeth and a par for Heinberg. One more look at this Wysocki putt. Powered by Nakwa. That's got to be 45 feet. He's 12 to 13 feet away from the. Yeah. yeah. Dang. Check out their adventure gear over at Nakwa. Just 4% birdies today on hole five, gents. It's just that type of hole where you're not going to park it. You're going to have to make a putt, and yeah. as windy as it is, you know, yeah. making those 45-footers isn't easy. Yeah. Not to surprise to see Mr. Wysocki nabbing one of those birdies mm -hmm. as a gamer. There's the Finnish phenom, the dream son-in-law, Niklas Antela. Got Luke Sampson on the card and Grady Shue back there. Oh, nice. Got a myriad of colors going on there. Yeah. It all adds <laughs> up to a minus three at this point, which is good. It certainly does, man. You definitely touched the rainbow, man. The Neapolitan scorecard for sure. Not many pars. Yeah, only three pars I think I saw. Action. Dickerson. Live action. A little tight on the corner. I heard a limb coming in. There it is. Yeah, All right. Falls into the sawgrass on the edge. That should be pretty routine up and down there. Mm -hmm. Hole six is a really cool hole kind of weaves off of a top area where you're teeing off. It goes downhill sharply and then around the corner to the left and then through a fairly flat open area and then weaves back to the right and then up into a little cubby hole where it's really flat where the basket is with like a wall behind it. It's just just a really cool hole. Is there grandma's house somewhere down there? <laughs> <laughs> it's got a lot of character in this hole. Over to Robinson on that hole six. Yeah, there you get a little better view of the the character I'm talking about. Ooh, Coming up short. Finish. Yep. Yeah. And there's the flat area I was talking about around oh, the yeah. basket. And then behind, where the, right where the camera is is a bit of a backstop, basically a wall behind it. Barella goes to the second. Lovely drive. See that tall pine off in the distance? You want to be maybe just inside that with this sidearm. Looks Breaking like right. That's the line he threw it on. Let's see how the finish goes. Oh, yeah. yeah, right in front of the bucket there. Another uphill look for Anthony Barella, who's been very sharp with the putter this afternoon. Yeah, that should be in good shape. That one's not too steep right there. It's only a four to six foot rise instead of one of those 10, 12, 15 foot rises. Taking a look at the scores, and the first top five guys are all in the clubhouse. Next in line, Ricky Wysocki and Anthony Barella charging. There's Gannon Burr. And Matt, his caddy. Ideal position off the tee. Definitely with this hole, with this second shot on this hole being a, a left to right shot, the side arm or, or counterclockwise spin comes into play here. But looks like he's pulled it a bit wide. Doesn't like it, but it's going to work. It's yeah. actually working up there for a, a putt. He's got to look at it. Yeah, filtered towards the bucket and we'll see if he's dialed in with the putter. Yeah, it's one of those guys where his reaction doesn't actually tell you a whole Most lot. Most of the time it <laughs> does it, yeah. No. Sometimes it does, but every yeah. once in a while he gets a little grumpus for no reason and everything <laughs> yeah. works out just fine. High expectations, as yeah. we like to describe Absolutely. it as. If it ain't perfect, it wasn't good enough. That's that's what you need on the tour these days, man. And the mentality helps, man, but you got to be able to give yourself some grace, too, you know, and sure. not get yourself too worked up all the time. Yeah, especially on a, a day like today in this kind of wind, on this kind of course with tons of trouble out there. Obviously, the field's not shredding it up. 
six under leading, four under is in second place, and that's not a usual sight here on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Yeah, what's what's even rated right now? Ten twenty three in the clubhouse. You shoot even par on the afternoon. That should speak to the difficulty Dang. and the conditions of the day in the course. Kind of remind you of a Northwood Black type scoring situation. Not quite as long or as difficult as a course, but the conditions are tough today. Yeah. Oh. That, that was a bit fortunate yeah. to just drop down right there. Wasn't the worst reaction for Robinson. Yeah, world champ love. Should get up and down for par from there and back to the sixes tee for Waisaki. This is where it just looks like you need to throw it all way off to the left of where you think you do. See, it's, see how it's, he's not, he took a little distance off that one. Playing for position. made sure he got it over to the left. That's going to leave him a long second shot, but he's playing from the middle of the fairway, which is key on this hole. That's an 800 foot hole, and that didn't look like more than 300, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. If that. Yeah. We'll see how much Macbeth chooses to, to bite off here. You are dropping about 25 feet in elevation off this tee to the fairway, so you'll gain a few feet from that. Beth safely into the fairway, just a little further than Wysocki's drive, maybe 30 feet. Mm -hmm. Both of them through super smooth, just controlled drives, trying to play for position. There's a load of trouble waiting on the right side of this fairway. If you try and get a little too powerful, flatten it off a little bit, try and get a little too far. Clemens, a nice little snap there with the flick. Looks like these players have learned that in the practice rounds to not challenge this hole with D, just to go ahead and yeah. hit their iron, as you'd say. Yeah, man. Club down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like Heimberg clubbing down as well. No more than a mid. Super stable mid at that. Yeah. And they're all four right in the middle of the fairway. But probably more than 400 feet from the basket. Yeah. Going to be some big shots. Yeah. Hole six giving up 12% breeze on the day, 26% on the bogey side. Dickerson up ahead, throwing three. Here's a good look at the, the backstop wall I was talking about that's behind the basket. See, he could actually give this one a run if he wanted to, but, you know, 25, 26 foot are coming back if you're all the way back at that back wall. It's not like a drop in. So, let's fly this one. Better kind of talk off about our, it up. our second shots these guys are working with here, Ken, as we fly through six. Yeah, this is, you really don't see it from the the camera we were looking at, but there's a drop down to the FPO, FPOT and then there's a second drop down to the fairway and then that big tree straight away is not any fun. If you if you flatten it off, you're going to be right into that thing and there's no advancing it from there. And these players, they aimed at that tree and then they took a hard left from there just to kind of dump into the fairway at this point here. And this set of trees you can also get into if you, if you try and go for a big drive and don't get it far enough left. You can get it down off just to this point off to the left hand side of the fairway if you challenge it and throw it super far and super hard. But your chances of getting there are slim. 5% chance yeah. of throwing the perfect drive to land right. in that position. Right. That's why we're seeing four of the best players in the world dump it out there in the middle and take their chances from there. Yep, your percentages are way higher from the middle of the fairway. On the green, Burr finds the band, not the You're bottom. Guaranteed par. You're guaranteed a par. Yeah, pretty much. In the other way, the yeah, yeah. potential to be in some weird places and double have to bogey. really work Bring for it. Exactly. Into play, yep. Robinson to clean up. And that was a hopeful par putt for Robinson. Yes, it was. Barella. That was a lot closer than what it looked like. Yeah. Well, inside circle one for AB. Oh, sit. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. Basically the same exact putt he had. See that flag waving the in the Achilles background heel, back there? That's the Achilles hasn't it been? The inside the circle, 20, 25. That's mm. the time. Line it up, do your routine. All right, good save. Yep. Mm. That would have been an awesome birdie to see. That was a good look at it, too, inside mm. the circle. But still a clean three down for AB through six. Few have done better. True story, man. Burr comes back for his par after also missing the birdie putt. It really seems like there's only three or four good opportunities to score on these opening nine holes. The rest of them are really challenging to get yourself in position to make a routine putt. Not that you can't make birdies, but they're just not going to be routine plays. All right. right. Or drop-ins, at that matter. You're going to have to hit putts. Back to the fairway of six we go for Waisaki second. He'll have that left for birdie. Another circle two look. Yeah, since he just banged one from a couple holes ago. 
Yeah. Almost a similar distance, similar look. 35 foot, straight uphill. Heimberg. Calvin's going backhand here. That means he's going to try and get the full distance out of this. Ricky came up a little short just to take the trouble out of play. And that's what you do. If you, if you go a little short on this hole, you take the trouble out of play. And Calvin's Wow, set. what a shot from Calvin Heimberg dribbling. It just passed the bullseye. That was incredible. If he Blind. Had turned, he yeah, if he had turned it. that another degree or two, he was going to be in yeah. the junk over there on the right-hand <laughs> side with no putt. It's the... There's the a, reaction from Heimberg, yeah. man, it's just like there's nothing. It doesn't matter if he's playing great or yeah. not so great. It's just, mm, man, whatever. <laughs> also, also like Burr, his reaction gives you nothing, but <laughs> in uh, a different way, huh? In a completely different yeah. way. Clemens and his second. Thin line of margin of error on this upshot. Yeah, coming in a like, little shy. Yeah, if you get in there too far, you have nothing. You're, you're not going to even look at it. You're going to have to just lay it up. Look at that super thick sawgrass on the sides of this fairway. Yeah, no good there. <laughs> See if that incredible approach from Calvin Heimberg might kickstart his day. A little bit of a slow start. As we look in at Paul McBeth lining up his second here at the six. He's going to have to shape something similar to what we saw from Calvin Heimberg. Nice. Hug the corner and a little too tight on the corner for McBeth. You got through, though. Punches through, but didn't make it up there. That's in the circle two range. If that yeah. feather is the marker for circle two, just inside. 65 foot range, yeah. Up the hill, add a couple extra feet. A, B, T of this seven. Is one of the easier holes on the first first nine here. It's uh, got one, basically one tree to beat out there and then skip to the pin. See, that's the tree you gotta beat. <laughs> All right, and he's yep. good, right yep. on circle's edge. See if he can correct that last birdie putts mistake. Get it in the chains, out the gate. Antela. On hole 15, just pitches out. Elevated basket, wanted nothing to do with that on a windy day. Yeah, back to seven for Robinson. There's a little drop off behind that basket as well. I think that's another reason he was probably laying it up. Not just an elevated basket, but drop off behind. Robinson swinging this a little wide, coming in side door. Oh, part job. That's Ta -da. a <laughs> <laughs> For my next trick. Not quite an ace. We had an ace this morning? And a broom roost. Ah. No, this was in the. Oh, all stars. Oh, okay. A little skipper. Ching, ching. <laughs> slightly it shorter pin. Slightly <laughs> shorter pin than they're shooting at right now, but Better still the same fairway, same shape. Everything's the same there. That young lady can really move some plastic, man. Yeah, she's she's she can put a hurting on a disc. Amazing. Macbeth, long look. Does it fine metal. Oh. Slides past chain high on the left side. And Clemens, see if he can manufacture a little magic he yep. did earlier with he's that good at it yeah, yeah he yeah. was right off the chains the last time Let's see if he can find the fields this time a little fluffy a little fluffy on that one but mm -hmm. rick a little more tenable for his birdie putt yeah uh, shove that off to the right too hard immediately you could see what he was going for overcompensation there for rick Let's settle for his par how about that second from my? I am up here. Yes, you Man, are, Calvin. That was <laughs> absolutely awesome shot from Calvin Heimberg, especially since he couldn't see where he was going. He knew where it is, but he couldn't see it. And trusted his swing. Threw a good little fairway driver up there. Make Beth no worries Dang. on that par putt. I really like the a lot of the placement of the sawgrass clumps out here. It's almost like a above ground bunker oh, yeah. Yeah. it can be uh -huh. make you change your swing a bit yeah par putt for Waisaki also finds chains and those come in with some heat don't they they are moving my man <laughs> I get that radar gun on that Ricky Waisaki putt I bet you they're oh. 25 30 miles yeah. an hour yeah we got AB back in the day he was touching like 27 28 Whew. that's hot yeah he used to putt a little faster than he does these days Rolling back the Zuka of this Heimberg approach from way downtown. Big and time. Eyes are flipping perfect. this fairway driver. Just perfect touch on this. Enters the green clean and bang right on the bullseye. 
Wasn't too far. Mark that, that one down up. for an OTB shot of the day right uh, there. Are we still doing that? Are you cheating again, dude? <laughs> hey, man, I got it. I'm old, man. I got that short-term memory thing going. I a hard it. time I remembering it. all kinds of things. <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time remembering what country you're in if you don't if you don't slow down this travel, man. <laughs> Maybe that passport's getting pretty full already. <laughs> Antela, I believe we're on 16. Yep, this is 16. There's a patch of small trees down that left-hand side that you want to avoid at all costs, and I see he's turning away from those. Just you do not want to be in those trees on the left. Even though there's an OB fence on the right, you'd almost rather be OB right on that fence line than you would in these trees early left. That was seemingly the more difficult of the two options, wasn't it? <laughs> that turnover versus the straight-up hyzer down yeah. the right side. So a, B, yeah, I think you can get more distance going that way he went, which opens you up on the next shot. Going this way, it's hard to get the distance to get all the way to the end. And AB could not keep that circle two magic cooking. Comes up just a little short right on that putt. Should work for par, though. Hole seven right in the middle of your screen. Speaking of, the green of seven for Chris Dickerson. Seems to be a little long in the basket there. No problem. That was a par putt for Chris. Gannon Burr. A, B puts in the par. Robinson. Birdie. What a shot. You think he's got a little chest chest checkers in his mind with the shirt he's wearing today? <laughs> oh, there you yeah. go. Uh -huh. mm. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Yeah. <laughs> Looking back down the fairway at Calvin Heimberg. Coming off that beautiful birdie on six. One of the flatter holes on the course from tee to basket, there's not much elevation change either way, but as you can see, there's still some undulation there. And the, the ground yeah, moves a couple this of little way. humps here and there. Yep, yep. Heinberg off the schneid. Can he keep it rolling? Looking for a little anti-skip. That was moving away from the target. Yeah. Now you pretty much want to field goal those two tree, tree stalks you see down there that are to the right of the pin. You get field goal those and you skip in the left a little bit and it ends up pretty much where Isaac's was. So if you hit one of those, now you got a circle two putt. You see the wind. Yeah. Jumping up and down. Wysocki potentially switching discs for something a bit more stable to be able to anticipate. This hole is definitely up high and exposed, unlike some of the other holes that are a little farther underneath the canopies and underneath the, the cliff walls of this mm -hmm. property. This one's way up high and exposed. That's why you're seeing a lot of wind right here. Rick was not fortunate there. Hit something early, finishing probably 50, 60 feet left short. Beth going to try to keep this down, and that's more in the middle. Will it hold the line? Looking pretty good. Oh. Also a bit short for Macbeth. Fell off a bit left and early. This is just a frozen rope. If you can just throw a frozen rope here, don't let it go left or right. Keep it flat. Just your basic send, send it away, flat disc golf shot. And get the job done here. Chris Clemens adds a little bit of shape to this. A little early turnover. Getting stable now. There you go. There's the finish you're looking for inside circle one. Opportunity to get things back to level par. Yeah, that's... And our very own Brian Earhart is with a uh, chess commentator, Danny Wrench. Uh, take it away, Brian. Love to meet Danny. I'm here with Danny Wrench of Chess.com. Not only is he an international master on the chess board, he also commentates some of the biggest events in the game. Danny, you're all over the place in the chess world. Yep. And now we're here at a disc golf tournament. Talk about this partnership. You know, if people didn't scream, oh, that partnership makes sense when Chess.com sponsored disc golf, maybe they were just missing it. No, I'm, I'm kidding. It's obviously a little bit odd, but um, Eric, CEO and co-founder, not with me right now, he and I are both Huge fans, huge disc golfers. We have to be quiet right now. No, we don't. Okay, I've been told we can talk louder. Um, so honestly, this is such a joy, and uh, 
it's been awesome to see the crossover too with the communities. You know, w one last question for you. Disc golf saw huge growth during COVID, yeah. but chess had the same thing happen. Oh man, yeah. Uh, the global pandemic unfortunately did a lot of things, but fortunately for chess and I guess disc golf, it completely changed just the trajectory of, of the amount of people into the game. and. It's been amazing, and, and I got into disc golf. I'm one of those people during the pandemic, so I guess I'm, I'm here because of uh, the extra time we had outdoors as well. So. Thanks, Danny. Back to you guys. Thank you, Brian and Danny. And thanks to Chess.com for the partnership. We really appreciate it. Absolutely, man. Macbeth on the edge of the fairway slash circle two. Hung that out Watch to the right a little. Yeah, there's some trees oh. back in there, some small mm. ones that you can get up in there and have not very good look. Was the reward there for that risk, Ken? That was I don't think so. With 70 the, feet. Yeah, with the distance putt he had there, I, Rick did the smarter thing. Robinson, T of eight. That one limb right there, you've got to beat to get up to this basket. This basket sits up on a plateau. The FPO basket sits down on the slope. This one sits on a flat plateau up above. And that branch is like right in the line of where you want to be. You get either got to go just high of it or just low of it. Just high of it will get you up onto the plateau back in the you know, park job. And just low of it, will, you probably won't be able to get high enough to get on the plateau, yeah. but you can get yourself a 25, 30 footer. And it's cleaner. You know, obviously down low, it's a little cleaner. And I Again, a huge thanks to our friends at Flight Frack for sponsoring this awesome drone coverage all year long. You were yeah. looking at Macbeth, and oh my goodness, it's got deep. Uh, it's almost not a look at all. You're just going to have to punch it through and pray. Oh, that heavy chains. Deep. Wow. Doesn't stick for Macbeth. He's going to scrape up bogey here. That's an unforced yeah, error. Yeah, the camera angle is a little rough for us right there. I think he had a little more better look than we were, we were thinking. But oh, oh, he got a kick off the tree. He got a man. kick off yeah. the tree to get Redirected. chained. Is tree directed in an air ball. It was. He did not have a very good look at all. Almost made it work. Chris Clemens going to slide that in for his par. Whoop. Oh, that was a birdie for Clemens. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yes, You're it right. Was. You're right. Yeah. Excuse me. Wow. Was I was just, we just, just said outside that outside the bullseye. Yeah. yeah. Right by, by that rock. He's back to even par now. I just said that two minutes ago. See, I told you my yeah. memory, dude. <laughs> I was a lion. <laughs> Writing is our friend. There's holding <laughs> yeah. back foot of the bogey, followed by the Wysocki par and Antela. Second shot on 16. A little tougher from the right side of this fairway than it is the left side of this fairway, but he's, he's got the distance that he needs to, to pull this second shot off. Looking right up the gut. Sidearm, he's going to need to throw it low and fast with a bit of a skip at the end, I'd imagine. Well, he takes the high line. Thoughts? Falling, fall off, fell off a little early, it looked like to me. A little early right, maybe. Back to eight. A little soft. Barilla. How do you like this option here at the eighth? I really like it because it, it takes that branch out of play. You can go underneath. Oh, he was a little wide. He was just a little wide left there. Caught the, caught the trees on the left side of the, the entrance tunnel to the, to the green there. But that sidearm definitely takes the, the branches out of play. The one tree straight away that you're seeing here. The tall tree. This kind of reminds me of that one hole at the toboggan where you got to throw it around that tree. It's like the downhill shot, and you got to throw it through the oh, tunnel. Oh, it's like hole 13. 13 or, or yeah. something. Uh -huh. It kind of has yeah. that same kind of feel with that one limb hanging out there that you got to beat and make that right turn. The first half of the hole, the first for sure. half of the hole, yes. yeah. Then you got a little different look that yeah, continues this goes, to go yeah, down. This, this goes comes up back hill. up. Yeah. Similar idea, though. Anthony Barella looks like he finished in the face of the hill about, I don't know, 30 feet. Maybe, Maybe a little justice. farther than that. A little Maybe. farther than that, yeah. He caught some early trees over here, 60, I would think. There he is. Out in circle two, doing the step through motion. They're getting Started off the day beautifully with two of these. Let's see if he can knock this one in. Has missed his last couple of opportunities to score birdies. No reason not to give this one everything because there's a little backstop right behind it. Straight uphill behind it. You can't go too long. And in it goes for Anthony Barella. Perfect. The whole way. To save. Wait, that no, should be hole that's, eight. It's a, it's a, no, that's a, that's a birdie. That's, that's a birdie on hole eight. It's a birdie on, it's, it just wasn't on the, it's, it wasn't the scoring showing. is, they'll, they'll update it here yeah. in a second. No, they weren't even showing a score for hole eight, so. Uh, it's got to be. Well, they have him putting stripes for par right now. Weird. Good stuff there from AB. They'll get him in there. Four under through eight. That was Gannon Burr. 
There we go. Now we're starting to see the fellas send him home. Oh, that one says par. I think someone's doing something. But once again, lots of longer putts having to get made. Not a lot of park jobs going on out there. They've been few and far between. <laughs> that is Burr. Should be two under par now after they correct that to a birdie. Dickerson. He's a little closer than those guys for sure. He's just outside circle one here, but once again, he's six to seven feet below the basket. Finds the bottom from circle two. Chris Dickerson, nice big. Tricky footing. Oh, he's a master of sorcery and trickery as Chris is. Dickerson. Doesn't matter how awkward the situation <laughs> it is, he seems to find ways more than others. He's that guy, man. Get the job done. And Robinson making short work of that, as always. There we go. Isaac Robinson turning his round in the right direction after that bogey start. Four big putts from the boys on that green. That big was time. impressive. Big time. You saw a name uh, starting to pop off. I will talk about that. Oh, I was watching uh, one Matty O starting to make a move. It was a couple over par after the turn, actually. Halfway through, two-thirds of the way through the round, was struggling a little bit. But, man, he really picked up the pace in a big way. Birdie, eagle, birdie, birdie at the 17th. Ooh. Unfortunately, did drive OB at the 18th, oh see if he can scramble out his par and get it into the clubhouse three under. The wind is having its way with this Clemens drive. And that's hung out wide. That did not look favorable at all. The jungle over there. Yeah, that you can get into a spot over there where the cedar trees are. If you're left and short of those, you can get into a spot where it's almost impossible to get up and down. So, not like, not likely people are going to bogey this hole, but there is a few spots on this hole that bogey's prevalent. Heimberg going high over the branch. Hold that angle. There you go, oh. Calvin Heimberg. Beats the trees on the entrance, so we haven't seen that yet. No. Like, haven't seen this hole yet, but that was pretty awesome to see uh, somebody take it up high like that and come in chain high. That's two holes he's driven past the basket where no one has even gotten. Well, he's waking up. Yeah, he is. <laughs> A little groggy to start the round. Now Calvin Heimberg coming to life, and that's definitely going to help his case here on the opening round. Chess.com. Nice. going to the forehand side. Well, it's nearly impossible to get long of this pin too far because there's a steep slope right behind it. So I think that might be a good play as long as you can beat the trees up high yeah. coming in. Makes a ton of sense. Waisaki dug in there somewhere in circle two for his look at birdie. And now Macbeth. It's got good shape on it. needs to keep turning. That hung out there. It's fading. Oh. Really quickly. The original shape looked great. It, it just needed need to keep did out the gate. It did have a nice angle, but it didn't have the right texture to it and a little too much stability. Let's check out Philo's Philosophy, brought to you by our friends at BlackInkDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Well, if you haven't noticed, as we've been watching this first round, precision pays. There's not a lot of room for mistakes left and right on these holes. We've been talking about it all show so far. You're going to have to capitalize from C2 because you're not going to get a lot of opportunities to make those little 25-footers for birdies. I have a feeling this is going to be a weekend of mental endurance. All the things that could potentially happen. These guys are out here already battling the wind and the elements. Hopefully the weather for the weekend simmers down and they can just kind of get back to doing what they normally do. But under the circumstances, that mental endurance is going to be a factor this weekend. When even is 10-23, the feelings aren't going to be amazing you know but it's different here you know you got to take that into consideration that's the name of the course it's not about making 15 birdies you know it's mm -hmm. about if you can get five or six and hold on to them you yeah. get to seven or eight maybe you're really making a push and making a move different feels for different courses definitely you should be proud of yourself walking out of here even par if you look down the leaderboard and you see how many guys are struggling this afternoon it should be cool the 10 right 23 rated even par for sure beat yourself up because you didn't shoot six down on a really difficult course is silly especially when you're getting a solid round rating like that he's, he's found a he's found the middle of those woods over there which can lead to some some tough approaches you have to get a bit lucky to get a, a decent looking alley out of there and that's all just a safe par 
Brian, thoughts on this Macbeth second here? Is he going to find a way in? Uh, I mean, he can always find a way in, most likely, but there's so many vines hanging down and Spanish moss and whatnot. It's going to be pretty tough. Oh, wow. He got halfway there and then Ninja Branch straight down right on Circle's Edge. Let's see if Macbeth can convert that one. Work to do. Birdie look for a Waisaki. Fairly steep right there. 27 footer shouldn't be an issue for Rick. Yep, just a little bit of weird stance going on. Oh, too much want on that one for Mr. Waisaki. He's going to walk away with a par. Just anything that takes you out of your normal routine and rhythm, you know, whether it be the stance or a stick or a branch or, you know, it's just always, it's always nice to be able to do it normal. Yep. A normal putt, a normal stance, a normal. It doesn't no, seem like there's much process. of that at all around this property. There isn't. <laughs> Seems like every putt you're going to be on a side hill or an upslope or a downslope or, or something. Or a vine or a bush or the wind. Tree limb, or, yep, something. Yeah. Just inside the circle looking for par, Macbeth. Short again for Macbeth. That's three or four putts in a row we've seen from Paul off the mark and without the appropriate pace or look. That's two holes in a row. He's given, given strokes back to the field for sure. Yeah, he definitely gave one to Rick on the last one with that deep run from 70 feet. A little too aggressive. Blows by down the hill. Rick saw that and was like, thank you. <laughs> I'll take that stroke. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you. There's Macbeth. He'll be sliding back to one over par after this bogey drops home. Clemens. Even these shorties, you know, it's... It's just weird sometimes. You got to give it your full attention. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the low-hanging branches that are moving. Coming Absolutely. Into your view, out of your view, into your view, out of your view. Then you've got a weird stance. you got to look at the wind blowing through. Like, just a lot to think about here on a 14-footer. <laughs> oh, no. What was that one you said earlier, Ken? You think long, you think wrong? Yeah. You know, it didn't seem like he thought too long. He just tried to get comfortable and yeah. get himself okay. set up. And All right. I don't think popped that was it out thinking. there. That, yeah, was, more, that was more setting up. One. That was just more setting right. up than thinking, I think. Getting comfortable. Heimberg, what a drive. And that is strokes on the card. Yes, it is. Two on half of them. He needed it, too. He was falling behind the pace there a bit. Yeah, he was. Alvin's starting to wake up. Back-to-back -back birdies for Mr. Heimberg. Gets him. He is obviously tied with Macbeth at one over. Still, still room to make some moves. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, still plenty of room. Get it to three, four under on the day, and that's a solid day's work. Yeah. Until the tapping in. Pull up Matty O and get busy on the back. No nine. doubt, man. Get that final stretch par. hasn't been doing it for many, but Matt Oram almost got through clean. Did he get that last par on? Let me see him here. I got you one second. He's right there. Yep, he got his par on 18, so solid finish there for Matt Oram, even with the OB drive at the 18th. OB drive, good upshot under the basket. To land a solo second thanks to that birdie. On there 16. you go. Still got to get past the gauntlet of 17. It is coming up. Averaging two thirds of a stroke over par between the two. Wow. Ouch. Antela. Uh, oh. Do you think that, that may have helped him if it slowed him down? That's not going to kill him. That's not going to kill him. I think he should be able to get par from there. Yeah, we got if, a he, if he plays the second shot safe, if he gets aggressive on the second shot, anything can happen. But if he plays that second shot safe, he should be able to get par. Johnny McCrave puts that one in. Let's check in on his scores. Yeah, I saw it earlier. He yeah. was struggling a little nice. bit for yeah, Mr. That, Johnny McCray. That head was down, walking Four off. Four over through nine holes. He's got nine left to play. See if he can turn things around. He's one of those guys, man. Get Getting to that brewing. scoring stretch is kind of coming up. It seems to be like uh, 12 through 16. We're seeing some pretty good scores from the gang. He's got a lot of mojo on this course. Johnny McRae won a lot of a lot of times on the the old canyon tournaments here and some throw down the mountains that Mike Barnett ran. He's uh, he's won quite a bit on this course. So I look to him to bounce back a little bit here on the back nine. Yeah, with you. Robinson nine. This is a new hole on property. Looks like it's a little too low to get up top. Yep. Yeah, it didn't have the appropriate shape out the gate. It's a long carry to that far lip. Maybe he was expecting a little lift from the wind or something. Tried to throw down for it to get a little air air lift up, and it just never happened. 
Well, this is the one area of the course. There's a bit of a high ridge off to his right, maybe 100 yards to his right, which is blocking a little bit of that wind that's Copy coming that. in. And you can see that everything's not blowing around here as crazily. This, this is a little bit more sheltered Oof, from the wind, this area of the course. Does it sneak up? I don't think so. Well, this I think he snuck up into the face of the hill. Yeah. Which may is... Have a, ooh, oh, that's it did slide down. down. Yeah. Oh, maybe yeah, not. Yeah, that's, that's extremely a steep. cliff right there. It is wow. a cliff. <laughs> Up on further review, <laughs> it ain't happening for anybody. <laughs> Let's see. I don't think you want to get stuck in the side of that hill. How are you going to get to it? I think uh, it's a free relief if you're up on the super steep area there. I think you can take it down at the bottom with no stroke. Is this a Patron or is it a Jose Cuervo? Yeah. Looking like Cuervo. It's not top shelf, I though. I was about to say it. Not enough juice on that yeah. one from Dickerson to make it up top. Can Burr get it up there? You like his chances. He's got this shot shape. He likes to throw it hard, too. Yeah, and that uh, baby flex, you know? Absolutely. And the problem with this one is getting it up high enough to get up on top is then you're running, running into some limbs that are hanging down Creating from the, the upper canopy. part of those right. trees. Yeah. If you get it super high, you can hit those limbs. There we go. He's got it in the space. Will it have the speed to carry? I think that's it right there. Gannon Burr oh. bounces oh. it off the pole practically oh. and skips it deep into circle two. 45 footer coming back. He's got some room to take a stab at it. Yeah, yeah. That, that clips, what, 20 feet beyond? At least. Yeah, that's at least. good. Second shot for Antela on 17. And he's not shooting straight back at the cliff. He's on a bit of an angle, so he may have 25, 30 foot before. Yeah, he should be running that one. Antela was safe off the tee. What's he looking at here, Ken? Well. Well, OB Lake right in front of him, cliff off to the left, which is OB on the left, and lots of stuff on the right. So I think a chip, a chip out yeah. safe play is kind of what he would need to do here, I think. If he gets too aggressive, he's bringing high numbers into there play. There you go. That was an extremely conservative spin there from Nicolas Antela. Yep. Just trying to get himself back in position, get his par on. Yeah, that was the prudent play there. Yeah, he went he's a smart golfer. Yeah. I don't know how much you've gotten to watch of Nicolas Antela, but he's a super savvy, savvy golfer. I like his game. Look at the elevation on this putt for Dickerson. It's insane. Reminds me of Renaissance hole one. Put <laughs> down from down in the canyon. Uh -huh. <laughs> Straight up. That should work for par for Chris. So this hole's 465 with about a 430 foot carry. 435, 440 foot carry somewhere in that range. So that there's be that the relief that's, marker. That's the relief marker line, Copy. I believe. Because it's super steep there. You yeah, can't yeah. stand there. You won't even see the basket. Yeah, so it's, it's probably impossible to anyway. even stand it so steep there so they give them a free relief from that area there. I'm sure it's, it's a little dangerous, too, with yeah. all that loose rock and gravel. And you could chew yourself up pretty good trying to fool around in there. Wise decision from the tournament directors. I don't know if there's one specific spot you go to or you just take it in line with the disc. I imagine you take it in line. You know, you're in line with the disc. That's what it seems yep. Anthony Barella is doing, brought yeah. it down a meter and giving himself a solid bit of footing. Not it the best, but better. The fair way to go about it, because why should you have everybody shooting from the same spot when they're distant? And it's going to get more spot. eroded then as right, well. You know? right, right. Smart stuff. Yeah. There you go, Anthony yeah. Barella. We'll tap in left. Formality putt, if you, you sure? will. I'm sure that was blind, too, you know? Oh, it's totally blind from down there. You, you can't even... You can't even see 10 feet above the basket <laughs> from down there. <laughs> Robinson's attempt is... Off to the left yeah. a little, but should be just fine. Maybe the best of the bunch from the bottom of the hill. Antela in his third on 17. That was smart. Smart play to put it there. Throwing the same disc as hit the second, that overstable approach. A little bit of shot shaping left here for Nicolas, Nicolas Antela. Get down. That's going to Nice job. Yeah. Nice work there. Par does not hurt you on 17. You are gaining almost a full stroke on the field. Nearly the day, three quarters of a stroke anyway. Yeah. It's like the wind direction they have going today makes it tough to stop near this pin. If you do happen to carry it 435 feet to the other edge, uh -huh. the way G I guess it was Gannon. Yeah, Gannon went screaming through there, hit by the pin. And I think he just got an unfortunate bounce, you know, yeah. like an unfortunate skip. He hit somewhere super flat. If you end up to the right of this pin, there's a little bit more of an upslope to stop you. But to the left of the pin, you can see it's... A so could you imagine if his disc had hit 10 feet further back from where it did? You see, there's a little bit of some right, grass right. and a little steeper of a hill bank there. He it hit like where it's perfectly quicker. flat and yeah. it, boom, like ice. 
Gave it a go, but not to be for Gannon. Oh, Par well. putts coming up. Dickerson first of those. Tailwind there for Chris Dickerson. If you saw the grass. Super flat. flat release is good with the time the wind's up high. And he putts fairly flat. He does indeed. Motion's flat and the nose of the disc typically comes out extremely flat with Dickerson. A little bit of early turnover, if you will. A par frame going to happen here for this group on hole nine. Par frame for the fellas. And Antilla cleaning up one of those. Solid par. I mean, a little bit of trouble there off the tee shot. Did the smart thing. Got himself back in position. Another very solid textbook approach. Great pace. Good touch. Good angle. One birdie left on the table for Nicholas Antilla. If he can capitalize at the 18th, he will have a share of the lead. Not bad for only having four pars on your scorecard. Not bad at all, man. He <laughs> was on a roller coaster today, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. All kinds of ups and downs for Nicolas Santala. Heimberg now on the tee of nine. He's definitely got the pop to get it across there. Does he have the right angle? This wind has picked up a little bit. It's going to be tough to get the right angle on this one. Heimberg still Push. over on the round. Oh, he put one. a move oh, on yeah. that. He did. It's looking very similar. Oh. Similar to, it. similar to Gannon's, but it stops quicker. He hits a it different did. spot. He did hit a different spot, and that's the difference. He, yep. Gannon definitely got a slippery spot. Got a greasy one, if you will. And Gannon skipped nearly right by the pin. It yeah. did. He was yeah. right under the basket, yeah. and it yeah. seems to be very flat there. Yeah. Calvin flew 15, 20 past the pin, and it stopped almost immediately. Oh, it certainly did. Why, Saki? Oh, oh, oh ripped oh, over oh, on whoa, it. Whoa, whoa. That's not something we see every day from Rick. Overcompensation there. Yeah. If that stayed going right, it, it's it who knows could, where it, that is. You know, <laughs> it, it could get up into a really nasty situation. There's that canyon wall that goes around that whole side over there, so he's not going to come out of the. He's going to be down in that lower area somewhere. But it, there's a bunch of trees on that right side where he could be behind those and make it really difficult because he's going to have to go around the trees and then up over the correct the up on the shelf. Yeah, yeah, it's he could be no, in a baby. bad spot unless he got a decent kick. Let's see if this fade will kick in on get up, Clemens. Oh. No. Just a little bit shy on the speed for Chris Clemens. Down at the bottom of the hill. Macbeth also sitting at plus one along with Heimberg. We'll need to get cooking here. I think Paul designed this hole because he wanted to see a lot of shots like Chris's just come in just short, uh -huh. hit the hill, and not quite make it. And, oh. well, Macbeth opting for a different line, trying to get aggressive straight down the middle left of the trees. Everybody's been going to the right of, and that is moving left in a hurry. Not really sure where that's going. Never got it over. He's, he's actually going to go towards the walking path up to the hole, which is can be bad, but not quite as bad as that deep right side. Yeah, where Rick went seems to be the worst miss of all. Yes. Take another look at this Calvin Heimberg drive, hanging it out there along the right side. Had some looks, but it was a little high coming in. We're going to have to split those two right at it the end. Mm -hmm. Touches down about 27 feet and stops about 30. <laughs> he even got a little backup. Kind of came back towards the pin it a little bit. Certainly did. A little fortunate ground play there. Antela, 18. This hole has produced some scores. Usually not the good ones. Yeah, a couple of people have been having a hard time just landing safe here. Mm -hmm. Santa, yeah. though, that looks really nice. Yeah. Right down the middle. That's exactly the way you want to throw it. Wow. You see those little clumps out there, little sawgrass uh -huh. clumps? I was tied with Austin Turner one time coming into this last hole, and I threw a shot exactly like Nicholas uh -huh. Angela just did, and it hit the clump, stood up, and rolled OB into the lake. No, right. To lose by one. <laughs> well, we got the man from Oswego. Illinois. Move. Gavin Rathbun, five under, solid round, bogey free, I believe. Yeah, and I see any red on the card. Nice work. Yeah, back down, healthy. Solid out here. Plan Ooh, well. Rick Ooh. gave that a half go and bounces it off the koozie almost, I believe. Yeah. Tap in left. Bogey yeah. free, five under.
for where we thought that disc was going for Rick. That didn't turn out so bad. He was down there in the flat, didn't have much he, of anything his way. He must have kicked back He must have got some kind of a fortunate kick. Yep. That looked like it was going into no man's it land. It looked like it was going over there to the right. He was actually to the left of where we thought, but Paul's going to be off to the left in some weird spot for sure. Yep, there he is. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Oof. Oh. He got worse Ooh. than I thought. He got way worse than I thought he did, and Paul or Ricky got way better. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, this is. Brian, is there a line here, or should Paul pitch back out to the fairway? Uh, there is a line here. It's definitely risky. He's going to have to hit some sort of small gap with a pretty steep Anheuser. Best of luck to Macbeth here. In danger of going plus two for the round already. And exposing the disc to the wind with this much angle. It looked like it caught a little on the way out. Oh, oh no, no. Shot. Excellent shot from Macbeth to get out of jail. Looked like he had almost nothing. Crafty, crafty from the sixth time. Yeah, it's optional. We're hearing that it's optional in that boxed in area on the cliff. You can you can play it from where it lies or you can take it straight behind. No penalty. Same line. And he looks like he's in a spot where you can stand. Yeah, it looks pretty f Yeah. Pretty but another decent. another two or three, four feet up from where he's at though. Nothing it's, good. It's vertical from there. Yeah. Gavin. Zero circle two makes on that clean five down. Wow. Yeah. How about that? He was throwing today. Bet he had a lot of long circle one makes, though. <laughs> 28, 29. <laughs> yeah, it was 11 of 18. Oh, wait, was it? No, excuse me. Five, only five of seven in circle one. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe just they were clean. all the birdie putts, Just man. a clean yeah, round. Just a clean round. Just a clean Just because we had a different prescription for success today doesn't mean there aren't other ways to get it done. Yeah, for sure. Figured a lot of circle two makes would be the route, but Gavin said, I don't need to do all that. Oh, gave it a bid. Yeah. A couple pars there for Clemens and Macbeth. Yeah, another opportunity for Heimberg, man, to gain some strokes. That's right. Started off super flat and looking like a little frumpy and grumpy moving around there. Now he's he's on pace. We are on the bridge hole with Isaac Robinson. That is a really oh, tight, low man. ceiling hole. It's a tough get. That started off on such a great that, line. That's it a good like the result wind just on got this it. hole. That you still like it? I still like it. Even though he's putting towards a bit of a drop off, I still like it. It's this this is a really demanding hole. As you can see there's a drop off to the right, there's a drop off to the left, there's a low ceiling, there's trees all the way down. A little remembrance of a hole over at Dela, huh? Yeah. There's a there's a there's a big depression as you get about three quarters of the way to the hole, and then there's a big up to the basket which sits on a plateau. That's flirting with branches and catches them. How see how it's up, see how it's up above, and then there's a big drop off, and it's over towards the cliff on the right. That, yeah, Isaac's putt is probably going to be a layup, I'd imagine, unless he's just really feeling it, especially in this wind. Uh, he was really feeling it on hole one. We'll see what he's doing <laughs> at this point. <laughs> see if he's still feeling it. <laughs> Heimberg for birdie. What a drive. Just outside the circle, it looks like, but I think he needs to make this, get, get himself back to even with a back nine to go, get back into this tournament. That'd be one heck of a turnaround for Calvin Heimberg. Can he convert? Nope. No. Still just needs three or four down on the back to get himself a foot a foot back in the door of this tournament, yep. you know. Three or four back after the first day isn't gonna kill you. No worries there for Waisaki. Heimberg in for par, Macbeth and Clemens will do the same. <clears throat> Checking out your top 10 as we got through the front. Yeah, halfway home. Mm -hmm. First round of the 
Chess.com Invitational from Brooksville, Florida. Season opener here for the 2024 Disc Golf Pro Tour season. Already, fun stuff happening. Mm -hmm. Love the character of this property. There's just so much going on. Around every corner, there's something new, and every nook and cranny, there's something different. It's just you never get the same look ever. You can play this course. 50 times in a row and probably never have the same shot twice except for the tee pass. The Someone, only thing that seems repetitive are the, all the ups and downs. Yep, <laughs> that's about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> up, down off the tee pad, up to the green. Someone had to thought it's a very different start to the year than Vegas. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, well, that's a birdie fest over there yeah. on the West Coast. Lots of birdie opportunities. Gonna Lots have to of shoot. airspace. Yeah, yeah, wide open spaces, but then you got the weather that could be hit or miss, so you just never know in Vegas. Oh, Mekala. Hanging around. Typically see the scores in the 40 under par out at Vegas. That ain't happening it's, this week. We'll be happy to see across 20. Yeah, I think if someone gets the 20, they're going to be looking real good for the win. As we're having a tough day down there, I saw Ader hold it two over. Carter, Carter Aaron's three. Yeah, young yeah. man. Kevin Jones. Impressed me last year. James young Carter. Conrad. Yuli. A lot of guys oh. struggling out there. Course has teeth, and with this wind, they're even sharper. Absolutely. <laughs> the mouth seems to be a bit bigger too with this wind. <laughs> Easier to fall into it. And the we throwing go. two on eighteen. Is the wind coming down here a little bit? No, you're just down in a bowl here. Okay. So you okay. just walls on all sides of you at this point. Okay. So you're down in a bit of a bowl. You saw Thomas earlier throw it, yeah. and when it got up a certain distance, it, that's when the wind affected it. And I think that's that's where we're sitting with this. Is you're down in the bowl, not feeling it too much at your feet, but once your disc oh. see, once your disc gets above 20, 30 feet high, it's you start getting affected by that wind. You can see the flags on top of the hill. Oh wow, ripping! Look at that. It just picked up as soon as the spotter came walking out there with the flag. It seemed a bit calmer, and then all of a sudden, boom. Some bonus goat footage for you guys. The red chain on. He's styling out there. <laughs> the goat with the goat. We got the goat in the booth this weekend. Sure they do. Philo. Where? I need to have a red chain on. Oh, it's the goat. Is that Magnus Carlson? That is. He's here? How about that? Oh, my gosh, man. I've only seen the guy on TikTok. Dude, he is. That's a world superstar right there, man. Big time. Wow. Wow. That's so cool, game. Brian, have you gotten to meet Magnus yet? I'll let him know. I did get to shake the man himself's hand. He just kind of caught up with us. He followed Simon oh. Lazat for a few holes, took a little break, and now he's uh, now he's here on the feature card, uh, soaking in the action. His brother-in-law is a pretty solid player from Norway, and sounds like he's into the game as well. So pretty, uh, pretty amazing stuff. Wow. You shook the hand of the best chess player ever, Brian. That's amazing, man. Yeah, I think Beth doing the same thing. Yeah, that's the goat hand. <laughs> a little goat meat goat. <laughs> hoof to hoof. <laughs> horn to horn. <laughs> hoof to hoof. I like that. <laughs> Amber in the woods in thought. Is he waiting for someone else to shoot or just waiting on a card nearby to play their shot know. away? Hard to say. Hey. I believe we got a game. Oh, they're in for tee shots. There. There there tee shots ahead, yeah. yeah. It's on 12, I think. It's like a Kale Visca stroll. Yep, that was. That was that nice. <laughs> Kale Kale Visca. Nice recognition. Yeah, you know that guy's walk. Don't you? <laughs> a lot of shoulders in the sway for Kale Visca. He's got some swagger, man. He does. One of the craziest disc golf clips floating around is that one where he chased you down. Ken, you remember that one? Oh, in Minnesota. Uh -huh, Minnesota. That yeah. huge putt on the last 70 hole. Big 70-footer yeah. on the last oh hole. My. The ski slope. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Burn for par. I Not had to it. take him out in the playoff, though. You got him? I had to take him out in the playoff. <laughs> that was very exciting at the end there. Yeah. 
not to be for Burr there. That was the Isaac, I believe, from well left, which is just it's a severe, just 15, 20 foot drop off on the other side of that basket. I just I couldn't see you going for that one. Dickerson. Maybe final round if you're a couple back and you need it. I could see that happening, but first round. Marked as a par putt for Dickerson. Bit of a tester. 38 footer they're giving him. Yeah, I mean, going for this could lead you to a double or triple. You could, there's the OB barbed wire fence down at the bottom of that hill as well. And super soft. Yeah, that's the only way you could have super soft. Put all the touch on that. Just yep. came up a hair short. And you saw it was breaking left as it got, you know, you didn't want to have anything to do with that right side. For a bogey look from 15. For a 341 foot hole, this hole is not easy. You it's said it earlier, <laughs> hole 10 is short but nasty. <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised to see some guys picking up some bogeys here and it is happening right before our eyes. A lot of pars, but. Two bogeys, two pars there. Yeah, yep. there's the Dickerson bogey. That yeah, was the bogey for Burr. Excuse me, I said par. Grady Shoe, green of 18. Burr. Mm. In the bottom. But we believe that to be a par save after an OB shot it somewhere along the way. Well, you're really feeling the wind up there on 18th green. Look at that. That's one of one of the more exposed areas as well because there's an open canyon in front of you, so the wind just comes ripping through there and then comes up that hill and creates a. A weird cheer. We saw what happened yeah. to Thomas. Yeah. I think that's the T of 10 we're looking at there. This hole used to go forward about three quarters of the way to the basket and then duck hard left downhill off to the left back in the day. It was uh, a lot easier to not make bogey, I would think, but it was still just as difficult to, to make a two on. But this one has a, brings a little bit more, uh, more of the trouble and a little tougher shot to get all the way to the pin. Didn't look so great out the hand. Super low, but the fairway does drop off. So if you get over that drop off and you're low, it'll move forward. But he's definitely not going to be inside the circle. And, we saw this basket isn't really one you want to putt at if you're not inside the circle. Wysocki on the right-hand side. Oh, that fade in time. Limbs, no. Oh, oh no. kicking Big left. Kick all the way across the fairway and down the hill some for Wysocki. Behind Looks like a little stuff. trouble down yeah. there. For surely some trouble down there, especially with that pin tucked up on that hill. A couple of yanks of late there for Wysocki on 9 and 10. Clemens. Gotta get down. Sneak. Yep. Mm. Oh, you yeah. see it start drifting to the right a little. Wonder mm. if that's the wind as well. Mm. Started off looking pretty good. A little high, but didn't see it moving to the right like that. Yeah, Nobody the line would have been okay with that 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 cross limb. You just definitely have to be underneath that thing quick. It's it's right there. Macbeth. See super low. That's kind of the way you want to do it right there. Maybe oh, there's that wind that push again. Sheer. There we go. Another big kick and down the hill for Macbeth. That one. Yeah, and that okay. looked nearly perfect for the one first 120 it. foot. It, it certainly did. Right. Yeah, this hole is on a sh steep ridge. On 18, Luke Sampson fires at home. Nice putt, Luke. Absolutely solid putt there from Luke Sampson. Roller coast around, gets him to a level par. 10.23 rated, I believe, still. Not bad work there, Mr. Sampson. And Anthela. For a share of the lead heading into to day two. No one's been able to get past the six under number. So far. That's the cap, isn't it? Yeah, at, at this moment, it is. We've got maybe a couple guys out there that could get past it. If their rounds go good the rest For of the way. For sure. Rick could do it. Yeah. Anthony Barella. Mm -hmm. Isaac Robinson's three down through. 10, he could still shoot a little four under for the rest of the way and get there. Aaron Gossage is out there. He's three down through 11. And
Bang, there it is, Nicolas Antela, tied up at the top, six under, wonderful performance. That was a really nice putt in the wind, I don't know if you guys noticed Absolutely. that. Absolutely. You see how he changed his putting style there? Well, he's normally a hyzer putter, yeah, he put he... a little bit of a cut on it. Uh, <laughs> more direct. Yeah. yeah. Really heady. Yeah, because he had the crosswind going left there. Uh -huh. So anything Flat. with angle was going to get accentuated mm -hmm. there. And a share of the lead as a result. B could chase him down. Same with Rick and Robinson. More like a normal scorecard there. Some world champions, some major winners in the top ten. That it is. Pardon that quick reset, and we're back. Rick got it Close. pretty good. That's a pretty yeah, good upshot yeah. from where he was. He was in a tough spot there, and he's got it just beyond the pin. Pretty routine par. Paul, on the other hand, took a really tough kick way down to the right, but I think he stayed in bounds. He didn't go across the fence down there, but seemed to be about 100 trees between he and the target. Yeah, but if you're going to be aggressive on this hole towards the basket, this is the direction you want to be shooting. Up onto the up onto the flat, at least you're not going to. There you go. That yeah. wasn't so bad at all. It looked worse from the other angle. I think he Over. pushed this pin a little to the right of where it used to be, more in the middle of that plateau. A little bit easier to putt at from all directions. <laughs> I think he put it over to this to drop off there. I don't think I've seen one reason. basket without <laughs> some of them. I guess the one on what a hole eight or nine or something, maybe two of the baskets have been on relatively flat ground. Everything else seems to be situated on some kind of a cliff or mogul or something. Kind of De La esque a little bit. Uh, oh, Heimberg from circle two comes up short. At least it's not down the hill. Yeah, you know, you missed it the in the right cage. place. Yeah, you missed it in the right place, center or left. Still a bit tentative because of what's there. You know, I think that might be the reason why he yeah. missed low is because you know, you know what's waiting for you on the other side. <laughs> and not just the right. If you go long, you can into a little drop off down there, kind of to the right of where you see Ricky standing back there. There's a bit of a drop off where those flags are back there. Clemens. Snakes it over the rim. Good par save. Yeah, with well that putt, you don't care how it goes in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Saki also looking at par. There you go. Nice and solid in the middle of the target. Putters look good so far. Pretty solid. Yeah. Clean up on aisle 10. Robinson. Ahead on the course, holding eleven. That's it. Yeah, this hole's fairly flat for the first, you know, three hundred-ish feet of the hole, and then it breaks left and goes pretty sharply uphill. Pretty short par par four, Ken. Just a four ninety-one. It is fairly short, but it's technical. And the second shot is, like I said, it's steeply uphill, so it plays a little longer than its footage. Barella. Did I read the wrong number, Barella? I don't know. I, we've I been, think it's 587. 587? Okay. That makes that, that sounds like a more real Caddy Caddybook has 523, but you know, who knows which number it is now. <laughs> <laughs> there is a break, a quick break on the network. Back in just a few. It plays like 58.
pixel makes planning so effortless, which is exactly what I wanted from this disc, that I can just put it on the line and then just let the disc slow float to the chains. For me always, the more a putter beats in, the more magic it has inside, so hit those chains. An important part of getting a PDJ membership is helping grow the game. Membership dollars are used to bolster competition of all levels, from local C tiers to majors. Tools like Digital Scorecard and Tournament Manager help events run seamlessly. Your PDJ membership also gives you access to Disc Golf Network coverage for select events and a 50% discount to their full coverage package. Help grow the sport and get started today. Visit pdga.com slash join. And welcome back to the action. Isaac Rob and his second coming up. What shot shape is he going for here, Ken? He's going to have turnover, backhand turnover here. So it goes pretty steeply uphill, and he's pinched off. He's too far forward off the tee. He got out to the right side of the fairway, so he's got to take it around those cedar trees. Was play. that a play for par? Oh, I think he's, he's trying to get look. A, I think he was trying to get a birdie there, but he's... Okay. He's got a look. He's got a look for sure. You saw it. Looks like he got in there right. towards the edge of the circle. Okay. Barella, much better position. Yeah, this one's right in the middle of the fairway. That was the right pace, too. Asking for it Ooh, to get down. Wow. He tried to throw that in. Almost got to the bottom of the bucket. Ooh. That was close, man. Talk about buzzing the tower. Mm -hmm. Tough upshot because you got to go up a hill sharply, and then the basket's cresting in on the back side of the hill going back down the oh, other way. Yeah, so it's really not second shot. Flies through, Ken. Yeah, you got a big mountain right in front of you here and some overhanging limbs that you got to fly over the mountain, under the limbs, keep it tight. Same thing on the next tree, you know, under the limbs, over this little mountain on the left. And right about here, you should start breaking left past this big tree, you know, missing that little small cedar right there. Right there, you want to start breaking left. And Isaac was more towards that FPO basket over there, which pinches you off a little bit. And Anthony was right there in the middle. And here's where it gets tough. You got to go up, 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 up. And you crest the hill here, oh. it goes flat for 25, 30 feet, and then goes back down the hill to a raised basket. So any Making kind you of, work for it here. Yeah, any kind of longer putt short of the basket is going to make you go long if you miss, if you air ball. So I think the play was what Anthony did, is go ahead and throw it past the basket. Yeah. That way you're putting back up the hill. Oh. You don't have to worry about the touch anything. on the way down and, on the yeah. backside for and sure. The Heimberg tee shots just short of the corner Ken I think that worked out yeah okay. maybe just just short of ideal but I think he'll have a shot from Great. there exactly. up ahead on the green Robinson for birdie exactly oh. the angle oh Kendall's just talking about now putting back down at the hill yeah there's a bit of a fall off on the left side of this green too pretty steep on the left so you want to avoid that at all costs so I think the... you'll see more players going to the right on their upshot really slow disc from Rick here on the sidearm interesting we haven't seen that tee shot yet. That doesn't look like that's a good place to be either. Uh, that's shy of the corner. Left. Yeah, shy of the corner. That's par central coming up the best. Coming back for birdie after the near eagle, Anthony Barella. Uh, from past experiences, there is a few sneak routes on that left-hand side. You could possibly get a route through there. Well, Conversely, the right side, there is no sneak route. Dickerson. That is a good par putt from Chris Dickerson. Keeping him scrambling. At, yeah, he is even on the day. Back to the tee, <laughs> Macbeth. All American scorecard, red, white, and blue, all the way through. Hmm, just a hair short. What a demanding tee shot! This a, is. I was thinking the same it's a thing. Tricky Ian. tee shot. It didn't it seem really like there's is. much room for error no. here. Coming back up the hill now. A beast. There we go. Gets one to stick. Home. That was one of the worst putts you'll see stick. <laughs> Barely over the rim on the right side. And somehow it pulls back in. Kind of two negatives cancel each other out there a little yeah. bit. See, this is the little sneak route I was talking about. This on the early left side. Oh. There's a low sneak route. Then there's this high sneak route. There's different ways to advance your disc from huh. the left side. But from the right side, there's just no, no way. It looked oh. a bit shy there for Wysocki. He's going to have to bang it in from circle two if he's going to turn that into a birdie three. Macbeth in his second. Oh, he was well short of the corner still. Yeah, pinched off, but he still Say, made it work. What? What? How did he do that? And how did he do that? I 
Really don't know how he made that work. Um, I guess poking hope. And hope. Wow. <laughs> poking hope, man. <laughs> Prayer was answered for Mr. McBeth. I thought he would come up like 60 feet short on this angle. Right. Let's see what happens here. He's, Ooh, he's taking down some window up okay. there. there okay. It is. Right High above inside. that tree. Yep, there you go. And he's flirting with those trees on the right over there. And, yep, he catches a little bit of that one coming in. Yep. <laughs> wow. Drop in after that drive. Wow. wow. Exceptional. Calvin's a little bit better off, but he's still got those couple of cedars on the left-hand side that are infringing his ability to throw a nice flippy turnover oh, shot. No. no. Catches some cabbage on the way out. Kills the speed. Heimberg, best he can do. Up and down for par. Been one of those days for Calvin. On 12, Barella. This is one of the biggest drops from T to fairway floor at the bottom. I'd say it's a good 75, 80 foot of drop on this hole. Super long carry as well. You're going to need some big air to get close here at the 12th. And Barilla going sidearm, showing off the distance both directions. Clemens and his second back on 11. I think uh, hole 12 is one of the few holes where the FPO pin is longer than the MPO pin because huh. they play it as a par 4. Oh, okay, I like and that. And the MPO plays it as a par 3. Clemens safely up top. And Little work left. Jumping ahead to 12 and Robinson. Isaac Robinson gets this one moving to the right. The only direction you want to go here. Yeah, a couple trees on the corner you got to beat when you're throwing that turnover shot. And he just barely caught those. You got to get a little wider with a little more turn to back get to, in there. Back Kinda to like, 11. That was soft. There we go. Yeah. Nice touch there you, ha you have to be soft coming into that green. That will be a par coming up for Heimberg. A long birdie bid for Wysocki. Oh. oh. That was not, not good. Not his best effort. No. A little meat left on the bone there for Rick. Looks like he's about halfway between circle one and the bullseye, so yeah. it shouldn't be too bad, but we're used to seeing him execute that little approach a little better than that. Yeah, it's not usually good when you have to throw twice in a row. <laughs> You're still out. He's still out. Never fun. But, yeah, he's he's in a comfortable range here usually. For, for sure. Him. Shouldn't be a problem. 20, 20 feet or less. There yeah. you go. Looks like totally redeeming himself. They've done some cleanup work on this right side of the screen. You, you, that used to be super thick back there on the right side. You can see through there. You, they, I think he probably cleaned that up just so if you threw it a little too strong, you could go back in there. Before, it was like a catch. Like, if you threw it over there, it was going to catch and hit. But he's cleaned up those cedar cedar branches to let you fly through and get down into a nastier position. Clemens come up the hill for birdie. And back to even goes Chris Clemens. All right. Holding his own. Battling. That's two bogues, two birdies on his day so far. That big stump you see was a thick cedar bush. Oh. Super thick. You can see the ground around it where it would, had grown to the ground around it. And it was big and gnarly. And if you got in there, you had no putt back in the day. You just took the whole thing out. Let's just get rid of it. I kind of like it. The green was a little too encumbered before. Now it gives you a little space. Yeah, it's a nice change. And Gossage. This looks like hole 13. Yeah. This one's a pretty tight hallway going down. And once you get to a certain position on this hole, it's fairly poke and hope. There's a lot of trees. There's no discernible fairway. There's just a lot of little trees here and there. And you hopefully you can line up with a decent gap going to the pin from there. Holes 12 and 13 run parallel to each other. 12 and 13 run almost the same direction. 13 and 14. 13 and 14. Four run parallel to each other. Yeah, one. With the fairway, that's where that OB yeah, line that, is. Yeah, the OB line between those Got two. You. And uh, Gossage, not on your screen, but he is tied uh, for ninth right now at three down. Is there Aaron? you go. Yeah, just uh, one bogey on the day. Solid. Barella making moves. Five down through 11. He's got a lot of course left to try and get that solo lead. But there's also a lot of course left to take some <laughs> bigger numbers. Things could happen. Got to stay here with us on the DGN to see it live. current conditions a solution for growth and bloom wind speeds come up a few miles an hour it has 24 when we started now 26 it's been blustery and gusty all afternoon morning was so beautiful it seemed mighty calm around nice blue skies yeah 
in Dickerson from the fairway. He, you know, he might give you it a You just never know, man. Yeah. He might send this. It's Chris Dickerson. All right. That'll work for par. Fairly demanding par three this hole is. Yeah. It's almost 600 feet long. Granted, you're coming off a 70-foot cliff, but... Gossage, you, you call this one here, champ. This is poking hope, eh? Yeah, like I said, you you just you really can't expect to land in a perfect spot on this hole. You have to manufacture something on your next oh, shot. Oh, Gossage nearly throws it in for Eagle. What an exceptional effort there from Aaron Gossage. Down on a knee, stretched out through the vines, through the trees. Trying to go nothing but chain. Look how close this was, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Hip front cage, right? It was two inches from being in. Oh, maybe wow. three. <laughs> how about that? That was cool. Yeah, not the longest par four, but certainly technical. Robinson, a long Step look. Step through. Oh. No. Just off the left there for Robinson. Chain high going by. Give it a chance. On Zero. the same Barella for Birdie. It's a great drive here. That was one heck of a sidearm to get to Man. this position. Inside circle his, one. His sidearm is a weapon. Most Oof. don't have. Yeah, circle one. Oh. A B sees his way to a share of the lead. That was incredible. Nice stuff there. It's all in the alphabet file. Oh, he's got hey, a B C baby. He's doing his thing. Look at that. Started off with a scorcher. Nice little bang, bang, bang. Slowed it up for a minute. And caught that nice birdie at the eighth. A couple of little slowdowns on nine and ten, and right back on the gas again. Here we go. This is that stretch of holes we were talking about earlier. You can yeah. make some moves here, and then. You just try to hold on coming down the home stretch there at 17 and 18. Perfectly put. I don't think Eagle is possible for uh, AB on, 15, on 15. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is a really big moment here for AB. He could really start stretching himself from separating from the majority of the field either way and have some breathing room coming in around too. I know it's early to talk Sunday, but you know, that, that first win, it's, it's always so nice to have a man. cushion, right? It's so important to have a little bit of breathing room if you can earn it keep some of that pressure off from the field and you may be only worrying about one or two, maybe three guys yeah. instead of 13 or 15 of them. And keeping it clean like he's doing right now is going to bode well in the end uh, for him to make that, get that victory is staying away from that bogey. Absolutely. Don't give him back, man. Nope. The Clemens tee shots. Keep all those birdies that you earn. No, he's oh, been doing. Oh, look my. at this shot from Chris Clemens. Goodness. This hole sets up great for a lefty or a, a, a big side armor. Yeah, looks like Rick's going really to it does. as well. He liked that line. Follow them vapor trails. Yep. That was, yep. That was the line. Earhart's licking his chops on this one. So let Beth. me throw it. <laughs> big Beth. First big sidearm of the day. It's a little early. Oh, oh, oh. oh, but that jumped and turned a little bit. Do you see that? Let's see how this pans out. Yeah, early and down to the right. Plenty safe, but still ways out in the fairway. You're just at the mercy of the wind gods here. Heinberg going to his favorite fairway. This one's got to be fairly wide with a bunch of turn. Not sure if he's that's letting enough. the wind do the turn. He just put it out there flat yeah. and was hoping the wind would do the work for him. And I think it got on top of it a little too quick for Calvin. It's Joining just... Macbeth out there in the fairway. I think he's got a middle circle two putt there, 45, 50 feet. Was it, it that close? Like. That yeah. looked a little yeah, further. I think he circled two. Wow. Why there's, there's a little wooden owl out there that yeah. I think is right near the circle's edge. Rick drops his head, not too happy with the reaction from the wind. Too much lift. See that little owl there? I thought uh, Calvin was back in those sticks back there. He is back in those sticks. I think the owl was actually inside circle one. Like, is it's, it? It's okay. pretty close to the basket. Yeah, they just you would know him. better than I, man. I'm taking your word for it. <laughs> they just gave him circle two for his birdie putt. Either that way, happens. he was still right. I'm yeah. not, he's not in the fairway. <laughs> Here's Gossage for birdie after the near eagle. Oh! oh it tried to blow him out of there. <laughs> man, I hate pitch putts on elevated pins, man. Just, not the best idea. Oh, God, you just see him surf out so many times. Got to put a little turnover on yeah. them to make sure they stay in there. Yeah. Look at that beautiful Spanish moss. Amazing. Gorgeous. Driving around this whole area, you'll see those trees everywhere, like no matter where you go. It's kind I mean, of a staple of the southeast, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just saying this area in general, Brooksville uh -huh. has a ton of them. Everywhere you go, you see that everywhere, like around every corner, or <laughs> every hill, every nook, every valley. You see those everywhere around here, and they're just in inundated with the 
the Spanish moss. moss. Yeah, yeah, it's a good wind read, you know, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Varela. They did open up a right side line. You can see there's a little fairway off the right side of this hole. I'm not sure how it looks. I, I, I never saw it once it was cleaned out, but most people seem to be going down that left side. Yeah, I don't think that was clean. Robinson next to T. But they did give you an option here. Before it was the only option was to go on the left side. Ooh. Big high turnover. You got the turn on it. Looking good. Oh, a little bit wide, I think. He needed to be a little more to the right there. He Not tried. to be in great position there. He's going to be short of the gauntlet, and he's got to throw through the gauntlet, which there is no real discernible gap in that gauntlet. So it's going to be tough to get up and down from where Isaac's at. And Paul McBeth got pretty close on that bid. Yeah, see, there's the owl right there. It's 20, 24 feet away or something like that. Even Rick's an outside Ooh. look. Some stuff in his way, though. He's like, oh, there's a few, things, few less things in my way over here. Let me straddle this side. Good to explore your options. Oh, yeah. Not too much around this basket. This is one of the baskets that's fairly flat. Nothing going on around it. You can, If you wanted to give it a run, if you could. And Rick certainly did. And all circles floats past on the right side. Imagine it will be Calvin Heimberg next to act. Yep, and that 50 to 55 foot range looking like. Another chance for Calvin to get back to square on the day. He needs to start. This would be a good place to start. Start making a move. He's been online, but not in the chains for Calvin Heimberg on some of these efforts with the putter. Dead online every time. Just didn't quite have the, the oomph. There is Chris Clemens walking to his fantastic drive. And a putt for two. Yeah. Easy work there for the Clemens. It definitely pays to be a, a lefty here on this hole. Sets up perfect for that big power hyzer. Brian, did you get a chance to throw this one uh, this week? Yeah, Ian, you know what? I actually did get to throw this hole. Yes, it is a lefty dream hole. But we were just talking actually with Clemens and Ricky about this shot. And I think you guys touched on it a little bit. If you throw it, you know, 10 feet higher than you want it to be, the wind's going to do something completely different than if you threw it down the hill. Uh, it, it's so interesting. This little bowl, as you guys are calling it, has wind going in every which direction, 15, 20 miles an hour. It is so interesting. The guys are so tapped in to where it's blowing on specific parts of the course. Yeah, you really have to be on a windy day like today. Live with AB after that tee shot went slightly awry. The hole we saw Gossage hit the <clears throat> the pin on. I believe it is the same hole. About 100 feet back of where Gossage threw his second. Yeah, throw. he was up there in that next clump of trees, I yeah, believe. Yeah. But he's far enough to the right where he's got a better angle. angle. You yeah. see the two pine yeah. trees there. Yeah. It's a fairly wide gap right there. Get some ground play, or you could just fire it all the way to the back. I think you can fire it right through there. Yeah. Or ideally, your drive ends up more left on this hole if you throw it right down the middle of the hallway. Oh, and he hits the tree. See, there's a pretty pretty open gap going on that side. It's just hard to get over to the right there off the tee. Yeah. Anthony Burrell should be able to turn that into a par. Looks like he got to an open space. Should be able to have a clean look in. Aaron Gossage. First look at this par five that's paralleling the hole that AB is on right now. So a little bit of a wall down there. It's eight, six to eight foot high wall. You want to get up over top of that. And then turn hard left, which he didn't quite turn left enough. But if he turned too far to the left, there's an OB line separating those two holes. So it's really tricky to get just the right shot to where you can attack this. And it's a par four. It's a 780-something foot par four. Where the women play it as a par five. The basket's oh, gotcha. a little farther. 900 foot for the women. Nice but, approach there. Right. Yeah. 
There's those two trees you saw from the and other the direction. Gorilla, those, yep. Yeah, those are those two trees. He so misses that one on the right, and he's more than likely right there. Right. It's yeah. It's see now. Chris is in more of the spot that most people are going to end up. You're not directly in line with those t t that open. Got to get creative here. Right. You yep. got to get a little bit creative. You've got a lot of trees, a lot of little spots between the trees, but nothing really wide. Bunch of three foot gaps in front yeah. of Chris Dickerson's face here. He's going to play any mini miny mo and see if he can get something close to the bucket. Maybe a little sidearm roller, potentially. Overstable flex shot, maybe? I mean, uh, it's hard to say. Yeah, it's going to be one or the other, the way he's angling it up. I imagine he's going to keep it in the air. Yeah, I think so. Looks like an overstable disc. Oh, not enough air. Roller. Yeah. I tried to oh. burn it in there. Yeah. That works out. Circle's edge. Look. Yeah. yeah. Circle's edge. Earned himself a look at it. Yeah. Notice the big boulders fronting that. Pin Team right stars. there. Yeah. If you're, <laughs> if you're a little to the right there, you're going to definitely hit one of those coming in. But interesting tidbit on this property was uh, my limestone was mined from here and it was used to build some of the interstate system here in Florida. Really? Yeah. You know, huh. they put a limestone bed down before they put the asphalt uh, down. Okay. Huh. Yep. So that's where a lot of this limestone went was to the interstate systems. A, B, get there that in go. for a par. That there will work. Go. Pars and birdies only for Anthony Barilla this afternoon. You'll love to see that. Robinson while they wait. Long look. What a bid. Let's check out our day one storylines at the chess.com invitational. A.B. playing chess, not checkers, Philo. Yeah, he's doing well today. He had, he had a little bit of a slump there after that nice start. A couple of nice birdies to open up the round. But he's on a really nice pace. He's keeping things in front of him, giving himself an awesome op opportunity to be mm -hmm. right there for tomorrow. Joey Bucket's tied for the lead, one off the first. I mean, he's been up there all afternoon. He's been in the clubhouse for hours, so he's just been hanging back watching all the action. Literal hours, yeah. Mm -hmm. And what? Hayano Osuma Niklas. Hainos Osuma Niklas. I mean, something in Finnish. Nice it's work, man. Nice shot. Okay. Yeah, 10 birdies, 4 bogeys to shoot, minus 6. That's mm -hmm. a solid day's work there for Nikki. 10 birdies is very good out on that track. Do not feed the alligators. <laughs> or try not to, at least. <laughs> Don't be alligator food. <laughs> Gossage and his second. Yeah, pinched off by the sawgrass bush. Almost. I don't know if there's a way to get to the pin from here. Standing still. I don't know if his drive went over 350. and he's, That means he's going to have... A solid 400 left to the pin from a standstill. Aaron Gossage can generate some pop, man. He can. But it looks like they're playing directly into the wind here. And there's that OB line that separates the two holes. Yeah, I thought that was going to be more of a pitch out than anything. It's the basket still well forward of that. Umbrella for par. Yes, sir. Gin and Burr next. They always sound funny with those towers. Mm -hmm. dunk, dunk, dunk when they go that into goes bottom. a bit more. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and Burr, Burr still even, as is Chris Dickerson. That standing water you see at the top of your screen on the left-hand side is usually not there. That comes from the two-day rain we had over last weekend, wow. it was, I mean, it rained for 40-something hours straight. Wow. <laughs> I watched some of the All-Stars. <laughs> I didn't watch the whole thing. It was wet. But it looks, oh, my goodness. There used to actually be a hole down in that area. It was called Wallenda because the, you, you would ride straight towards the wall, and if you went too far, you'd hit the wall, and you'd be right there. <laughs> All the holes had names back in the day. Oh, that's awesome. Clemens. That's kind of what you want to do in this hole. You want to get as far right as you can. And he's kicking back a little to the left, but that hill that he hit, 
that lines up with that gap that Anthony didn't hit. Mm -hmm. If you get up on top of that hill, you're perfectly in line with that gap in the basket. It's amazing what eight to ten feet difference can do. Like his is this rolling yeah. off that hill going that way is going to make right, it a lot that's harder. That's the name of playing in the woods, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah this matter course. of feet and inches. Mm -hmm. But it's all over this course, and it's sometimes it's not just the woods. You know, sometimes it's a sawgrass bush or a cliff or something like that. Oh, oh. Beth, tee shot, cut a tree on the corner. He's still smiling. Yep. Heimberg. I guess he's got about a million reasons to smile, right? <laughs> More oh, than that. that. <laughs> <laughs> a million and one? Yeah. <laughs> well, starting in 2019, so maybe five more years. You know. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. I'm saying times five is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Waisaki. That's a dad smile is what that is, guys. Yeah. Yeah. We'll go with that one. Yeah. That was my one. <laughs> That's that's out there where it's you can. It's a good shot, but you still have to be at the luck of the draw with your with your gabbage there. A B, one of your co-leaders along with my cuz. Let's check out some highlights from Anthony Barella. Starting the day with a bang, Anthony Barella a step through putt. Through the trees, nothing but chains. Actually started his day out with two back-to-back -back circle three. Counted three circle two the day roll, and this was the second. I think the last one. The, the third, third one was inside, inside the circle. circle. Yeah, yeah, third one. Sorry. The three birdies, though. Three yeah. birdies, see? The only man in the field to birdie the first three One, holes. two, three. Yes, yeah. sir. That's it. And this on hole eight. Ooh. Another step through for Anthony Barella. That was the one that got him to four. The 11th. <laughs> yep. Just sneaks that one in over the rim. Got him to five and one more the next hole. Yeah. Now he is tied for the lead and here he is live on the box. Hole 14. Oh, this needs my. to get left, right, Ken? Yeah, it's going to be straight into those bushes where we saw Aaron. And that penetrated into those bushes, so he's going to have absolutely nothing. He's going to have to come up high to get out of there because those things are tall. Doesn't it seem like these shots are coming in with a bit too much pace? Yeah, I, I think mean, you. I, you gotta I think it, you need the pace there. there, but you need to get left. You need to start turning left. But I think like it, we haven't. Macbeth and his second. Mm. Well, good news is he went forward and before he hit something. Opportunity to get up and down for par. The silver lining there. Robinson on 14's tee. There we go. Yeah, that we got something. More the line. Moving to the yes. left. Got there higher, you go. Yep. There you go. Shaving the edge of the sawgrass. Yes, coming sir. Around. You see how the OB line still isn't in view? Yeah, there's, there's plenty of room. That's there. why I'm so confused how these guys are making that miss right now. Clemens with yeah. a discount <laughs> double kick, not going too far. <laughs> Gossage. <laughs> Just a bit on the weak side there for Gossage. Opportunity squandered. Moving the wrong way. Yeah, that that bogey. Back to Waisaki. Looks like he's got a bit of airspace there with the sidearm. Yeah. I like that. That'll work. Yep. Right off the bullseye there for Rick. We'll tap in left. 
that's just kind of the luck of the draw of that fairway. You can end up in a pretty decent spot or you can end up in a really bad spot. Speaking of bad spots, Borella in this sawgrass. How deep did it go, though? Let's we'll have to see. wait and see. Not too deep. I it's thought it was. It looked like it was going to go deeper than that. But still, encumbered, standstill, long way to go, OB line to the left, lots of foliage. Just be smart for him to do something similar to Gossage. Just yeah. get yourself up the fairway and then yeah, get up and down. This guy's to keep turning. It's good. There you go. Yeah. That's all you're looking for from smart back Smart play there. there from Anthony Barrow. Very smart. Heady. And Macbeth. Protecting that score. A nasty kick back on 13, throwing his third. Gets out. Let's settle down inside circle one. It does just by a step or two. So a little bit of work a left. Little to tester. Do on a fairly yep. short par four. Clemens also throwing three on the same. Yeah, a little more open shot here. Ooh, a little flare skip. That's nice. Makes easy work of that. Heinberg, nothing doing for his. Yeah, punches it through just fine, though. A little tap in left for Calvin. So only birdie look there, Waisaki. He's the only guy doing anything. Yeah, true. Robinson. A little overturn on this one. Just a yeah. little bit, Ken. You yeah. called it. Yeah. Nice little grind back towards the basket at the end, but a little bit of a tester. Macbeth, speaking of testers. Look at the backdrop there. Just the sheer cliff wall. I love that. Oh, wow. Pushes it out to the right. Macbeth just disconnected this afternoon. Not quite in six-time world champ form yet. No. Been in dad mode. Takes a while to get back. Yeah. Hey, man, it's just mode, good yeah. to have him back, man. <laughs> yeah, you know? oh, absolutely. Like it's great to have Ken back, you know. It's mm -hmm. Something's missing when these guys aren't around, you know. He wanted it. There was no <laughs> it wasn't shot. effort there for yeah. sure, you know. He wanted it. Just a touch, Chain high, touch just of a, a little push. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Sagi with a stroke on the card, too, on the beast. Par followed by Par. Heimberg and Clemens. Off the 14, they go. And we got cows. Yeah, hey, we got cows too, man. How we do right around here? Donkeys too, I heard outside. Horse, yeah. donkey, cow, yeah. babies. Donkeys, donkeys got... underrated, man. Donkeys yeah. are cool, man. Really friendly. Donkey! <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. That will do, Donkey. That will do. AB has got some holes left to grab a lead. Five to go. Although two of those last two are trouble. Let's see how it shakes out. For local boy. Yeah. Making his way over 400 through 14. Speaking he pokes of, his head in once in a while. He definitely does, yeah. He's been bubbling these last year and a half or so. Barella. That's an unfortunate spot. <laughs> Not the best. No. Robinson. Look at two. Try to spin one home. Mm. Off the mark for Robinson. It's a step or two closer. Chris Dickerson. Chicken robot. <laughs> See if he can get robotic with this 45-footer. He definitely doesn't have room to swing it in this distance. Generally, you see him swinging in a little bit from 45 feet or so. He likes this to put a little cut on it left yeah. to center. Yeah, this one's going to have to have a, almost a little hit. Uh, he yeah. gave it, pushed that too. Waisaki back on the tee. Get it moving left. Yeah, that's high enough, I think, to get over this. Oh, yeah. yeah. There we go. That had the right looks to it. Yeah. Best we've seen so far? One of the best, for sure. Ben's also holding him off from going left, even though he looked like he put plenty on move left hardly Didn't at go all. go anywhere. Hit the ground and stop. <laughs> yeah. Kevin Kiefer, who we just mentioned. Nice, nice job to keep his balance there on both knees. So easy to fall forward and that hand come down and that would be a... Yeah. Clemens. Now 
Get left. It's moving. That yeah. looks solid. Yeah. yeah. Great solid. Shot. A little shy of Ricky Wysocki's drive. But that's a that's a forehand compared to a backhand. That's impressive. He's got more speed with the sidearm somehow than he does with a backhand, which <laughs> is mind blowing it to is me. True. That looks a little bit flat. Get left. Oh, oh, right on the edge of it. it. Right on the edge of it. Curling yeah. back to the center, out driving Ricky by another 15 feet. A little yin yang on that disc. Yes, you do. Macbeth. We'll see how to bounce back after the bogey on the last. That's the right angle, I think. Yeah. Forward and left. A little shorter than the rest of them. But making making minis out. Put the other one out there. That Chris Clemens back there, I yeah. believe. This is a B in the bush. Those fellas are teammates now, right? They can, they can oh, be touching. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Clemens throwing new plastic this year. I can discraft me. Congrats to Chris on that contract. Manufactured stance, but it looks fairly open. Like the airspace from his under the basket isn't too bad. Yeah. That was a nice spin for maybe. It was keeping it clean. Yes, sir. It's easy to let those ones slip through the fingers. Yeah. A little loss of focus. Robinson straddles out. Short work of that. Also a par. Kind of quiet for his card recently, huh? Yeah. Last these five are, holes. These are the scoring holes too. Holding it together. There are your can of current conditions still. Still nice. The wind's down just a little bit from earlier. Humidity's up 11% from the last time we checked. <laughs> Which means the rain's coming. Oh. Oh. Hopefully there. it holds off until the end. I'd like to see, think that it would. Last time we looked, I think it was not due until we were done. 6.30, so. 7 o'clock. Yeah, okay. we should be cool. good. Yeah. Paul McBeth, yeah. second shot away, playing the sidearm out and around. Looks Great really speed, good. speed, good angle. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the wrong sad potential. Did. One heck of an effort there for McBeth right off the bullseye. I think at this point in his round, he'll take that. Uh, he know, needed that bounce back after yeah. the bogey on the last. Get things back to her. And that was something good for Chris to watch. He was right next to his shot. It's the same type of flight. He's going to be yes, left sir. side. Up, just kind of follow that line. Yep. That's. Here we go. Just a little bit shy, but gets up in there. He's going to have to straddle around the tree. Yep. Just inside the circle there for Clemens. It's always nice to see someone throw a shot that, that you want to throw. Yeah, that you want to throw. <laughs> Get some information. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get some information. Why, oh, Saki looking at his second. I just checked the weather again. Looks like it's still around six is when it's coming. Okay. Yeah. Well, hopefully they'll be finished. Yeah. It's gonna be close, won't it? An hour yeah. and fifteen minutes yeah. or so. And yeah. Well, they got four holes. Yeah, they should be. We right. should be good. I yeah. think so. A little shy. A lot shy yeah, for Rick. He's out shy. there in that 45, 50 foot range. Yeah. Looks like he does have a line between the trees, though. That, that might help. A good thing, yeah. Yeah, that could help. Yeah, frame it up. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Stick it between there and give it a chance. One of the best straight line putters we've seen in the last decade. Mm -hmm. I think comes in on a frozen rope. It's going so fast it doesn't have a chance to move. Most of the time, not. Looking back at Calvin Heimberg in his second. Ops to go with the sidearm as well. Yeah, looks pretty stable, good. High speed driver, big skip. Right in there. there. Sit. Perfect. Yeah. 25 feet. No, just in, that's just outside the bullseye. Yeah, that's 20, like 20, 15, 14 or so. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty close. He needs it. You know, if anybody needs to have a good finish here, it's Calvin. He's over par at this point. Him and McBeth are both over par, I believe. Both of those guys could use a, a hot finish. Two, three, four under, you know, you're not out of it. At this not point. at all. If you shoot not two, at all. two down, you're still at well in this tournament. Yeah, I can see why a lot of a lot of the players are opting for the sidearm here. Not only does it fit the shape good, but it's also if your kick is going to go to the right, mm -hmm. you know, backhand kick is going to go to the left, and that line is just waiting on you right there. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice If you got line. a backhand kick, you're going mm -hmm. straight across that line. Great live look down on our fairway. Waisaki, long look at Birdie. A little longer than he was going to like to leave himself there. He, he would have liked to have been half that distance at the most. Mm. 
Hung it out there on the right side. Didn't snap back fast enough for Rick. He'll be looking at a tap in for a par. He had a little more speed than he wanted on that sailing past the chains. So. Yeah, you would like to see it in the frame, and it is not. Or is that his disc I think that's that. that. One? Yeah, All I right, think he's so. He's got 22 left. He's fine. Yeah. Clemens. How's that big cedar tree? If you happen to sneak around the backside of that, you know, that can totally block you out. I don't think he did, but definitely could happen. Circle two look for Clemens. Doesn't jump it. Oh, oh. Just a bit high. Right on line. Mm -hmm. And Rick Rick's heading to his disc before Calvin's putting, so. Yeah. Yeah, he did kind of get behind that cedar a little bit. He has to straddle out a little limb in his way. Oh, that wasn't his disc, was it? That's Calvin's disc. There you go. Yeah. So I wasn't yeah. seeing things. Uh -huh. Not an issue for Rick. Rick, there's the rules. You see his foot was a little outside the mini. You do get those eight inches. Smart, heady play there from Ricky Wysocki to give himself a little more space. And Calvin for birdie. Going with the early call on this one. It's in there. He's got it. <laughs> Love it. There's no room for error now for Calvin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, got to capitalize on that excellent effort to get himself 20 feet away. Down in the bottom of this alley here, it's blocked off from the wind. You don't see a whole lot of wind going on here. You're really in a really low area. Wind's not too effective in this spot, especially the way it's coming. Nice birdie by Paul, not to be overlooked. Yes. They're racing that bogey on the last. Yes, sir. Near Eagle with the skip. Yep. We're going to sneak in another quick break on the network. Back in just a few. Brought back by popular demand. z -like plastic from Discraft. Disc that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. This plastic is perfect for players with lower arm speeds as well as beginners. They can also be a great complement to the regular weight version of a disc that's already in your bag. z -like. More distance with less effort. To reinvent means looking to the future, seeing greatness for a new generation. With the passion to perform and the talent to win, the time is now. The future is here. What is the simplest way to improve your disc golf game? The answer, learn from the very best. Paul Uliberry, Simon Lazak, Ezra Aderhold, and Holland Hanley. They're not just players. They are your elite coaches guiding you every step of the way. The Power Disc Golf Academy is the premier online disc golf academy with over 150 on-demand lessons that are specifically designed to improve your skills right now. So what are you waiting for? Join today at PowerDGA.com. Welcome back to the action. We have Tournament Central, our pro subscribers, coming up after the round. Make sure you check that out if you're subscribed. Always a fun watch. We'll have the interviews. Talk about all the all the all the play analysis. Brian Earhart. Yeah, man. All day one, round one action. Mm -hmm. Get you the full recap. All the interviews. Your favorite disc golfers. A bunch of highlights. Got to stick around. Catch out the conversation. Second shot for Kevin Kiefer. Par five, hole 15. Very narrow. Thorn. 
Going back to the bag. I have Stacy also playing really well today in the top 10 on the FPO side. That was a large caddy. That was like large, yeah. <laughs> Remember that old, that big European guy that used to be around all the time? Reminds me of that guy. Yes. You got me now? Yeah, right. I know exactly who you're talking about. Smartly takes the low line there, keeps it heading to the left. There's a cliff right side of that hole. Live with Gossage. It is OB. What a vicious rip that man has. Oh, wow. He'll take it. It's up there somewhere. Just Eagle he's look. Right behind a sawgrass yeah. clump. And you can lose them in those things, too. It's not like they're the easiest, easiest to find if they get down in the middle of those. And that's all the way back to where you just were. Lost disc. We are on the easiest hole here, Ken. Full it's, 15. Yeah, it's because it's part of five, I'd imagine. Yeah, I think so. But it's demanding. Like, it's super demanding off the tee. You've got to keep it straight. What's the thought process here on the tee shot? I think the thought process, is if you're throwing a backhand, it's to throw it down the left side and let it bleed over a little bit and turn. Because once you've, once you've gone a certain amount of distance, there's a little more room out to the right to bleed over and turn oh, into. And if you're fading hard back to the left, there's just no room. It's, it's just going to be in the woods if you're going back to the left. So Right of center you, is ideal yeah, off the tee. Use the left side of the fairway early, bleed to the right, which it, it opens up a little bit over there on the then right. Then you just need two good shots to get yourself in range to make a birdie, right? right the first right. one doesn't Skinny's have to be up special. right here, right yeah. here a little bit. Skinny's up, coming up towards the basket, and this is probably 3-ish, 3, -ish, three yeah, that's to the child's game. play for the best players in the world, right? Right, but it's super skinny right there, so you want to try sure. and get past that area to land your next one. For sure. Straightforward par five of under a thousand feet. That's got to yield a lot of birdies. Not surprised. It's the easiest hole on the track this afternoon. We've seen a bunch of eagles. Uh, Gilbert, Orem, and Simon Lazat. That's enough to call it a bunch. A few, I guess. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Getting Burr back on the tee. Following the champ's instruction, starting this thing off to the left, bringing it back towards the right in the fairway. Caught a little brush off the tree there, but it didn't hurt him much. No, no, that's going to brush a tree. You'd rather be brushing on the right side, though, for sure. Gannon starting to heat up. Uh, birdies on the last two. Now two down. Hey, that's that's something. Mm -hmm. That's in the mix today. It's in the mix. It really yeah. is. I mean, anytime you're within four of the lead. Did you see what happened here with Anthony Barilla? This is what I was alluding to when I asked you that question off the tee pad. Penetrating the disc down the hill, right. not straight out, right? You see yeah. him pushing the disc down first and to the left. Yeah, it's definitely one you don't want to throw straight out on because it's going to end up going left at that point. Robinson. You definitely want to go down, nose angle down a little bit. There it is from Robinson as well. Starts it out to the left, swings his way down the grade. Yeah, don't skip much. Perfect. That's an ideal shape right there. Let the laws of physics take over. Yeah, but gravity will work for you. That's what I try to say. And somebody keeps correcting me. It's not gravity. I'm like, what else is it? <laughs> That's what's holding us down here. <laughs> Dickerson. Just a little there's bit. that leak to the left. A little bit leaky and. And it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna scoot up in there, and that's what happens when you when you let it leak a little. And uh, Brian, I'm told there are chess festivities out there. Talk to us about that. Well, yeah, Ian, I uh, I've been getting all the intel from Danny Wrench out here, who's been still following us around chess.com. Everybody out here has been having a blast. But Danny, what is going See, down at Brian Tournament Brian Central right now with chess? Yeah, so we have a fan zone. There's been a bunch of people playing chess, and uh, I think the crossover is actually pretty big a lot of fans out there playing chess sharing chess.com usernames and uh, tonight at the player vip gathering all the players are coming in we're going to play some chess with the disc golf pros and, and see how see who's the best chess players i wouldn't say phenomenal chess players on the disc golf pro tour but there is quite a bit played throughout the tour back to you guys
five as we're getting through the last third of the course. Eagle putt for Gossage. You saw the first two. Hey, this could earn him an outright lead. Facts. That ended up pretty good. It looked like it was could be in the middle of one of those clumps and my bad. He was oh. only at three down oh, coming into right, that yeah. hole. That eagle gets him to five, so now he's one off the lead is Aaron Gossage. Well done there, adding oh. to the eagle list. Four eagles now. Hey, now it's a bunch. Now it's a bunch, yeah. Now it's a bunch. He did it. He just predicted the future. I try. Yeah. Back to the fairway for Robinson in his second. And it got him onto what looks to be a lead card position at this time. Also, facts. Can this hold on long enough? It will not. Lead not to the left. Not no bad. No problem, man. It's not bad. There, Easy up and down. There's an OB cliff off to the right-hand side of this fairway. You cannot see it. It's blind to your view. Even when you're up close to it, it's hard to see. It's just it's got a bunch of trees and bushes around it, but it just drops off hard. It's totally unsafe for anybody to go near. That's why it's OB. So I see people... People bailing out to the left more often than not on this hole because there's just big trouble off to the right-hand side of this hole. Gannon Burr also throwing two. He's got a boomer on him. He might be able to get it up there. I like his himself chances. a look at an eagle. Full send from Gannon Burr. This looks to be a little left. This climb mo was just saying, don't want to go right. Hmm. Playing for the birdie. Yep. Take the guaranteed four and move on. The line, you see the OB I line do. over here. It's 30 foot sheer drop to the. That was Kiefer making a nice bird putt ahead on the green. Three straight for Mr. Kevin Kiefer. A clean five down. Tied for fourth with Gossage after the his eagle. There we go. We're just starting here. to clump up here, yeah. Making things interesting. They definitely are. We figured as much would happen. You know, the cream always rises to the top. It's just a matter of when. Yep. Dickerson. This course layout just has the feels. It's going to be, you know, one that plays tight for everybody, and there's going to be a lot of people in the mix. And mm -hmm. coming down, you could have 10, 12 guys within two or three strokes coming to the last yeah. nine holes. It could be really interesting. Barella. Also playing for placement, not trying to get all the way to the basket. Maybe a long stepper for an eagle look for Barella. I think so. Saw Chris Dickerson do a little bit of army golf in there from left to right. See if he can get that up and down and get himself a birdie four. Paul keeping the spirits up. Even if the score isn't down. Well, like... Ken said he's got about five million reasons to be smiling at all times, man. I mean, yeah. why not? And one little one. And one little guy. Oh, yeah. One most Pablo. important of those reasons. Yeah. Gossage. Ah, uh, digging. Yeah. Ooh. That's where you don't want to be. A Cut and roll. Brutal. Uh, he's barking at himself <laughs> out there. <laughs> Kiefer next to T. Understandably so. Oh, yeah. That was a mistake you can't have. Yeah, he's going to be doing his best to get to that spot. There's a real thing you can do there. But, you know, make it go 100 feet forward, 150 feet best, I think. Kind of need all the different little by the T pads. Yeah, I love that. Get a flying cone, dude. That's got to get Woo! up. Put it there for you. Just up Plunge. a little bit. Yep. All right. You like that? Yeah. All play. right. That'll play. He likes it. Does. Flirting with that OB line to in fine shape and meters off that, so it's going to make his shot even. That See the difference between that shot to La Santala and make a little floatier, uh -huh. direct. Johnny McCurry. Always been a good flex shot thrower, and this one's pushed it a little longer. Pushed, yeah, that could yeah. be a little bit too far, but still help, he'll have a shot. Oh boy, not the day Johnny McRae was hoping for to start out the 2024 season. A whole bunch of red till he got to hole 11, 10, 11, all reds. That's tough. Heimberg back on the tee of the par five. That'll play. 
Straight enough skip, didn't get into that left side. Macbeth. Slow turn. Asking for a little help, a little tiny flip. Keeps it on the left side in the short stuff. Right on the edge of where you need to be. I think he's still on the good good yeah. side of it. Job done yep. off the tee. Yep. Waisaki. Rick sitting at four on the day. Very solid. Eagle would be huge here for Rick, and he's giving this a hard press. Let's see if this hangs on. That's still drifting towards the center. Going to unravel a little bit. Let's see how much. I think that's because he took it up higher, like you were uh, saying. Yeah, instead he of got going a little down, more air under the disc. Nose yep. down, he went a little too high with it and got the, the air under it. The nose wasn't down far enough, and that's what made it bleed left at the end. Do you think with the distance that he threw that, and even though he trailed off to the left, he'll still have some kind of a swing out of there? It'll be better than the shorter ones that go left, but it all depends. I think, yeah, going a little farther de does tend to lead to a little bit better look coming out of that left side. Drive from Chris Clemens finds the fairway. Also along the left boundary side. Not an out of bounds, but, you know, along the left side before the nasty. Ahead on the same umbrella. Oh, that's a bit longer than I thought. Yeah, it's out of the fairway still almost. There you go. It's all good. Another birdie. It's another drop, yeah. You know, that's what he's looking for right here, man. Just keep adding on. That will give him the solo lead. Gossage. Is this a roller coming up? Yeah, he's, he's in that little pinched off area where it's really hard to go forward from there. This is about the only way I think you can get more than 150 feet forward towards the basket is a, is a sidearm roller. It cuts hard to the left at the end. Is this a risk-reward sidearm roller, roller? Is this something he has to do? No, he doesn't it looks like have he's playing for it. position here. He yeah. didn't get too aggressive. That was a nice play. He could have just thrown a hyzer. And got to the same place? Oh, he could have thrown a hyzer jump putt to the same <laughs> place. <from there. laughs> that's that's kind of what I was alluding to. Is this really necessary? I, you know, could, is there another play? Is this his best option? To get where he got, that wasn't necessary. Gotcha. To get way up around the corner, which it isn't going to buy you much anyway. And you watch AB tap in the birdie for the solo lead. Saw a birdie from Burr there as well. And Isaac Robinson. Few characters left to contend with Anthony Barella out there on the course and potentially surpass the seven under mark. Haven't seen anybody else do it. Anthony Barella currently sitting on the seven. See if he can get it into the clubhouse. Again, a couple of tough holes out there finishing up. I think 18 is pretty soft. It seems pretty fair to the field. Excuse me, 18, but 17, man, that's that's been full of teeth, nasty, gnarly teeth today. Not many people got past their clean. 17 is brutal, and 18 is wind. You know, if there's some hard, hard wind going on up there, it could, it could slam you down real quick, and you could, you could get an un, unwanted bogey there. And 16 is not the easiest hole either. You got to have a really good drive to attack that hole. Clemens and his second on 15. Super low. Lefty backhand, just in case he was to hyzer out a little bit. I'm, I like the low play there. Smart stuff. The Clemens playing the course. Yep. He's asking you to just take the birdie one safe in the fairway. Yep. Unless if you got the big, big arm. Of course, the issue up there towards the green, towards the putting area, rather. Yeah, and these guys that are sitting around even par do have the arms to to, to want to go for it. And I think Calvin's going to going to try and give it a rip here. How much room does he have from that tall grass sticking up on the right side before there's anything he needs to worry about? Oh, not much. Yeah, Ten he's not feet. even challenging it. Ten not even feet. challenging it. Wanted nothing to do with it. Had nothing to do with it. That oh, wasn't and his that best wasn't effort. even good either. Wow. That's off into the left side junk. Should have calculated a little bit more than he did. Yeah, miscalculation there from Heimberg. Seems like it's been one of those days for him. Yeah, that last clump of you can see on the right hand side up there yes. is right near the edge of the cliff. Gotcha. The last the right hand clump is at the edge, yeah. So you don't want to see your disc flying any farther than that second clump. This is kind of what I was expecting to see. Something yeah. a little wider, you know, give yourself oh. some room. That's not going to hurt him, no. man. It's still a routine up and down. A little putter in there. He'll be making birdie four in no time. But yeah, no, one, no one wanted to challenging that here in the I'm last surprised. Or two. Yeah. Yeah. I think if Rick ended up in the fairway, he would have. Yes, yeah. especially with his distance yeah. off the tee. 
Kiefer. Throwing two. His drive got to the corner, but kind of leaked away from the corner. Should have lots of angle. He should have a decent angle here. Johnny, on the other hand, is a little too far forward. See, he's he's got the angle to go through. Mm. Sliding past those trees. That Look at that good massive skip, skip, too. Yes, Dang. sir. That's why Saki out of the woods. Yep, that's all he had from yeah. there. Just get it past the narrow pinch point, and you're good. Didn't have much of a swing if that was his only option. Yeah. I'm interested to see what Calvin has left here. This went a little farther farther into the woods and to the left than I, I thought it was going to. Gossage. Looking Gets it around the corner with his third. Looking for something similar to the Kevin Kiefer play we just saw. There's that cliff. You really can't tell in this yeah. picture, but that lake is on the down gotcha. side of the cliff gotcha. and that fairway is on the high side of the cliff. Gotcha. And there's a good 30, 35 foot drop right there. You can kind of see it back in that back corner right there. Flight the factory drone giving yeah. us the eagle eye view. Waisaki at his third to set up a birdie putt. It's got to get down, huh? Bite. There we go. Just outside That'll of work. Work. That'll work. Yeah. There's a small drop off behind this basket too if you go a little long of it, so it was imperative that he stopped there and didn't go another ten feet forward. So many things to consider out here. Yeah, there really is. There's so much you gotta be aware of. Perfect. Nice shot from Chris Clemens. It does help that that's an uphill slope all the way to the basket. So anything it hits short, you know, is not going to go long. Yeah. It's going to stop fairly quickly there. And we just saw that great shot from our Flight Factory drone. Head over to FlightFactoryDisc.com and support them. Get 15% off with the discount code Magnus. Olympus? I thought it was Olympus. Olympus, there it is. There, there it is. is. <laughs> Magnus. <laughs> <laughs> I got Magnus that on the brain. <laughs> I'm amazed he's here. That's so cool, man. How about that, man? That's like like Michael Jordan, Tiger he's, Woods showing he's up an in international time, right? superstar, it's man, incredible. in the chess world. Yeah. That's for sure. And he's from Norway or something like that, or yeah. Sweden. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, from Scandinavia. I think he's from Norway. Somewhere over there. Norway is the word. It's a long way to travel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Heimberg, not too buried after that second. Yeah, it's better than I thought he was going to yeah. be. But he's still got to go to the sidearm here. Let's come back. Ooh, that buried itself into those bushes a bit. Hmm. I don't think that's going to be too close or too clean. Not been Mr. Heimberg. Not Hell at yeah. all. Not at all. Those bushes are not where you want to be on this hole. Half the field getting burned on this hole today. Calvin might not be in that list. We'll see how that put. Eh, it looks pretty close. It doesn't look terrible. Yeah, okay. I got closer than I thought. He's, he's looking for it, or did he find it? And it's behind the clump. Yeah, you can see it right there on the ground. He's just to the left of the big clump, but still, still 28 feet away, and the wind's howling. Looks to be in his face. Gonna have some stuff altering the shape of his swing a little bit. Let's see if Calvin can figure this out. Yeah, I think the height of his swing as well. I think he's gonna have to bring his hand up a little higher than he normally would just yeah, to get over That's what I was that. talking about. You're gonna have yeah. to alter the shape a bit. Yeah. Ugh. Just low again for Calvin. It seems like that's been his miss today. It's been a little bit shy, a little bit low. We got that one on the, the having to change his stroke a little bit, and that's probably what made it come up a little short. We've been seeing that a lot lift. from a lot of different positions across the golf course because of the footing or because yeah. of the trees or because of the sawgrass or because yeah. of whatever. There's all these little variables that are making the competitors here alter their normal oh. thing. And another miss for Macbeth. And it's catching an edge and rolling. Oh, stop. Ooh. Ouch. Ah, that didn't go too far for Macbeth. Step or two off the bullseye. Up and in. Waisaki. 
Gets the birdie in. Two pars, two birdie here on this feature card. Rick two off the lead of Varela. Birdie for Clemens. Here's your second birdie. Here's your second, second par. par. <laughs> Calvin Heimberg. Disappointing pars there. Absolutely, from your yeah. Lead. When you throw a drive in the fairway like that, yeah. two guys went. <laughs> <laughs> scrambling around and still getting it done. Oh, oh Kiefer. Dribbling out. What an opportunity. I think that was a case of just playing too safe for Calvin. I think he was trying to take that cliff to the right out of play. Uh, and just played a little too safe on that second shot. Got him into some trouble. Maybe just too staple of a disc. You yeah. Know, he had plenty of room to work with. Gossage for par. What do you think about seeing the hand flip upside down like that in the putting motion. Mr. Climo, what do you say about that? That's a bit odd if you ask me. It, you would flip your hand all the way over in a putting motion. Seems like that would want to twist your disc, you know. Your, your disc tends to do what your hand does or your arm does. Seems like the disc is coming out nice and flat for Mr. Gossage. Yeah. Morella. That looks pretty tasty. He's got to get past that little corner. Oh, yep. my. Perfect. That looks exceptional that's exactly where you want to be right in that straw best shot we've seen out of the few groups we've seen on camera today so far that was very nice let's see if mr robinson can follow that up it's got a twist back it's in a hurry of, yep trying to get stable trying to catch up oh gets a little branch and huh. keeps him in bounds that might have saved him from a couple of things there huh not only the out of bounds but potentially a worse position angle wise yeah or a big hole in your disc, too, hitting some barbed wire. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Take us down uh, hole 16 here, Mr. Climo. What, what, what say you? Well, there you got two options. You can go to the right side of these two trees here and play a little flip-up hyzer, or you can go to the left side, which most people seem to be doing, and do a flex shot. And I think the flex shot's a better play because it takes you away from that left side, which is early death. You bleed back to the left at the end, and that's the way the hole goes. And it gets you away from the fence. I think the, the flex shot, playing it off the left side, flexing it towards the fence first, and then flexing away from the fence second. Then then you've got this little uphill area here with a couple trees. Those trees really make this a, de a decision. You have to go left or right of those two trees. And then this tree, obviously, you have to want to get left of this tree and then skip back to the right, unless you're throwing a backhand, which you can do. It just has to be a, a slow, late flip. That's not easy to do. <laughs> so it's better if you have the sidearm. And yeah. Yeah. That's what we saw Kevin Kiefer and Aaron Gossage do. Keep it on one angle, working its way towards the target at the end. Yeah. And A, B, Let's set see. up beautifully. He's in, the, he's in that spot where you've thrown such a good drive. Now you've got to choose. Do I want to go left of these two trees or right of these two trees? Right of them, I'm going with a flex shot. Left of them, I'm going to go with a hyzer skip. you got the flex, low. but it's not going to flip back and get stable again. That's a ways from the target for Anthony Barella. And that seems to be situated on another one of those crowns where... Slopes off in a big hurry. Yeah, for as good as that drive was, you'd think he would want to get, you know, he would try and get a little closer than that. But those two trees really make you make a choice. Make a choice. Right. If you don't choose the right one in that win, which I don't think he did, I think he should have went with what he, what Chris is doing. I think he should take the should have took the hyzer skip. That was moving one direction, but uh, he hit the cedar tree on the left. But you don't have to you don't have to worry about it going little one window. way than the right. other. You would just have to worry about it. I guess it depends on direction. what you're more proficient at as right. well, too. Right. If you're more comfortable throwing the one angle hyzer, then you go with that. If you're more comfortable putting a little flex, flex on, on it, it, maybe you go with that. I guess the conditions, which direction the wind's, wind's blowing, blowing, what you're getting up that. there should all come into play. All so. those factors. Or Gannon's far enough forward to where he has only, only the hyzer the, only the hyzer window. Right. Yep. And he executed and it beautifully. Does it, it sit just, down? It does. Just the way the ground is shaped right there, the hyzer seems to work better mm -hmm. than the flex. If you don't get the flex high enough, it's going to burn down into the ground low. Copy that. Burst starting to warm up here. Trying to put it together, isn't he? Yeah, he's three down right now. That should that, get him to four, that's right? That's four right there. That's going to get him to four, so that's, that'll get him in yeah. a tie for eighth place. Yeah, he's in the mix. Two holes left, yeah. Well, he's in the mix Straight from the mix. 13th to eighth with one birdie. Wow. That's a nice little move. The second for Dickerson was a bit lacking with the tree hit and throwing three. Ooh. Does that sit down there? I think so. I think there's a little bit of room there. It's not like 15 feet and then nasty. I'm pretty sure there's, uh. there's, some, there's some area around that basket. And there's no real big fall off in that area at all. If he was to be over a little crit look, here's a better look of 
what the right side of that basket looks like. It's not not long. There is some trees and stuff along that you don't want to get into, but to the right side, it's 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 fairly flat over there. Anthony Barella trying to paste out that stepper one more time, coming up a bit shy. Aaron Gossett, the all-important tee shot on 17. Which, oh, uh, no. That is the worst direction to go. Yeah, that leaves you absolutely Ooh. nothing from there. Back to Robinson. Mm. Tried to float one home off the band again for Isaac Robinson today. Well, yeah. Three it or bids. four. Yeah, he's an aggressive putter, man. Give Not afraid. Bids. Keeper on 17. Piers the gap. Right down the middle. Let's check the finish. I think going a little left and short like he was heading to, I think is the play. Let's see what this guy at the top of the hill says. Red. No. Oh, that means he, he must have dribbled in. The yep. line long across mm. the fairway. Wow. And it looked like he did everything he needed to do on that yeah. shot and just got the worst reaction, the, the worst slow result. Disc, made it go left, wow. hit the gap. Like. All we can do is sit there and wait because they can't see it. Dickerson. That's a really demanding tee shot on 17. Is that a disc selection error there, Ken? I don't think it, so. It looked like he threw a, a slow flying disc there. Okay. I think it's just the fact that it goes so start steeply downhill uh -huh. after you crest the hill that it's hard to stop any kind of disc unless you've got a side of a, unless you've got a turning left or right with counterclockwise spin. That's a tough shot to do going up and over the hill like that. Right. The ice man heating up, guys. <laughs> He's melting his own ice, he huh? He is. That's a B score card, but Burr sitting at four or five right now. Waisaki back on 16's T. Looking left looking for that flex line. Well wide. Flex better get hard. super stable. It's trying. It's trying to fight. It did. Wow, there what ground go. play there. Very nice. I got like 50 foot of ground play. See and if he can figure out that sidearm now. Yeah. Thanks to four straight birdies, Burr is four down. Clemens. He's going lefty side on. Is he taking the right side? Or is he going the flag? He's going flex. Ooh, okay. that's Ooh. trouble. He never Guys, got that yeah. over. Oh. Early release and undercommitted for Chris Clemens, and he is buried along the left side here. Well, hope that didn't get too deep in there. Mm. Hopefully he can find some way back to the fairway and try to scrape this up for a par. Heimberg. Calvin, if he can close it up with a couple birdies, you know, get two, Still two, in the mix, two man. under. He's, he's right in the right in there. Seven under being the lead, and that's only one person at seven. This could be really nice. This is going to fade, but will it fade on time? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Calvin Heimberg in business at the 16th. Up above the straw. He's in the grass. That's that's definitely the best ride we've seen there. He's, he's in the grass above the straw, which is going to make his angle a lot better. Macbeth sitting where he started at even. Ooh. Woo. Oh. This is going to swing back left. I don't think it's going to get quite as oh Maybe it will. Look oh. at that big flare skip to try to join Calvin Heimberg. That was All a really, right. really good shot. That right was. There. That was a very nice shot. Well paced, good angle, like good it. speed. <laughs> that guy didn't the like it. camera guy didn't like it, but we liked it. Over to Gossage. Oh, he is in a world of hurt. Oh, oh, that hit something right away. There's Isn't a lake right in front of him, too. Spanish moss, I think. If that didn't go anywhere. That could be an OB. But he might have been throwing just to the right of the lake, I think, and that may be why he took that angle. Trying to give you an yet. update. Yeah, when we see it, for the moment, we'll assume everything's okay for Aaron Gossage. Potential for an out-of-bounds stroke there, but nothing updated as of yet. We will keep you posted. Look at our top 10, really top eight players. There's a bunch of guys getting all the way down into the 20th place, 28th place, top 30, sitting at one under on the afternoon. And there's a bunch of guys sitting on that minus one, minus two number. Plenty of opportunities round two and round three to make a push. Yeah, we're kind of wondering what this win's going to do the rest of the weekend. I don't think it's forecast to be as strong as it was today, but I'm sure it's still going to blow get a little cooler, bit. cooler, though, right? That's yeah, what you were saying? It's supposed to cool off a little bit, but not not a bunch. Not, you know, maybe not drastically, just a few ten degrees. degrees. Any That's rain enough. tomorrow? No, rain's only going to be just tonight. tonight. Just tonight's little yeah. passing yeah. front. They got about a half an hour to get it done before that Still. rain shows up. Oh, 
these people on 16 are yep. going to be pushing it. They may be throwing their up shots <clears throat> on 18 in the rain if it starts raining when it's supposed to. Clouds haven't gotten much darker in the last 30, 40 minutes, so we might get lucky. At least we're not going to be dealing with darkness, which I was a bit of a thought process. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that ledge down? We were finishing yes. with the glow discs in the yeah. dark and flashlights. Oh, Idlewild. Idlewild, Idlewild. you're right, yeah. Idlewild. Yeah. That was the week after. I was one week uh, off. Yeah. That was fun, though. That oh, yeah, they gave him the choice. to play yeah, or not play? And they're like, yeah, yeah, play I don't want to come back at 6 o'clock <laughs> tomorrow right? morning. <laughs> yeah. Finishing this thing. Uh -huh. And Waisaki. Just a bit too far forward off the tee. All that 50 foot of ground play, he didn't need it. He only needed 30 foot of that yeah. ground play. But it's still doable from here, but he's just right on the razor's edge of being a little too far. He's going to have to make this snap hook back to the right yes. very quickly once it gets to the crest of the hill. Yep. Big skip. I don't, think you can, I don't think you can do it in flight. It has to oh, be skipped. Oh, no. That little sapling just <laughs> ruining the shot for Ricky Wysocki. Oh, wow. He had all the implications and attitude and one little two-inch wide tree just ruined the day. Mm. <laughs> That's a... He's, he's snarling. He's right snarling now. over. <laughs> you can see him. <laughs> if I had a pair of scissors, I'd cut that tree down. Because <laughs> that's all it would take, man. Just, just give him some nail clippers. And he you know, you could probably get that with some nail clippers. It's so skinny. I'm gonna go snap it off with my teeth. <laughs> Keeper after the OB drive, throwing three. It'll be. Oh, there is possibly four. OB there too. Oh. I'm not sure where that line is, but. I know it's close to oh, that fall off. Oh, yep. gosh. Completely Thank buried. You. Throwing three. Oh, gosh, oh he oh, loves it. <laughs> How did he do that? I don't think he knows. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he said, no way. Yes, he did. He impressed himself. Yeah. That's how you know you've done something. You impressed a pro disc golfer. Chris Clemens throwing three. I think he just got out of his trouble area. I think he's still looking at bogey there. Yeah. But uh, it's better than not going anywhere. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what was potentially going to happen to Aaron Gossage. It's like Paul taking a peek. I think he's going to the right side of these two trees. So uh, looks good. like he's lining up some kind of yep. over-the-top action, so he went for the cut swing. He went to the left side of those two trees, yeah. There you go. Shallow circle two. Yeah, that might be shallow circle uh, one. Maybe. You think that got in say, yeah. Yeah. I think cool. that got in. Dribbled got into inside. circle one. Yeah, pin high, about 20, 24, 25. Heimberg, next to act. Yeah, he's going on the inside. What a drive. That was a great Phenomenal drive. drive. Get around it. Oh, yeah. Sit down. There yeah, you go. Calvin Heimberg. That ought to turn into a birdie. Yeah. Heimberg still at even. That should get him under par. That should do it. That'll be his first foray under par today, won't it? Accurate. Woo. Yeah, it will. <laughs> That's one way to grind it out. John McCray had a rough day. Here he is on. 17. I'm told this is a good one. Trying to find himself a birdie this afternoon. Oh, wow. Look at that. If that was his second. That'll do. Haven't seen many drives end up in that spot. <laughs> if that was his drive. That was. It's his drive, Ken. Okay. okay. So, All yeah, right. I bet you he... <laughs> that man's literally rips the disc. He does. It is. He just punishes that thing. Clemens. That will clean up. It looks like a bogey, huh? Yeah. Drop in, no stress, but still a bogey. Gossage and his fourth. Yeah. Skipper. Oh, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't quite up. flare up. Yeah, had a good <laughs> angle on it, but not quite the flare to get into the chains. Macbeth. Oh, that's it. Just run back there. Well, this looks kind of like circle out. two, guys. Oh, you're right, Ian. <laughs> Foot in mouth and what disc <laughs> in basket for Paul <laughs> McBeth. One of the best putts we've seen him make this afternoon. That was a very nice make. And he needed it to get back under par. He and Calvin. 
they both do. There you go. Rick slides that little 12 footer in there at 20 miles an hour. <laughs> Chris Clemens with the drop in. Lay it in there upside down. Kevin Kiefer. At four par from circle two. Just chicken on the bone here. Oh, no. Good stop. Low out the gate, bouncing it off the bottom. That goat's still working on that piece mm -hmm. of <laughs> that tree. <laughs> I got me a prize. Getting every last little uh, little morsel. Uh -huh. it, it must taste better than the grass, I guess. You know, because there's I lots would, of grass I right there. I wouldn't know, man. I, I don't want to know. <laughs> you don't sample trees and grass when you're you're playing football. He's going for the he's going for the barbed wire. Oh, he's going for something now. There's some. Oh, we got a buddy. He's got a buddy with him. It's like a Paul and Ken Ken hangout. <laughs> a couple of goats. A couple of goats. Yeah. It's going deep on that branch. Gannon Burr has bubbled up nicely, though. Along with Isaac Robinson after that bogey on one. Has had a really nice round. Man, those guys don't quit, man. That's very true. There's a few guys you can see the quit start taking over in the body and in the face, but that's not two of them. Those two guys are some grinders, man. Yeah, that's really well put. Yeah, Even when it's not going their way, they might get a little grumpy and frumpy, but they keep fighting. They keep trying their best, and that's all you can ask for from a professional out here between the ropes, man. You know, it may not go your way, but keep trying, you know. Don't just throw some shots away because you're frustrated. Especially in the first round, you know. Yeah, that's, that's silly. 17, we're flying this daunting hole, Ken. Yeah, this, uh, this is a lot steeper than it looks like on camera, and you come up to the top, and it just drops right back off the other side. Super steep. Lake right in front of there. Ah, so oh. that's there you go. And then there's fairways over here to your left, and then there's a cliff beyond that, which is OB line. Which it's so deceiving from what the actual course there's, scorecard shows yes. or the caddy book. It seems like that lake's 250 feet, 300 yeah. feet further than what it is. It's right there it's, off the tee pad. Yep. So yeah, it's a very, very technical tee shot, and I can, I'm not surprised we've seen so many guys go OB now from that drone footage. Now it makes total sense. Yeah, because yeah, you got to get over the lake, but then you got to be short of the cliff where the ob line is it's very small how do you make it area. stop you know right. how do you make it it's probably better to just try to fire it all the way across the pond yeah i see what yeah. you're saying like if i was going to go OB on that hole i'd want to go be past the pond over the cliff and i'd have just a little hyzer low hyzer skip oh, safe tap in park Copy. if i was going to be ob on that hole that's where i'd want to be OB. i wonder how johnny mccray got to where he was because that was exceptional it was yeah <laughs> to was land to land in that little strip you gotta throw some kind of beat up putter that doesn't turn too much because then you end up in the lake. Yeah. Touchy. Barella. Yeah. There's two, three, looks like three really good shots there. Are in the there you hey. go. Anthony Barella threads the needle, slides it into circle one, a few steps past the bullseye, long of the target. We'll have that for a two-stroke lead. Yes, he will. Anthony Barella, what a performance today. Open up this 2024 season. All our leaders coming into 17 and 18 have really... They've struggled. They have struggled. They have struggled. It seems like every last one of them, we thought they were going to make that move, got to 17 and double bogey, bogey, double bogey. Yeah, Radolin and Gilbert both finished bogey. Double bogey. Double bogey. Yep. See the way he bled that over to the right and got it really flat to the right of the basket? This this land tends to want to suck Pull you your to disc the to the left because there's a big cliff to the left and there's a lot mm -hmm. of pine needles and stuff up there. So that's really the prudent play is to, to go ahead and get flat right side of the basket. From the angle he was, that looks like the smarter play anyway. Yeah, it like, does. Why would you want to do anything else? You've got plenty of room to work with. Something nice and stable should get that fade as you cross that tree and yeah. slide yourself right up there for a look. And the ceiling seems to be about the same height on either side of the tree. I think you're adding in. Again, this also goes to what the person prefers, what they're, right. what they're good at, what they're comfortable with. You know, some guys might stand there and go, this is a much easier side Sidearm side flex. Arm. Yeah, for them, that's just where their skill set is, you know? Yeah. And over the years, we've been seeing a whole lot of guys lean to the sidearm play than the backhand play. It's just, it seems like we're in a new generation with the shot selection of the player. Uh -huh. It's not so left or, excuse me, righty backhand dominant anymore. Now here's Gannon's over here in the woods on the left-hand side of the fairway, and that's if you get a little too speedy coming out of that gap. Gotcha. And there is an OB line down past where he is, I think, which isn't 
cliff related. The cliff is farther towards the basket. But, ooh, see, there's an OB line right there. There's a white stake right there, but I think it swoops way down by the cliff and comes back up. Yes, it does. And he is in the safe zone. He's in the safe zone right there, I believe. There, there is an OB all along the left side of this hole. Yep. He's just coming sideways back into play. And we talked about that when we walked around with Paul and Dylan, that he wanted to leave that area safe, but in trouble. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to deal with some trouble, not just have the ability to take it at the line and go if you're well back there. Robinson underneath. Now don't skip too far. There's trouble waiting over there. Looked a little early. He is on the fairway after four. So we'll be throwing five from where that landed. Wow. Yeah. Some trouble there. Kind of goes right back to the plank. Ken was making about the shot Chris Dickerson threw and putting it off to the right side and allowing the hill to pull the disc back towards the target. Correct. And if it doesn't, you're still on the safe side. Burr. And his next after pitching out from the woods. Showing us a hyzer swing. Three. Just and inside. He just that. misses it. Looks like that slides yeah, into circle one for Gannon yeah, Burr. Yeah. Right Opportunity yeah. to save his par. Fairly smart to do a little walk up there. This they have the time. Go check it out. Go check it out. Why not? I mean, I'm yeah. sure they know what to expect, but may as well take another peek and see if the wind's doing anything different on the back side of the hill. And exactly. See yeah. where the players are landing. Yes. See what see what you know what they're shooting from. Kind of seeing Paul and Rick on the same guard again. It's nice to see him back, man. Yeah. I'm, camp, so I'm not going to move around a lot. So many great battles in I the know. middle of the 2010s, man. Oh, oh my Between goodness. those two guys. Uh -huh. And it was, they were playing head games back then, too. Mm. It, was, it was fun. Yeah, Our like generation's uh, Ken and Barry, huh? Yeah, Basically. Yeah. yeah. Modern day Barry and Ken. No doubt. There is kind of a safe safety valve on this hole. I think you can go out to the right. There's a secondary fairway. You can play out to uh -huh. the Still right. Still got to crest the hill, though, no? You got to crest the hill, but then from there, you really can't get to the pin. You have to, like, chip it back around into the fairway to play for par. If you do if you do the secondary route, it's really not a birdie hole. And if you enjoy watching the action, when the tour comes to town, make sure you head out to the course and watch it in person. It is incredible in person. It's just different. The sound, the flight of the disc, it's, it's, that's incredible, guys. You got The atmosphere, man, all the cool that disc too. golf people, that man. Too. You get to hang out with all your friends and family from across the world. <laughs> show up and have a great time. That was fairly aggressive through that gap. Yeah, and to get to the other disc. side, there you go. Calvin Heimberg gets to the Sit. other side. Uh, I hope that little roll didn't just punish him because that was a really nice-looking throw. A slip on the tee pad there. He mm. did look a little slippy. Macbeth. But I think that four or five foot of... Extra movement at the end did hurt him, Philo. Mm, there's another, another slip. One. The front of that pad is a little beaten down. See that? And That's going to work out great, though. Perfect. That's dead in the middle of the fairway. White Saki. Looks like he's using a different part of the fair. Oh. Yeah, you called it, man. Yeah. That is like ice right there. Uh huh. That front foot of the pad. Wysocki slows the footwork down, gets nice and solid. Will it make it all the way across? That's over that lake. Oh! No what? way! Did you see that? The kick. What? Off the glass? Top, off the top of a stick, basically, uh -huh. in the pond. Oh, I, want, I can't wait to see that again. Unbelievable. Uh, Clemens. And a foot from the line. <laughs> oh, oh, my. <laughs> Safe. This has got to be a really tough shot for Chris Clemens. He's trying to get this off to the right. That's going to be right into that thick stuff on the other side of the pond. See the OB line here? It's on that the dude. other side of the trees. Mm. The whole uh, pond and the trees are OB. Take a look at this shot from Rick. Maybe we can catch this in slow-mo. What happened on the tail end of this flight? I thought he was cooked. I thought he was going to drop in the pond right about here, uh -huh. and then he just somehow right. something catapulted there. Right there. There you go. <laughs> Oh, Just wow. enough to it, keep him in bounds, and then and it, it rolled in bounds. Oh, Unreal. Yeah. A foot from the line. Better to be lucky than good some days, man. Absolutely. Wow. 
fortunate break there for Mr. Wysocki. Let's see if he can capitalize on said good break. That was a great view on how that hole breaks down. Yeah. Uh, what a, you know, a perfect tee shot needs to be. is very close to something bad. Trouble. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That drone Hockey flight stick. provided some really nice perspective on the hole. It did. Yeah. Oh, boy. Mr. Robinson going in the wrong line. direction. Is a seven? That was a hockey stick. Oh, no. That line on the left-hand side of the basket is right there. I mean, that's inside circle one. Barella for birdie in a two-stroke lead with one to go. There it is. You could tell as soon as that disc comes up to where his eyes are supposed to meet his hand, if that thing's got the right look, absolutely there from Anthony Barella. Par for Burr, ending the birdie streak. But Hey, that's one heck of a birdie streak. Yeah. You're talking about it. This is that section of the course you could really put a move on, and mm -hmm. he did. Cannon Burr took advantage. And you don't mind a par on 17. No, you're all good with that par. You're still gaining strokes on the field. Macbeth. And his second. He was a little pinched off with that bush there. I thought he was a little bit more wide open there. Beat that tree. Does ah. not. Still in the fairway there for Macbeth. Circle two, edge of circle two-ish from there. And here is the man, Anthony Barella, up on top of the leaderboard trying to get it home. Flawless. Get to shoot that got to turn over. It's got to turn over. That's got to turn over. Uh oh. Did he just make a big boo boo he on the very low? Oh, no. Anthony Barella did not put the right attitude on that, anticipating some flip up. Didn't get it. Playing for par here at the 18th. Back to 17. Heimberg in his overstable fairway. Oh, no. Cut roll. Huh? Oh. Decent ground action, considering. I know there's a line real close to there. See, there's oh, a line. Yeah, oh, there yeah. is. Good yeah. eye there. We will check with that on Calvin Heimberg if that stayed up. No update yet. We'll let you but know. That was that little five foot of dribble on his drive. Remember, they dribbled five or six foot. If he would have not dribbled, he would have had a more open shot there. I told you that five or six foot was going to It did come into play. It did come into play for Calvin, and he may be paying the price Look times two this. here. Wow, he couldn't drop a disc better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's exactly where you want to be throwing your second shot. But whew, to get there. Will it have enough push after he yes, hits the ground? Yes, it yes, does. Yes. Ricky Wysocki bases it at the 17th. That gets him to six under. It does. That's a scary guy to have on your heels. And A.B. likely falling back on 18. Yeah, he's going to have to work to only, you know, to get a par there. Yeah. Hey, I see some sprinkles on the water, fellas. Uh, Thought for Gossage after the OB. Oh, he shot. played that wonderfully. Let the wind rise that over the edge of the hill. Nice play there from Aaron Gossage. Yeah, we saw early. No Annie's into that green, huh? That's a bad idea, man, when you got a ripping crossing wind like that. I know you're trying to hit the air brakes and slow the disc down, but, but man, you just got to have the right touch and disc down. Uh, Brian, we're looking over at Clemens. Do you have an update for us on Chris's status? Yeah, I mean, Ian, he's safe, but he's just on the other side of the creek, and uh, this is a really tough spot for him to be in. He still does have an opportunity to get up and down, but it's going to be really technical and uh, pretty low percentage. We'll see what he does. Yeah, I feel it there, Brown. It looks like he's just going to pitch out to the fairway now. That's, I think that's about all you can do when you're in a position like there. this. You go forcing the issue, you're going to add yeah. some more strokes to your card. That was a putting motion. Hopefully he got get in it, front of that clump. Out. Hopefully that had enough carry. It looked yeah. like it was a little soft. Maybe cut the corner a little. Brian, did he get out? Okay. It looked like it. He doesn't look frustrated. No. Yeah, he's he's going to be fine. Uh, still a ways away from the basket, but he's got a decent forehand up there. Thanks for that, Brian. Eyes on the ground always help. Oh, it wasn't much, though. Ooh, look at that. That's what I was thinking, man. Yeah. It didn't look very good. <laughs> it didn't look great. Very rarely, very rarely do you see a putting motion from middle fairway on a 600-foot par four. And that's what he had to do there just to make sure that he got it out of there. And it almost didn't work. Got a nice window to work with there along the left side. 
Should filter towards the basket nicely with this spin. Yeah, this should be pretty routine for a left-handed thrower here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Safe side. Everything's good there. Wind's still blowing. Not letting up for the boys out there. Oh, they're almost home. Green of 18, Kiefer for birdie. Oh, a little tall. T of the same for Gannon Burr. I'm liking the look of this sidearm off the tee here more and more. Yeah, it seems to fit the hole pretty well. The backhand, you'd have to throw it a little more nose down, like we were talking about earlier. This is one of the higher higher elevation spots with a bigger drop down to the, the bottom floor down there. It's probably 70 feet from top to bottom. And getting your Whoa. nose going downhill is, is really well if you're throwing the backhand. Throwing the sidearm, all you got to do is get it kind of flat and make sure it's an overstable disc and it'll just drop in there. But there is some OB on that right side. There's a cliff wall over there that's OB to the right, so you don't want to you don't want to get it too high and fluffy because it can find that right side OB. Gannon Burr, disc away. Oh, rolling oh. towards the lake, and it stops just shy of the line. Whew. Fortunate break there for Gannon. Ideal spot, though, from where he is now. Macbeth. Mm. I believe that was for par, no? Uh, no, he hit the tree. I think that was okay, for birdie. That was for birdie. Okay, that was for birdie. He hit the Heimberg for birdie. I mean, look how close he is to the line there. Oh, short again. You heard him say it. Great Not line really all short, afternoon. Just low. Yeah. Yeah. He had plenty of power. It wasn't like it was dropping and hitting the rim. It was going forward. Oh. Did plenty of power on it. Just low. didn't quite lift his hand up into the zone high enough. That's been his miss this afternoon. Yeah. Not a bad par for Clemens after the drive. No, not at all. Hey, he scrambled it out and no harm, no foul. I there know quite a few boys out there that would uh, trade scores with him very absolutely. quickly. Absolutely. <laughs> A par for Paul, a par for Heimberg. That was a drop-in birdie for Waisaki. Yes, based it. There you go. Rick. One hole left on the day. Climbing that ladder. Heimberg going to tie for 26th right now. Has not finished outside the top five since Portland. That's yeah, I mean, Calvin had one heck of a season last year, and it's going to be tough to kind of expect it to go exactly the same way with as many talented players as there are in the field. Right. It's going to be hard to, to replicate a season like that. Gossage to get off the course. Ooh, such is true, Philo. But this tournament is not over. It's not. He, he's in 26th place now. Now, yeah, there's, there's still, still plenty two rounds of room. To go. Yeah, plenty of time to make a move and yeah. get his stuff together. Get inside the top five. I mean, he's only four strokes, four strokes from man. Fifth That's place. a couple of holes. Right. <laughs> that is a bogey, bogey finish, though, for Gossage we just watched. Ouch. Dropping him back to three under on the day. Off your top ten. Yeah, another one of those guys, you know, can still strike back. Yep. It's not too late. Yeah. I think if you're under par today, you know, you're you're doing okay. You're, Anthony's stretching you out a little bit, but he's going to probably maybe come back if he doesn't base maybe. the Maybe. Opportunity here to save his par yeah. at the 18th and hold it to that two-stroke lead over Ricky Wysocki, Nicholas Santala, Joseph Henderson. Anderson, excuse me. Yeah. Let's see what he does. Here it is. This is takes it takes it where he crosses the line. It doesn't. There's no drop zone there for going left, OB. You just take it where you cross the line. There the only go. drop zone is on the hill going forward to the, to the green. And this is a ways back, let me tell you. Oh, he put a little turnover on this, trying to stall it in there. Oh! oh. No! Disaster on the 18th for AD. Oh, no. Does he have to re-throw? I, mean, I think he takes a drop zone to get to progress? up closer. Yeah. I think he takes it to a drop zone up closer to the hill. Ah, I'm surprised he tried to put some turnover on this. We've been saying, man, hey, you got to go one angle up that hill. And he but he's so out far there back, left. though, from where yeah. he was. That's a long way, Yeah, dude. but he throws 700 feet, I man. I know. I know. That's just a <laughs> long way back. It is a long carry. All right. And it's super uphill. That's true. That was one tree away from being there, but unfortunately that one tree is going to cost him. Yeah, it's... Looking like he's going to have to do magic to not make a double bogey there. And that would bring him back into that six under number that no one's been able to get past all day. Mm. This is 
is probably why he thought he'd get there, because he's Anthony Barilla. He throws 700 feet. Roger to it. flip madness from Anthony Barilla carrying over 700. Oh, just dead feet. stop. Didn't even get a move. Yeah, he went Heiser flip, so on the finish, you get nothing. Look at that. That's a golf shot, too, fellas. Right yeah, down Broadway. Oh, it's online perfectly. Wow. Incredible stuff from young Anthony Barilla. Let's check out Philo's Keys for Closing, brought to you by our friends at BlackInkDisc.com, the premium disc golf store. Unfortunately, Anthony Barilla is in the potential for spoiling the sustain the pace there. <laughs> so critical, man, to, to get it into the clubhouse, man. A critical play to separate. I mean, we've been talking about this all around, and it's going to come down to that, I believe, by the end of this tournament, is somebody's going to have to make a play to separate. Own the moment when it comes your way. How many guys have we seen... <laughs> have the moment and didn't own it coming down the stretch. Yeah, those could be a large two strokes when it comes down to Sunday in the final. Got to yeah. stay right here on the DGN to see it all happen live. Hope you guys stick with us throughout the weekend. We are one hole and missed a couple of shots away from this day being a wrap. Robinson up the hill on the finishing 18th. Buzz the tower there, trying to throw it in. Here comes the water, fellas. Umbrellas are coming out. Didn't quite make it. It rains a little early. Can 10 minutes early, 15 minutes early. <laughs> Somebody tell it to hold off a little bit. Magnus brave in the rain. He's ready to throw, man. He's got that plastic in hand. Gannon Burr on the fairway after one, throwing two on 18. Ooh, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That didn't look good at first. Now, at least Optical this, illusion. They're dancing going up the hill in that wind. Yeah, now it's starting to get a little precipitation falling from the sky. That doesn't make anything easier. At least there's only one hole left. Just the, one hole to for go. For the last group. But they would like to get started with it right now if they could. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Jumping ahead to the fairway of 18 AB, and I believe his fifth shot coming up. This is his fifth. OB through three, that didn't land safe, so now he's throwing five. So he's got to throw this in to stay at seven. His conditions are just con it's continuing to get worse as the moment goes on here. Yeah. Well, he's been solid from circle two today. Can he capitalize here? One more stepper to mitigate the double bogey. Not to be for Anthony Barilla and back to six under par in a tie ball game. Oh, we're gonna have a four way tie at the wow. top. Waisaki, Antela, Anderson, and Barilla. And things can change quick on tour. There's Dickerson just laying up with his fourth. You can see the bogey. Over to Robinson. Do you think that's a little bit too generous to the to the field that if you don't make it up on top, you just automatically go to that drop zone? I don't know why you would actually get on top if you didn't make it up top. That's what I'm confused about. They, I know the way we used to play it in the Throwdown the Mountain tournaments. Uh -huh. we, we'd play it from the bottom. If you I didn't figured make it to we'd the top, be seeing the another shot. In the yeah, bottom. I totally figured we'd be seeing Maybe another like shot a, from a maybe. pace of play adjustment, perhaps. It was close to the wall. It was up close to the wall. It was a hundred, you know, hundred twenty foot shot. It wasn't that hard. It was just blind, and you had to throw a decent shot instead of I don't just having a putt at it. I don't think you should have a putt at it. Rick, Rick doesn't like this one, you guys. Yeah, he's moaning and groaning. This is Down OB for Ricky Wysocki at the 18th. Well, uh, that will be a three way tie. <laughs> Unless he can get up. Unless and down. he can get up and down he for can par. Get up and down. You're right. He can get me. his par and hang in there. Course Man. has teeth. It sure does. This has been a really. I love watching this course. It's really interesting. All the shot shapes are different. You know, you, you need everything out here. It you helps do. to have a little bit of everything. Yeah. You need a good mind too. You know, not just the shots. You need a good mind out here. You need to know when to go and know when to hold. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we've seen a nice mix of both of those things this afternoon. Yeah. We've seen guys make some super smart, super well-educated plays for the situation, and a couple of guys maybe push a little hard at times and pay the price. Good call, Philo. Heimberg. 
Oh, if he can come up with a dirty birdie here, you know, that puts him that looks four like back. Ooh, that flipped up right on time. That was looking a little scary out the it gate. Was. That's still, still moving scary. left. That's yeah. left. Ouch. That's out. Wow. Wow. That's a big miss. That is a big miss. It's. It seemed like he was really trying to rush that, you know? I guess because of the trying rain, trying to get off the maybe? course? Yeah. I don't know, man. I know you don't want to stand there and let your grip go to, to waste, but... Beth is going to get good. a green flag at the 18th. The a launch angle on that one is really nice. I do know from past experiences, though, throwing backhand down this hill, you don't you don't want any part of that right side if you're throwing a backhand. You want to get it as far left as you can and turn it. So maybe they're just not executing, but getting it, getting the starting line right, but then not executing the turn. Because Anthony and Calvin did exactly the same thing pretty much. And, oh, Chris oh, Clemens yeah. dribbles into the hazard and into some water. That was looking pretty good. The majority of that flight just ran out of land. Robinson to get off the course on 18. So casual. Not it so is, long. man. It's Got beat up a little bit there at the end. Another double <laughs> bogey, bogey finish. 17 and 18. Triple bogey. Triple, bogey. you're right. That was a triple. That's yeah, that's that's brutal. Four under to even in the last two, two holes. Two holes, yeah. That's a tough way to end the day. Gannon Urgh. finishes with a five, four out of five birdies. Nearly That's the double turkey. Five out of six, sorry. Five yep. out of the last six to five under. Those are big birdies, too, where people are taking bogeys. Yeah. You know, it's not just a birdie par situation. And the field just, just catching get, up to Anthony Brown a little there. Yeah, yeah exactly yeah. right, yeah. He was four behind him going into that hole, now he's one behind him. Hey, wow. Anthony helped him out a bit there. Yeah. Man, Sunday's going to be exciting knowing this It's going to be exciting tomorrow, too. Yeah. We're going to see who's going to stick around, who's going to set yep. themselves up for an opportunity to take this one down. Good day tomorrow. Yes, sir. Can't wait. That was a fun watch, Jim. A lot, a lot of fun out here. First day, first round of the 2024 season here on the Disc Golf Network. Got the champ, Ken Climo, in the house. Philo Brathlade with Ian Anderson and all of your favorite pros minus a couple i believe Corey ellis and a few other guys are still out there Drew traveling Gibson around didn't make it out i don't think a couple guys didn't make yeah. it out but it's a pretty close to full house this week yeah 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 a lot of guys creeping around that even one under two under area mm -hmm. you know it's just a testament to how tough this course is So, a little look at the Paul McBeth finish one down. I think he's still in it, guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Five back of the lead. Yeah, it's, that's he's still shaking off the rust, you know, knocking the rust off, been injured, dealing, doing the family thing, all these other little side projects, and, you know, Paul McBeth Foundation, all the different things that's been going on there. So I'm not surprised things are a little shaky for McBeth to start the, the season. He'll get it back together, man. Yeah. It wasn't a bad day for him. It just wasn't a great day for him, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he can go out there and beat himself all over the place. He just wasn't super sharp. He gets this upshot up and down, you know? He's two under par, four back. It's not, not, not bad. the end of the day, yeah. Yeah, not the end of the world. Ah, Magnus enjoying this. It's just like Norway, right? <laughs> Rains all the time and gray. This is probably a hot summer day I for him. Say, it's a lot warmer. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to all the awesome Finnish and Norwegian disc golf fans. All right, here we go. What's the over-under for Magnus to wipe the field at chess? <laughs> 20 minutes, 30 minutes? You think he can get through everybody this in a half an hour? This is the same thing that Anthony just faced. Got to get up. Got to get up. It is. Nose grow. Oh, oh gosh. It kicks. Oh, it almost kicked back down far enough, but it didn't. Ouch. Uh, that means he's going to be throwing five from up top. Up top. Yeah. Another yeah. double bogey coming Ooh. here. I think Berg will finish over par, currently at one under. Unless he makes the putt. Unless he makes the putt. Only way he can finish it even. Yeah. Ed, the heavens opened up here quick. It's that's Florida that's, for you. Yeah, that that's a big line. It's hundreds and hundreds of miles long. It's pushing from the northwest to the southeast. Huh. And it's going to go through fairly quickly. I, I looked at it on the radar before I came out here today. and it, It's not very thick. It's a pretty thin line. Why Saki up the hill? This is third. I don't think we're going to have a ground soaking event. Like there we did last you go. Weekend. Solid right. play there from Ricky Wysocki. Leaves himself with no work to complete this round. And we'll make
maintain a share of the lead. Excellent work from Ricky Wysocki. He had that eye of the tiger going all day, stayed focused, didn't really do anything crazy, but nice and solid there. Bokey free effort from Mr. Wysocki. Guarantees himself the late tea time. Absolutely. You get to sleep in, relax. Of all. <laughs> get to watch, see what most of the field does before you even step onto the course. Yep. I believe we've got all our cards locked in for tomorrow, or at least our, our top two camera cards. There you go. Yeah. Chris Clemens wasting no time, steps up and fires. Ooh. That looks a bit shy. I don't think that's inside the white line, so he should be heading to a drop zone. It's feast or famine on this. Big time, these last two ball, holes. Yeah. Paul McBeth also quickly to fire. This will get that's up. going left. Hard. Let's stay on. That green. looks to be like it's out of Ooh. bounds. That trickles out. See the patrons looking down the hill. That's a bad sign. Joseph Anderson tied for the lead along with Anthela, Barella, and Waisaki. Making his league card debut. Joey Buckets, yeah. huh? How about that? Congratulations, Joseph. Absolutely. Well, we're used to seeing those other three names. Yep. Uh, Mr. Buckets, we'll see what he brings to the show tomorrow. Yeah, he made a little push towards the end of last year. I remember seeing his name here and there. Yeah. He was playing some good golf at the end of last year. and. Sometimes it just clicks, you know? Yep. You just figure something out. Here he is. Yep. That's why we play, man. For those days when it all clicks, <laughs> you know? That's the best. Rick hanging out. He's got a drop-in par coming up. He's like, come on, guys. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> Can I go? <laughs> Tap and roll, huh? Tap it in and get on out of there. Yeah, two of them are playing from that drop zone. Drop zone. Should be Macbeth and Heimberg. Heimberg. And yep. maybe Chris. Oh, yeah. Clemens as well. Didn't see where his ended up. But yeah, it looked short, didn't it? It did. Oh, they've got him putting for birdie circle, too. Wow. He must have wow, just stayed just. safe. Yeah. Calvin, hang on. This is on the right side. Unfortunate there. Way to finish the round. Finish. Well, Chris is heading He's towards walking to the drop zone. Drop zone. <laughs> I think we might have a, a snafu there yeah. on the old live score. He yeah, that happens. So. Yeah. That happens. I'm interested to see if Macbeth gets to take his. Does he have to go to the drop zone or can you take it from where he went out? Because he actually crossed in bounds up. That's top. a good question. Oh, yeah, Chris's tee shot was OB too. All right. <laughs> yeah. So now he's going for five. 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 Yeah. yeah, same as Calvin. But he obviously didn't make it. He was short at the top, and so was Calvin. So they, they have to go to the drop zone. But I'm wondering if you cross in bounds, you get to take it. Yeah, Paul's walking back there, too. Go check first. Yeah, please. you're going directly to the drop zone for yeah, any shot, any, that, any shot that doesn't land safe coming that's, up this hill. That's what I thought. I think they're just trying to keep things moving. Mm -hmm. Get in there. Oh, oh, on line and short for Chris. There's another double bogey for you. Victims of hole 18. Thanks. This one is for par, though, here. Correct. To stay under par on the day. Uh, on line and that bottom cut as well. And Bogey for Macbeth, back to even Paul on the day. He'll try again tomorrow. Heimberg coming up the hill for double. off the course with a bogey and there is your day one a chess.com invitation presented by discraft it was eventful
That was fun, man. That's always entertaining watching these guys compete out here and do their such a cool course a new twist on a, on a course that's been around for a while i think they did a fantastic job with it and it's going to make for a very exciting and interesting finish here absolutely yeah we got the field bunker i mean there's some six unders some five unders some four unders and i, I expect it to do the same thing the next two rounds this is the, the field to condense a little bit and have a bunch of people looking to win this tournament on the last nine holes that could be 12 to 15 guys within four or five strokes coming down to the end here it really feels like it we're going to kick it off to one more break on the network. Back to the after show in just a few. Pound's the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. Let's start from the beginning. I didn't choose Pound, I chose Levi. I trusted Levi to make the best bag possible. He's always trying to innovate. He wants it to be perfect. And I think he's the kind of guy that nothing's ever perfect. I trust the product. I trust the people behind the product. At this point, I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. Hey, it's Zach from Power Grip. We saw some of your feedback on one of our ads last year. It doesn't matter the question you have, where you're from, or your skill level. Power Grip is here to help. Shop us online. So this year, the team came up with a new idea. Well, I guess it works. Shop us online, powergripusa.com, or visit us in our Bloomington, Illinois store. You guys gonna get me? You gonna, can you untie me now? We're done. We're, we're done with the... Where, where are you going? Hey! Hey, Robert! Untie me! We're done! Brought back by popular demand. Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Discs that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. Z-Lite, more distance with less effort. his highlights we'll see 18 and I think we're calling OTB and then okay welcome back to the action let's check out some Anthony Barella highlights for you So solid all day, Philo. Yeah, he started off with a bang, man. That's for sure. Those two putts to open up the round for AB. I should say the first three holes. I mean, that's the only guy who got all three to start the day. This little stepper on the first basket situated up in a very precarious place where that thing could catch an edge and roll 50, 60 feet down a hill. And he made that thing right in the middle of the basket. I mean, super sweet. A little later in the course, another step through putt for a big birdie. Had all the things going, you know, things were going really, really clean for Anthony Barilla today, and it's 
one of those things I think a lot of us disc golf fans and you know friends of AB have been looking for for a long time when he's going to have one of those breakout seasons where just all the pieces come together and then he gets to hole 18 and this happens. OB off the tee, OB off his third. In the driver's seat by uh, a couple of strokes and then these two throws happen, goes to the drop zone, unable to convert and walks away with a double bogey, falls back to the field at minus six. Man, that one red number. Put, that would change the whole complexion. Now he's going to have to battle through this adversity and kind of show us, hey, man, okay, I might get knocked down, but I'm going to get right back up. Yeah. And that's something we would really love to see for Anthony Barella this week. At okay, least bro. I would. We have our man, Nate Perkins, down on the ground. He is with Anthony Barella. Uh, take it away, Nate. All right, Anthony Barella, disappointing finish there with the double, but talk about the rest of the round out there. You started off, I believe, the only player in the field to, to get the first three. Mm -hmm. You started off with a couple circle two looks. Yep. That jumper looks like it's feeling pretty good. Yeah, stepper's been feeling good this offseason. I've been putting a lot of work with it. And uh, I just got to connect on those C1s. I was throwing the disc really well today. Didn't make too many mistakes. Got to keep it like that. But the last hole... It was just swirling wind, ripping. I was the first one to throw. I, it looked like it was ripping left to right, and then yep. it just kept drifting left, and then I slipped on the upshot. But yep. it's all right. I'm still, I'm still in it, so we're good. Well, so you, you, you said that you've put in a lot of work. What's different about 2024 AB than 2023 AB? Is this the year that you're going to dominate and win some tournaments? I mean, I hope so. I put a lot of work in on the mental game this off season. So it's just been like training myself to put myself in uncomfortable situations and just, I've done plenty of reps in my life. I've been playing since I was a little kid, so it's just the mental part I got to put together. Cool. Well, what's work on the stepper look like for you? Are you just at home in Arizona, just like looking at 40 and 50 footers all day? Yeah, I've been doing that a lot because last year I just didn't putt well from circle two. C1s is like, man, but I missed two short ones today, but I made it back with some clutch C2 putts, so kind of evened out. Cool. Well, next I wanted to ask you, what do you think after playing the Olympus course in competition, how do you think Paul did on this track? I love it. I like the, I like that you have to do a lot of placement shots and then it still has the powerful holes. And my sidearm was feeling really good today and there's a lot of sidearms out here. And I think it's in my top five courses now. I All right. Love it. Sounds good, Anthony Barella. Looks like we'll see you on the lead card tomorrow. Best of Sweet. luck uh, for the weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. And Nate, thank you for that. Tournament Central, and it's for your pro subscribers coming up after the show. Make sure you tune in for that. More highlights, stats, breakdown, interviews. We'll have it all yeah, there. Hop in on the conversation. Check it out. It's always good to get some in-depth perspective on what's happening out here on the Pro Tour. And Tournament Central is the place for that. And we're going to check out our top ten for the final time. Here we look at on the chase card. Looks like we'll have a Rathbun. Gannon Burr, Mason Ford, and Kyle Klein. Kyle Klein? Yeah, looks like it. Got some major winners out there in the mix, man. Yeah, we a couple do. of USDGC winners. The last two, as a matter yeah, of fact. Last two. There that. you go. It is time, guys, for the OTB shot of the day. Yes. Philo took notes. So, what did your notes say? I only Philo? took one note. Okay, which one was I it? I think that was the Calvin shot earlier on in the round, and I think he made some incredible bounce back or something like that. But there's so mm -hmm. many cool shots today. I mean,. Yeah, we, can. we only got to see the putt from it, but Thomas Gilbert's shot to make an eagle, eagle. on oh, 15. Yeah. We didn't get to see the shot, yeah. but we saw the putt. We had the Gossage chain hit, uh, cage hit. That was, was pretty, pretty good. cool. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. We'll see what Geo picked for us. Fire, fire that off production. Let's see our OTP shot of the day. Oh, it's my man Marky now. Excuse me, Nick. Hit me. Ah, Mr. Robinson. Oh, all seven. Is it a combo OTP? It is. Oh, the whole hole. Oh, this was an exceptionally nice shot. Everyone else really struggled here. Oh, yeah, he played that side uh -huh. door and came yeah. in. That's right. Oh, nice pick, Marky. I like it. There you go. 
A little world champ love there for Mr. Yeah. Isaac Robinson, taking yeah. down the OTB shot of the day. He wore the right shirt to get the OTB shot yes, of the day did, as well. Yes, he did, man. You know? Wearing checkers At out the there. Chess .com. Yeah, yeah, the chess .com. Yeah, absolutely. Chess board. It's pretty awesome. We were reward branding. Why we not? Got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your FPO tea time for tomorrow on the NPO as well. Make sure you guys tune in for that and stay tuned for Tournament Central if you're a pro subscriber. Thank you guys so much for watching. We're Philo. Catch you guys tomorrow. Night, everybody. Night.